Yo, Atlas speaking and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. What if I was reborn in Naruto as a civilian orphan, trained and became the Wind Calamity? Synopsis, being reborn in the Naruto world as a scrawny no-named orphan is not the ideal situation. Especially in a world full of evil alien space gods, whole ninja wars. Chakra mechs, and villains such as Danzo, Orochimaru, Abido, and Madara in the shadows. It's safe to say I'm fucked. Thankfully I at the very least got my chakra unlocked and got a very strong wind affinity. Follow my journey of intense training, backstabbing, friendship, nightmare fuel, and the rise of the most feared ninja, Kanoha's wind calamity. Let's not waste any more time, and let's get right into it let the tale begin. Chapter 1, Transmigration Kanoha In the most famous building in Kanoha, an old man, smoking with a smoking pipe, was staring out of the window. Behind him was a table full of papers, which needed his signature. Hiruzen Saratobi, however, continued to stare out of the window at the fourth Hokage's monument. Today was exactly a year since Kanoha had to face the Nine Tails assault. Hiruzen finally let out a sigh. Kanoha suffered the most losses of any village in the Third Great Ninja War due to having to fight every village. And merely a year later, they had to face another assault which not only killed the fourth Hokage, but also a lot of their ninjas and civilians. This not only increased the burden on him and the existing ninjas, but also caused Kanoha's orphanage to be overpopulated. Hiruzen sighed again, finally starting his day by getting that damned paperwork done. In one such orphanage, Suzuki Fujin, a five-year-old orphan, was sound asleep. Suddenly, however, he got up, screaming in pain while holding his head and falling unconscious. The scream woke up his fellow orphans, who alerted the caretaker. A few hours later, Suzuki Fujin woke up, but still under intense headache, thinking damn what the heck's up with this headache. While I did stay up late at night working on that project, I haven't ever suffered such a headache. And it feels like memory is all jumbled up. Slowly he opened his eyes and looked around. Frowning upon noticing the unfamiliar surrounding, what is this? Where am I? This ain't my room. He tried getting up, but suddenly noticed, why am I so much smaller? Did I somehow return to the past? However, his thoughts were broken by two kids walking into the room. They suddenly ran towards him and one asked Fujin, Are you alright? Whereas the other one asked, Why did you yell? Fujin saw them too, thinking who are these two? Wait I think I know them. But how? Damn this headache is unbearable. And I need to get my thoughts sorted out somehow. With that, Fujin pretended to fall unconscious again, trying to make some sense of the situation. The two kids however got worried and ran back to the caretaker. While he pretended to be asleep, he started to gain access to new memories. Memories of Suzuki Fujin It took five hours of gaining clarity, an insufferable headache, and disbelief for him to understand, fuck. I transmigrated. And into the fucking Naruto world of all places. But how? I don't even remember dying. Don't you need to die to transmigrate? And damn, transmigrated from that safe world with rules and regulations into this deadly world full of cunning and powerful ninjas. And I got transmigrated into a fucking civilian off all people. After a few minutes of disbelief and ranting, he finally calmed down and decided to understand and plan his future. He thought, alright, I guess I'll be known as Suzuki Fujin from now on. Unlucky fellow to lose his life to someone transmigrating into him. I wonder how that even works. Anyways, I got a lot of information from his memories. His parents seemed to have died in Kurama's rampage and he was incredibly lucky to live. And damn, after being admitted into the orphanage, he was examined by Root to see if he can be taken in. Lucky me that they didn't choose him. Hmm, since Kurama's attack took place a year ago, and since he is five years old, it seems I'm four years older than Naruto and his generation. All right, that gives me more time to train and gain power. The Uchiha massacre should occur after around seven years, the Kanoha crush after twelve years, and Pain's attack and fourth great ninja war after sixteen years. Wait, 
What's this feeling? At that moment, he felt a weird energy flowing through him. He thought, is this chakra? His memories didn't have anything related to chakra. So does it mean that chakra was unlocked when I transmigrated into him? Finally, some good news. With this, getting into the ninja academy should be easier than other civilians. Though I wonder how my chakra level compares to the chakra level of others. Anyways, probably better to get a look at the surroundings first to understand more of this place. With that, he finally stopped pretending to be asleep and woke up. Chapter 2 Orphanage After getting up, he could see that it was already evening. The watch showed that it was 6.30 p.m. He also noticed that he was incredibly hungry. He thought, I haven't eaten anything all day, no wonder I'm so hungry. I need to grab something to eat. I also need to act like a kid. I hope no one notices any change in me he walked to the door and heard a couple of noises outside. On opening it, he saw those two kids playing with each other. He recalled that their names were Sakai Aichi and Aoki Daisuki. Both were good friends with Fujin and also shared the room. Aichi had lost his parents in the Kurama Assault too, whereas Daisuki had lost his during the Third Great Ninja War. Looking at Fujin, their faces showed concern and quickly ran to him. Daisuki asked, Fujin, what happened? Are you fine now? Nodding his head, Fujin confirmed, Yeah, I'm fine now. Sorry about that. Had a terrible headache. Aichi said, Oh, that's a relief. We were worried about you. Right at that moment, a growling sound was heard, and all three kids looked towards Fujin's stomach. Fujin looked embarrassed and said while rubbing the back of his head, Guess I'm very hungry and Aichi remarked, Figures, you've been sleeping all day. Daisuke then put his arm around Fujin and said, Well, let's go to the mess and see if there's anything there. All three kids started to make their way to the mess. On the way, quite a few kids gave Fujin a curious look. A couple of them also asked how he is doing now. Fujin analyzed, I guess they all heard about me screaming and falling unconscious. Fujin recalled from his memories that there are over 250 orphans in this orphanage. Fujin wondered, I wonder if Naruto is in this orphanage too. On reaching the mess, we saw the caretaker. Her name was Saya. She was a middle-aged woman and also very friendly. Upon seeing Fujin, she quickly approached him and inquired about his health. Upon hearing that he was all right, she felt relieved. She informed Fujin, we were very worried about you. We called a doctor to check on you. But he didn't understand what was wrong with you. I'm glad you are fine, but you still have to get checked up once again. Fujin nodded and replied, Thank you. But right now I am very hungry. Is there anything I could eat? She nodded and replied, Yes, the dinner has been prepared. Though there's still some time for dinner to be arranged for everyone, I'll arrange the food for you. Then Saya prepared a plate for Fujin, while Daisuke and Aichi went away to play. Fujin started to eat thinking, the food's okay. Not very tasty, but it's alright considering that it is an orphanage. It seems that we are given three meals here, morning breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, lots of fruits are available to eat. Sadly, meat isn't provided here. Still, the nutrition provided here should be all right. So I could probably get some training done without having to worry about food. Anyways, I should fill myself up. After finishing the food, Fujin retired to his room. Falling back into his bed, he started thinking, well, what a day. Though it's rather tough to act as a kid, luckily no one noticed any difference in me. It's good that there aren't any ninjas in the orphanage. Guess I need to think about what to do now. Now that I'm here, I don't want to be a no-name cannon fodder. And my knowledge about future events also gives me a great edge. So how exactly should I proceed forward? With that Fujin started to think about all the possibilities for him and what he should do. Upon analyzing for half an hour, he finally came to the conclusion, all right, though I know the future events, without having enough power, all that knowledge is worthless. Not to mention, there's no guarantee that things will progress exactly as they did in the manga. 
it had too many plot holes anyways. And providing someone else with this information is a strict no. They'll just throw me to the TNI department or in an even worse case to Danzo. It will also change all future events depriving me of my advantage. So I suppose planning for future events can be left to the future and will depend on how much power I have then. Right now the main focus should be on improving my power. So how to go about it? Well, for now, normal jutsus are out of the question. Normal civilians don't get access to jutsus, so jutsus could only be taken from the academy. And I can only attempt to join the ninja academy next year. Even though I know about many jutsus and know what they can do, I don't really remember the hand signs for them. The only jutsu whose hand signs I remember is the shadow clone technique. Sadly, it's a jounin level technique and dangerous enough to be classified as forbidden. Not to mention, knowing those hand signs itself won't be enough. I guess the hand signs made the chakra move in a particular manner or display some properties which allow those jutsus to be completed. Until I gain that knowledge, attempting hand signs would be rather pointless. That said, I could try jutsus in training that don't require hand signs. Raisin training for elements and chakra control can be trained. Since I have unlocked my chakra, chakra control exercises would be crucial to do. The only issue is that I don't want anyone else to watch me doing them. I guess I can try to do leaf concentration over the next year. Tree climbing could attract a lot of attention. And with a village full of ninjas, it's impossible to ensure full privacy. Luckily, the first and second stages of Raisin training can be done in privacy, and so can the first stage of elemental training. Apart from that, I should try to improve my body. Heck, this is probably the most critical. While my physical condition ain't bad, it's not very good either. So I should start with light exercise to build up stamina and power. I wonder if I could do something similar to Master Rashi's training, and it would be incredibly helpful if I can catch Guy's attention. Oh well, let's see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully, at least this headache will be gone by tomorrow. With that, Fujin finally went back to sleep. Chapter 3, and the training begins. On waking up the next morning, Fujin looked out of the window to notice that the sky was still dark. He thought, damn, I woke up really early. Seems like it's just 5 a.m. yet. Oh well, I basically slept the whole day yesterday, little wonder I woke up so soon. Anyways, I suppose I'll have to make a habit of it if I really intend to get strong. On the plus side, the damn headache has finally gone away. He got out of his bed to notice that Aichi and Daisuke are still fast asleep. Not expecting little kids to wake up anytime soon, he freshened up and got out of his room. He then walked out of the orphanage building. The orphanage had a decent-sized playground for the kids towards the north side. Whereas, on the east and south sides it had a lot of trees that looked sort of like a mini forest. It seems that Kanoha has a lot of such mini forests throughout the village. And many such areas were used as training grounds for ninjas. Luckily or unluckily, there wasn't any such training ground in the vicinity of the orphanage. The western side had residential areas and a market a few hundred meters away. Fujin thought, the forest could potentially provide me some cover and privacy. While it's probably not the best place, it does provide me with an option to do some secret training. Other than that, I'd also need to see if and when I could have my orphanage room all to myself. Anyways, I suppose I should start with some warm-up and see how much this body can be pushed. Finally ending his train of thoughts, Fujin started to stretch his body in order to loosen up the muscles. After around 10 minutes of stretching, he started to run around the playground. In his estimate, the circumference of the playground was around 100 meters. He was able to complete the initial few rounds with ease but soon started getting tired. After pushing himself to the limit, he was able to complete 28 rounds around the playground. Taking deep breaths, he thought, Wow, I ran nearly 3 kilometers. There's no way I could have run even a kilometer at 5 years old in my previous life. And I don't recall this guy doing any exercises before I took over his body. I wonder if it's due to the bodies of the people in this world being much stronger, or if unlocking my chakra made the body stronger somehow. 
I'm guessing it's the former as I just unlocked chakra yesterday. All right, I'll take a short break and get back to it. After taking a short five minutes break, he continued his exercise by doing push-ups. He managed to do two sets of push-ups, each with 12 reps, it was followed by sit-ups, for which he could do four sets of 15 reps, and lastly, he did pull-ups, of which he could only do eight reps barely. This exercise did push him a lot, but he didn't push them to the limit as it had been detrimental to push the body to its limit suddenly. Done with the exercise, he returned back to the orphanage, had a bath, and put on new clothes. He returned to the room to see that it was 7.30 a.m. and his roommates were still fast asleep. He thought, interesting, I wonder when they wake up and if the time they wake is consistent. If they wake up only at 8, when breakfast is provided, then it could potentially give me the opportunity to practice leave concentration early morning without letting anyone know. I should observe them for the next week to confirm it. He sat down in his bed and took one of the leaves he had brought up while coming back from his morning exercises. Staring at it he thought, there are five basic natures that can be mastered, fire, wind, lightning, earth, and water. In order to know my nature affinity, I'll need that chakra paper, but either way, all five natures can be mastered by every ninja. In the fourth great ninja war, Shikamaru had every ninja perform the earth-style earth wall jutsu. This implies that the most basic jutsus of the five natures could be used directly without mastering the element like how Naruto did. However, it'll be even better if all five natures are mastered, that would allow more powerful jutsus of all those elements to be used. Given how proficient Hiruzen was, I guess he had mastered all five natures mastered. I do wonder what my nature affinity is though, as that element would become much easier to master. If I were to choose, my first preference would be lightning. It provides deadly attack, and if I could somehow replicate the way the Rakage used the lightning to boost their speed, power, and defense, then I'd easily reach Kage level and strength. The next preference would probably be water. While I ain't a fan of water nature, Kanoha should have the legacy of Tobarama and his water-style jutsus. If access to them is gained, it can boost my power to Kage level 2. The remaining three have their issues. While wind style is very deadly and versatile, there isn't a single Kage level character who reached that stage thanks to his wind style jutsus. The only one I can remember is Danzo, and he was just ridiculous in that fight against Sasuke. Then again, becoming the first ninja to become Kage level by using wind style sounds fun. Earth style has good jutsus too and is probably the best nature after lightning, but almost none are used by Kanoha ninjas, so getting access to them will be tough. While for fire style, though fire style had a few jutsus that seem to be very powerful, it seems that almost all of them are very easy to dodge. The only top tier fire jutsu I remember is Amaterasu, which I sadly can't use. Only Madara's majestic flame destroyer seemed deadly and could be used by all, but I'm not sure if it'll be available with Kanoha or not and whether a normal ninja could release that huge flame that Madara did. Still, I should be open-minded as there may be many more jutsus here than shown in the Naruto series. Either way, there's not much of an option right now. Of all the five natures, I only know the proper training method for wind nature as it was covered properly. The training for remaining natures will just be a wild guess for me. So probably best to delay their training till the academy starts. Until then, I'll master the wind nature, irrespective of whether it is my affinity or not. Fujin then channeled his chakra and tried to cut the leaf into two. The training continued without any success for half an hour when a bell rang throughout the orphanage. The bell signified that breakfast was available. Aichi and Daisuke woke up as soon as the bell rang. Looking at Fujin sitting on the bed, Daisuke said, Morning, you woke up early? Fujin replied, Morning, I had slept too early, probably that's why. Aichi then said, Good morning, it's nice to see you ain't screaming today. Following which, both Daisuke and Aichi laughed at Fujin's expense. Fujin showed an embarrassed expression and replied, Yeah, whatever, I'll head down for breakfast. Make sure you two sleepyheads come down before it's all over. On hearing this, both Aichi and Daisuke ran to grab their toothbrush. Over the next week, the same pattern followed. 
Fu Jin woke up early, did morning exercises, and noticed his two roommates only woke up when the bell rang. And whenever he had the opportunity, he tried to cut the leaf. He also added practicing punching and kicking in his morning exercises. He noticed that Aichi and Daisuke were mostly out playing with everyone else. So the room was empty most of the time. This was especially true after morning breakfast, around 10 a.m. to noon, and a few hours before dinner, around 4 to 6 p.m. With that information, he finally started practicing the leaf concentration exercise in order to improve his chakra control during that period. Here, a leaf was placed on the forehead, and all his chakra is directed onto the leaf, using it as the focal point. Along with improving chakra control, it also aided in improving concentration. Fujin recalled Naruto remembering its importance while mastering Raisingan. Fujin not participating in playing with other kids was suspicious, but thanks to the fact that the orphanage was already overcrowded, no one paid much attention to him. The screaming and falling unconscious event was long forgotten. Only his two friends were upset that he didn't play with them much any longer. In order to prevent any more suspicion on him, while doing the leaf concentration exercise, Fujin used to sit on the bed in such a manner that his back faced the door. If anyone abruptly entered the room, he'd instantly stop the exercise and make the leaf as invisible to anyone entering the room. Luckily for him, there wasn't much interference. Chapter 4 Progress Over the next six months, Fujin followed the same routine. His physical fitness, concentration, and chakra control steadily growing. He also noticed that it also resulted in a significant increase in his chakra reserves. Sadly, with nothing to compare, he had no idea how good or bad his chakra reserves were. On the physical side, he was able to run almost 50 rounds of the playground now. He was able to do four sets of push-ups with 12 reps, five sets of sit-ups with 20 reps, and four sets of pull-ups with eight reps, he noted that it was much easier to improve physically here as compared to the previous world. When it came to wind nature training, it took him three and a half months to successfully cut one leaf, and only after six months of nature training, he was finally able to successfully cut the leaf in one go without any issues. While it did take very long, it was understandable due to quite a few factors like Fujin just having unlocked his chakra, with him not having any shadow clones to assist or a great teacher to guide him. As he couldn't cut off a waterfall to complete the next stage, he just tried cutting tougher materials to improve wind nature further. He replaced the leaf with a small piece of wooden twig and then a branch which were lying around. One lucky instance happened in the fifth month he was in this ninja world. An old couple visited the orphanage and distributed a lot of water balloons in the orphanage. Such instances used to happen frequently, Fujin guessed that they probably were people who lost their children in either the war or the Kurama assault. But this time it was very beneficial for him. Since he was an orphan and didn't have any access to money, it meant that he couldn't go to the market to buy water balloons to begin raising Dian's training. He took the opportunity to get a few water balloons and hit a few. With access to water balloons, he finally began stage one of the raising Dian training. While chakra shape manipulation was tough, recalling the way Naruto popped the balloon, Fujin was able to replicate the way to manipulate his chakra to apply pressure everywhere in just a couple of days. However, he wasn't able to pop the balloon. He thought, I guess my chakra reserves are too low. I should be able to pop it if I can use more chakra. Oh well, no point in worrying about it right now but it's probably a good idea to keep practicing this as it'll help improve my skill at shape manipulation. A couple of months later, Fujin became six years old and eligible to attempt entering the Ninja Academy. The entrance exam for the same was still two months away. Upon inquiring further about the entrance exam and its contents, he understood that the entrance exam was rather standard. It was mostly centered around the physical fitness of the candidates and they inspected their chakra to decide whether the candidate has the potential to be a ninja or not. Fujin was rather confident in clearing both, so he wasn't much worried. He just continued his usual routine, though he added throwing wooden shurikens to his training routine. In the afternoons, he started to go into the mini forest, he marked tree stems and tried to hit them accurately with wooden shurikens. This was done in case they added shuriken throwing to the entrance exam. 
Sadly, the orphanage didn't have any shurikens to borrow, and being an orphan meant that Fujin had no money to buy them. So the wooden shurikens were made from small branches of trees in the forest by using wind nature to cut them. The carving of wooden shurikens also helped to increase chakra control while using wind nature. Still, the shurikens weren't perfect, but that was the only option he had for now. Fujin also had another idea, he thought, I have all the basics down, so passing the entrance exam shouldn't be much of an issue. However, I wonder if I should start attempting to improve my physical capabilities by aiding them with chakra. I know that chakra could be used to boost speed by concentrating chakra into the legs, similarly, the power of punches can be increased by gathering chakra in your fists. I need to experiment on whether I could do more push-ups and other exercises if I do them while using chakra to assist those exercises. With those thoughts, Fujin began his experiment. He noticed a significant rise in speed and power when using chakra to perform those activities. However, there were many issues. The first being that it was too inefficient and a lot of chakra was being wasted. The second issue was that it required a lot of chakra, something his current reserves couldn't handle. So Fujin decided to modify his morning exercises. He decided to keep doing what he has been doing so far, but once he was done with it, he repeated his exercise, only this time doing them with the aid of chakra. And this benefited him immensely, increasing his physical capabilities and his ability to use chakra and also noticed a rise in the speed at which his chakra reserves grew. He began wondering why his chakra reserves suddenly started growing at a faster rate. Upon analyzing, Fujin came to the conclusion, I think that it is rising due to the fact that I've been exhausting my chakra on a daily basis. Each time I do that, it probably increases my chakra reserves slightly. If my analysis is right, then currently I have two means to increase my reserves. The first is to increase it with a combination of physical exercise and meditation, and the second method is by exhausting my chakra to its limits over and over. I wonder if there are any other means as well. Chapter 5 Academy Entrance Exam Around two months after Fujin turned six, the Academy Entrance Exams were conducted. Waking up early, Fujin freshened up and prepared to leave for the Academy. For the first time in ten months, Fujin hadn't done his morning workout. He waited for Daisuke and Aichi to get ready as they too were planning to participate in the exams. In all, around seven boys and two girls from his orphanage were taking the academy exams this year. They all left together, along with the caretaker Mamanosuk from the orphanage. On reaching the academy, all the kids were surprised at the vast number of children that had gathered to take the exam. A girl named Naomi exclaimed, What? There are hundreds of participants here. Mamanosuk then said, Probably over a thousand. Last year there were over 1,600 kids attempting the exam. However, only around 360 were selected as all the kids looked at him. Fujin thought, I didn't expect this. So many participants and so many selected? I guess Kanoha is trying to fill the void left by deaths during the Third War and the Kurama assault. Oh well, it doesn't really affect me in any way. On looking around, Fujin saw some groups within the crowd that wore Kanoha headbands. Mamanosuk looking at Fujin commented, They are trained ninjas from various clans in our village and are probably accompanying their children. Probably all of them will pass the exam. Hearing that, all the kids tensed up a bit. Looking at that, Mamanosuk chuckled and attempted to cheer them, but you shouldn't worry so much. The majority of participants aren't from clans. So you have a good chance to pass. Just give it your best. The other kids nodded nervously. At that time, someone wearing a chunin vest approached the crowd and announced to the crowd that exams would begin shortly and all kids were to gather at the training ground behind the academy. After coming to the back of the academy, Fujin's whole group took a look at the Hokage rock, which had the faces of all four Hokage carved in it. Everyone was awestruck by it. Fujin thought, while I did see it from a distance, up close it looks magnificent. I do wonder if it serves a bigger purpose than just something that looks good though. Inside the academy, in a conference room, a few chenins, most of whom were teachers at the academy, were sitting and discussing the entrance exam. 
A Chunin then got up and gave a report to the one leading the meeting. Nara Kisho looked at that report and sighed. Post the Third Great Ninja War, the Third Hokage had assigned him to supervise the entrance exams. And he was told to pass as many students as possible as Kanoha had lost thousands of ninjas during the war. He was promoted to a special jown in post-war due to his contributions. He sighed again and thought, what a drag. Looking at the report, he found that this year, 2,147 children were participating in the entrance exam. Around 30% more than the previous year. He thought, oh well, first let's just eliminate the physically unfit ones. And gave the assigned shunin the signal to start the exam. Doi Masashi was the one assigned to the first phase. He announced loudly, everyone, the first phase of the exam will begin. You have to run five laps on the path marked in the training ground. Each lap is around 500 m. Everyone will be monitored during this run. I will run in front of you and you will have to follow me. With that, he disappeared and appeared on the track. Everyone reached out to where he was. Masashi started running and everyone followed. Fujin thought, well this seems very simple. I could run this many on the very next day I transmigrated here. And after 10 months of training, yesterday, I managed to run over 8 kilometers and could push myself to over 10 kilometers if I used chakra. Everyone completed the first three laps, however, slowly a few started dropping out. By the time five laps were completed, everyone in Fujin's group, except Fujin himself, was tired. One girl and two boys couldn't complete the five rounds. Masashi announced loudly, all those who couldn't complete the five laps are eliminated. They are to return to the front of the academy and can return to your guardians. He continued, among the ones still left, you have two options. The first is to run another five laps. If you don't think you can, then return to the front of the training ground and wait there. Many decided to return to the training ground, but a few hundred still continued. In Fujin's group, only Daisuke and another guy, Tatsuya, attempted it. After compiling the data, Nara Kisho noted, 438 participants couldn't complete five laps, and only 257 attempted to do the next five laps. Among the 257, 241 participants completed the five additional laps. The ones who couldn't complete the laps were sent to the group of students waiting in the training ground. For the remaining 241, the same two choices were provided again. Only 21 participants decided to attempt another five laps. The ones who didn't attempt were sent back and gathered in a different group as compared to others who stopped after only five laps. Fujin was now the only one left from the orphanage. Most remaining were from clans. All 21 were able to complete the additional five laps and they were placed together in a different groups. Now the training ground was separated into three different groups. Fujin was glad that they weren't asked to do five more laps, or he may have had to back out. After that, more physical tests were conducted and more participants were eliminated. Nara Kisho noted, all the 21 and 220 participants from the two groups passed, but many from the first group were eliminated. Only 636 from first group were still remaining. After the first phase was done, the participants were given a break and provided breakfast. After breakfast, the examiner for the second phase appeared. Fujin noted that he was from the Hyuga clan. He announced, in each of the groups, the ones who have unlocked chakra step forward. All except one from Fujin's group moved forward. In all, there were almost a hundred kids who had unlocked their chakra. Everyone who was from a ninja clan had their chakra unlocked. Fujin sighed in relief as he saw a lot of civilian kids step out too. So him unlocking chakra won't be very eye-catching. The Hyuga activated his Byakugan and examined the chakra of the ones who stepped forward. He had to check for the amount of chakra and its quality. All 20 from Fujin's group passed. Of the remaining, 64 students were passed too, whereas others were disqualified. Then, a few Chunins then moved around and helped all the remaining students to unlock their chakra. Fujin was surprised, wow, I didn't think they'd help everyone unlock their chakra. Kanoha must be really desperate. That said, it's obvious that not all of the kids here will pass. 
So the direct effect of this move will be that there will be a lot of civilians who will have access to chakra. I wonder if these people serve some purpose. And how many more such people exist in Kanoha? While the process of unlocking chakra was ongoing, Nara Kisho was observing the situation. Looking at him, the examiner for the second phase, Hyuga Hachiro, walked to him. The Hyuga said, I'm surprised that the third ordered to have all these kids unlock their chakras. Nara Kisho nodded and replied, Yeah, he doesn't have much other option. We lost too much in the past few years. In the past couple of years, he ordered the training of the reserve jinnins to replace the dead, however even that's not enough. And while most of the kids here won't become a ninja, with chakra enhancing them, they'll help fill many other roles in the future. Honestly, I'm impressed by the efforts the Hokage took in order to ensure that so many kids attempted the exam. Even the capacity of the academy has been increased. Hyuga Hachiro replied, Yeah, we just need a few years without any major conflict. Kisho dejectedly replied, Yeah, but these exams are going to be a pain in the ass till then. Hyuga Hachiro laughed seeing the Nara's annoyance. The process of unlocking and examining the chakra went on for a while. It was the evening when it got completed. In all, around 430 kids were passed. The remaining 447 kids failed and were asked to return to their guardians. The ones who passed were gathered together in the training ground. A few kids then saw that an old man with a smoking pipe was walking towards them. Fujin looked to his left, oh, finally I'm gonna see someone from the story. To think that the first person I recognized would be Haruzan himself. Chapter 6, Speech and New Apartment On seeing the third Hokage, everyone got respectful and serious. Most kids were surprised that he came to meet them. He looked at the kids and smiled gently. He began his speech, congratulations to all of you for passing the entrance exams, and took a pause. All the kids were very happy and excited to finally enter the Ninja Academy. The surrounding Chunins asked for silence to be maintained and to let Lord Hokage speak. Fujin, however, thought, here it is, I guess I'll finally experience his legendary skill of influencing young kids. In my previous life, everyone talked about Naruto's talk no jutsu. But no one ever talked about how Haruzen influenced Naruto to work hard and risk his life to protect the very people who made his life miserable. The third continued, now that you have entered the academy, we'll teach you the ways of a Kanoha shinobi. We'll ensure that you guys become full-fledged shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village. This academy was created by Lord Second Hokage. He himself taught a lot of students in the academy, including me. I still remember the fun and battles we had in the academy. The ninjas who pass out of the academy all ensure that our village stays safe and peaceful. They ensure that you stay protected. And soon it'll be up to you to carry forward that will. The will of fire as Lord First Hokage used to say. Now you will be the ones who will carry the will of fire in you. Love your village and ensure that your will of fire preserves peace and prosperity. Carry on the will of fire in you brighter than anyone else. And let every other village know that the will of fire still burns brighter than anything else. Have a mind that will not yield, able to endure hard training and work. And, be healthy in mind and body. And with that, I welcome you, future ninjas, to our academy. As soon as the speech ended, the excitement that was bubbling within the kids finally popped and all started celebrating. The day was finally called off and everyone started to return home. After reuniting with his fellow orphans, Fujin found out that only four kids passed. Even Aichi failed. Only Fujin, Daisuke, Tatsuya, and Naomi passed. Mamanosuk comforted the ones who failed, mentioning all the other things they could do when they grow up and all of us returned to the orphanage. There were still three days for the academy to open, however, those days were busy for the Fujin and other orphans who passed. The orphans who passed the entrance exam would no longer live in the orphanage. They were provided with a small apartment in the residential areas which would be rent-free until they became a ninja, and would also be provided with a small stipend to support themselves. Fujin thought, oh, I didn't know about this. I knew Naruto lived alone later on, 
but I thought he might have been given special treatment due to his circumstances. I do wonder what the aim is of asking us to live alone. I guess the main advantage I can see is that this way we would be better prepared if we had to go on a solo mission outside the village. After packing up what little clothes he had, he got out of the orphanage and looked back at it. He saw that Daisuke was very sad and even crying as he and Aichi won't be together any longer. Fujin thought, well it's not really like I developed much relationship with anyone here. Naruto isn't in this orphanage, so there's not really much point in staying here anyways. All four orphans were accompanied by the orphanage caretaker to their new apartments. After dropping the other three off, Fujin was the last one to reach his apartment. He thought, so this'll be my new home for the next few years. The apartment was properly cleaned and very neat. While the rooms were small, they were more than enough for him. It had a small living room, a bedroom, a very compact kitchen, and a washroom. There weren't many gadgets in the home apart from a fridge, cooking stove, and other stuff needed for cooking. There was also a sofa in the living room and a bed and an alarm clock in the bedroom. He also saw a first aid kit. He thought, oh well, this is pretty neat. The bed's better than the one at the orphanage. Also here I should have much better privacy. So I can use the whole day to train in some way or another. I do wonder what food will be available here. They did say that someone would come here around noon and deliver the food for today as well as the stipend. Anyways finally getting access to money will be convenient. I ran out of water balloons a month back, so Raisingan training has been on hold. I need to buy them. Also, I should definitely try a Chiraku ramen. Like heck anyone who watched Naruto wouldn't want to try it. I also need to fill up the fridge. We won't be provided with breakfast from now on. So I should at least buy some eggs, bread, and milk. Ending his train of thoughts, Fujin set up an alarm for 11.30 a.m. and began practicing leaf concentration. At 12.15 p.m., there was a knock on the door. Fujin opened the door to see an academy teacher who was monitoring the exam yesterday. He introduced himself as a dachi janki and said that he'll be Fujin's class teacher for this year. He asked whether Fujin was comfortable here and if there were any issues. On confirming that everything was all right, he said that's very good to hear. I saw your performance yesterday, you did very well. Keep it up. Fujin replied, thanks. After that, he provided Fujin with his stipend and then provided him with a few ration bars. Fujin looked at those bars and asked, what's this sensei? Jenki smiled and replied, these are ration bars, you'll consume one for lunch and dinner. There is enough here for a week. From here on though, you'll have to collect the ration bars yourself from the academy every Sunday. Fujin looked plainly at his sensei as if to say, really? Freaking ration bars? Jenki saw the look and said dismissively, don't look down on them kid. That's the food of ninjas. They were created after doing a lot of research. Even the legendary Sanans, Tsunade and Orochimaru, worked on this. They provide a ninja with proper nutrition. So take pride that you are eating food specially made for ninjas. Fujin saw his sensei explaining to him as he would explain to any small kid. In order to not make his sensei suspicious, he acted like a kid, first showing confusion and then being a bit prideful that he was eating food made for ninjas. Jenki smiled and took his leave. On his departure, Fujin sighed. He wondered, which moron is responsible for providing food to orphans? Seriously? A ration bar? No wonder all Naruto ate was ramen. Oh well whatever, it should provide the necessary nutrients and is easy to preserve for a long time. And I definitely need to learn some cooking. No way in hell am I eating ration bars for years. He then counted the stipend given to him. There were 1,000 Rio provided to him. He thought, well I know that Rio is the currency here, but I don't know whether this is a lot or not. I just kept training and didn't even ever go to the shopping area near the orphanage. I really need to go out and understand the prices here. I also need to find out the costs of shurikens, kunai, senban, swords, explosion tags, scrolls, and other important stuff. Though I suppose there's no need to worry about that just yet. 
the most immediate thing to buy would be chakra paper. He ate a ration bar. While it didn't taste bad, it didn't taste good either. He noted that orphanage food definitely tasted better. After that, he left his apartment, locked his door, and went out. After asking for a bit, he found the marketplace. There he went around checking the price of various stuff. He found out that one dozen eggs cost 24 rio, one liter of milk cost 9 rio, and a packet of bread slices cost 5 rio. One kilogram meat cost 60 rio. Various vegetables and fruits cost in the range of 10 to 20 rio. He thought, I see, the 1,000 rio are more than sufficient if used just for this stuff. He looked around and also found a weapon shop. A set of six shurikens cost 2,000 rio, whereas kanai cost 1,000 rio each. A set of six sanban cost 1,000 rio, and swords were much more expensive, their price varying depending on the quality. He thought, these are expensive. I'd have to save for a long time to afford these. After that, he asked the shopkeeper whether they had chakra papers. The shopkeeper nodded and Fujin bought one for 100 rio. Finally ending his short trip, he bought a dozen eggs, one pack of bread slices, one liter of milk, a few fruits, twelve water balloons, three rubber balls, items for daily use like soap, toothbrush, and paste, and so on. He spent around 80 rio on that journey. And he wouldn't have to worry about breakfast for the next few days. On reaching home, he channeled his chakra through the chakra paper. The chakra paper split right through the middle. He sighed, it ain't lightning. Well, whatever, wind is pretty good too. Also, I've already started training in it. The next day, the training continued, but in the evening, after asking a few strangers, he finally reached Ichirakuraman. Tuchi became the second canon character Fujin saw. He ordered miso ramen, which cost 45 rio. After eating it, he thought, wow, it tasted delicious. Still, 45 rio is pretty expensive for me currently. I won't be able to visit here frequently. Satisfied with the food, he returned back to his home. Chapter 7 Academy Starts Today was the day the academy finally started. Fujin woke at 5 a.m., freshened up, and went through his morning workout. After completing it and having a bath, he ran to the academy. The academy started at 8 a.m. He was assigned to class 4A, on the fourth floor. On entering the class, he saw that quite a few had already arrived. There were over 25 students already in there. He entered and sat on one of the unoccupied benches. He noticed that most of the people here were from the ninja clans. They wore the crest of their clan on their backs. Fujin wondered, this classroom ain't big, at most 40 would fit in. Does that mean there are over 10 divisions in my year? At 8, Adachi Janki Sensei arrived. He first distributed identity cards to everyone. He then introduced himself. On arriving, he introduced himself, Welcome to the Academy. I'm Adachi Janki and I'll be your class teacher this year. How about we get to know each other first? I'll tell you guys more about myself. I'm a Chunin of Kanoha and fought in the previous Great Ninja War. My hobby is watching drama and I like to teach young kids like yourself, how about you guys start to introduce yourself? And with that, all the kids started to introduce themselves. The ones from clans telling their clan with pride. Fujin took the opportunity to understand the composition of his class. The class had 30 kids. Apparently, there were two Uchiha, three Hyuga, two each from Nara, Yamanaka, and Akimichi, three Inazuka, one Aburame, one each from Sarutobi, Shimura, Kato, and Hitaki clans, and surprisingly three from Senju and two from Kurama clan. The other six, including Fujin, were normal civilians. After the students were done talking about themselves, Jenki started talking again. He said, All right, first I'll explain to you about your position. This year 430 students passed the entrance exam. However you 30 are the ones who have scored the highest. That's why everyone has very high expectations of each of you guys. All of you have to strive to become very good and strong shinobi. That's why an elite like me is assigned to your class. 
In addition, other teachers too would assist you when required. You will also be provided access to the Academy Library's E and D sections. Also, there will be special tests conducted for you guys every six months, which will be monitored by Lord Hokage himself. So work as hard as you can. Everyone was filled with pride after this speech. And also became a lot more attentive. Fujin thought, lucky me. This seems like an elite classroom. I guess I can have any queries resolved quickly. Also those two sections in the library, I guess should be sections having rank E and rank D jutsus. I wonder if there are sections with higher rank jutsus, and whether I can sneak in. Well, I should give it a proper tour soon. Since this was the first day, Jenki gave them a tour of the academy. They were shown all the classrooms, the library, the training grounds, canteen area. On training grounds, various areas were shown like a running track, obstacle race track, shooting area, balancing area which had a lot of poles, and so on. There was also a small pond at the far end of the training grounds. After the tour was over, they went back to the class. Jenki explained to them what they'll be learning this year. It seemed to mostly be basics. They were supposed to be taught about chakra, hand signs, chakra control, taijutsu, theory of jinjutsu, and shuriken throwing along with normal stuff like mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, language, history, geography, and civics. After that, the class was dismissed for the day. After the class was dismissed, Fujin left quickly and headed toward the library. However, on the way to the library, he ran into Daisuke and Tatsuya. Daisuke called out to him, Hey Fujin. Fujin turned around to see him, he said, Hey, how are you doing? How was the class? Daisuke replied, It was fun, we took a trip of the whole academy. Fujin replied, Yeah, so did we. By the way, how many students are there in your class? Daisuke replied, Oh? There are a hundred, ain't that the case in every class? Tatsuya joined in the conversation saying, Yup, it is the same in my class. Fujin said, I see. No, in mine there are only thirty students. Daisuke said, Huh, why is that? Not wanting to make him feel bad or have to answer more questions, Fujin said that he wasn't sure. After that Daisuke asked whether Fujin wanted to go home with them. Fujin excused himself saying he had some work. Separating himself from them, Fujin started to go to the library again. En route he grabbed a ration bar and ate it while thinking, I see. So my class has just thirty students, whereas the others have a hundred each. So in all, there are five divisions. If I were to guess and look at what all Gink said today, our class is probably being trained in the hopes that everyone either becomes a Jounin or at least an elite Chunin. Whereas for others, the main target seems to be to boost the Jinin reserve and if lucky have a few Chunins and Jounins from there. On entering the library, he showed his card to the librarian and asked for directions. After getting the info, he understood that the library is divided into seven sections. It had a general section having non-ninja related information, section 0 where there was basic information related to ninjas, and sections E, D, C, B, and A, sections A, B, and C were restricted for me right now. Fujin thought, I see, makes sense. There is an NES section, but that's understandable that they won't put that high-level jutsus out in the open. To be honest, I'm surprised that there is section A, anyways, let's go explore it. Fujin skipped the general section and started from section 0. He skimmed through the titles of various scrolls to get an idea of what was there. He found a lot of basic but important stuff. Information related to chakra theories, chakra control, manipulation, nature manipulation, fuinjutsu, jinjutsu, and taijutsu were all mentioned here. So was a lot of historical information. He then went on to sections E and D. There most of the scrolls were just rank E and rank D jutsus. He thought, wow, I didn't expect this. There are literally hundreds of different jutsu scrolls here. A lot of wind-style jutsus are available too. And section E has a scroll called Introduction to Fuinjutsu, whereas section D has a better book on the same. 
This would be very helpful. It took him more than a couple of hours to just skim through the titles of various scrolls. After that, he went back to Section Zero and grabbed a scroll named Introduction to Hand Science and went to an isolated corner and sat there. There were very few people in the library, so there wasn't anyone to disturb him. Fujin thought to himself, All right, I have seen through the majority of the stuff. Now that I finally have some resources, I need to do planning as to what I should do at least for the next couple of years. Chapter 8 Plans In a corner of the library, a small kid was staring at a scroll he had opened in front of him. However, unknown to anyone who watched him, his mind was working on something else entirely. Fujin thought, all right, let's first start with what I can do right now. My chakra control is pretty decent thanks to the daily leaf concentration exercise. I should attempt something along the lines of tree climbing soon. My chakra reserve also has been developing consistently thanks to a combination of physical exercises and meditation and also due to consistently straining my chakra to its limits. My chakra shape manipulation is going well too. Once my chakra level increases, I should be able to proceed further. So my plans for chakra control, chakra shape manipulation, and increasing chakra reserves should be good enough. Though there's no harm in getting more means of increasing my chakra reserves. The most important thing I have in my arsenal is my wind nature manipulation training. I have already completed leaf cutting months back, and though I didn't attempt waterfall cutting, I have progressed further as I can now cut branches with rather ease. This much should be more than enough to perform many wind-style jutsus. And since my own affinity is also wind, it becomes all the more important. That said, I do wonder if I can make my wind nature more potent by trying to cut tougher materials, maybe like a stone next followed by metal. Oh well, I'll experiment later. Anyways one thing I definitely need to do is learn a bunch of wind-style jutsus. I should read up every rank E and D wind-style jutsus in this library and try to learn the useful ones over the next year or two. Preferably try to find wind jutsus that would allow me to form a good combat system that can allow me to defend, attack, and evade. Apart from this, I also need to learn an additional element. Hmm, fire, lightning, earth, and water. Which one should I focus on? On analyzing for a few minutes, he thought, all right, Lightning and wind isn't really the best combo, so lightning's out for the time being. Fire and water can combine very well with wind, especially fire. But I'll need a shadow clone to use it effectively. And anyway, this is the land of fire, so my teammates are very likely to have this element anyways. That leaves earth. I don't think wind and earth combine, however, I can stick to using wind style for offense and earth style for defense. I hope this library has that jutsu that Kakazi used to harden his body. With that jutsu for defense along with wind style for offense should be a very effective and annoying combination. Alright, I'll choose earth as my second element. And I'll keep working on it for the next few years to master these two elements. Other elements can wait till I'm able to pull off multiple shadow clones successfully. Apart from that basic justice should be learned as well. Normal clones don't provide much help in combat, but they should at least serve as a base for shadow clones and elemental clones. The transformation has a lot of uses though, from disguise to transform into weapons. Substitution is the most useful of the three, and something I'll keep using even if I became as strong as the Kakyas. So I have to give special focus to substitution jutsu. Alongside this, I'll also have to learn and master shunshin, body flicker, jutsu. Those two techniques will be vital for evasion and running away. Perhaps more than wind-style jutsus, these two will be more critical to master first. Yeah, this should become a good combat system. Wind-style jutsus to attack, earth-style jutsus to defend and substitution, and body flicker to evade. The next to work on would be taijutsu. My daily morning workout has ensured that my physical capabilities are top tier among the current students. Sadly, I can't grant any more time for it, so I guess I'll have to increase the difficulty of the workout somehow. Perhaps weights or some seals. As for Taijutsu, the academy teaches its own Taijutsu style. I should check that out before planning further. As for Jinjutsu, 
I can't work much on it right now. Let's leave it for the future. That leaves me with Kenjutsu, Medical Ninjutsu, Sensing Capabilities, and Fuinjutsu. Medical Ninjutsu can wait. Kenjutsu is important to me. I will need to learn how to channel my chakra through weapons and charge it with wind nature. That would make my offense very lethal. However, this can wait for the time being too as I won't have to fight anything soon. Fuinjutsu is something I can work on now. With the books for basics available, I should see whether it is suited for me or not. Sensing is pretty essential too. I'll probably need the assistance of academy teachers to understand how to become a good sensor. While I haven't tried it yet for safety issues, I believe focusing chakra in the eyes, nose, or ears should heighten those senses a lot. However, what I'm more interested in is sensing chakras. That ability should be very helpful when I'm out of the village. So let's see. The academy is open from Monday to Friday, with holidays on Saturday and Sunday. And it runs from morning 8 a.m. to afternoon 3 p.m. Mornings are assigned to physical workouts. I get two and a half hours for it. In the future, the practice of taijutsu forms will have to be included here as well. During academy lectures, most training can't really happen. But I wonder if nature's transformation can be worked upon. Something like leaf cutting can easily be hidden under the desk. I need to check what's the initial training method for earth nature and see whether it can be done in class. Though I hope that Janky ain't a censor, otherwise he'll catch me and forbid me from doing it. From 3 to 10 p.m., I have time to train. I can eliminate one hour from there for traveling and eating and other miscellaneous stuff. That leaves me six hours to work on basic jutsus, wind jutsus, weapon throwing, fuin jutsu, sensing chakra, and meditation. Clearly not enough time. So what to do? And he fell into deep analysis again. After calculating for some time, he came to the conclusion, all right, of all these things, meditation is compulsory to do daily. For others, there are basically two options. One is to do these things on different days, and the second is to only focus on a few of these. While the first option sounds tempting, the issue is that with me trying to learn so many different things would cause me to be less focused on everything and might be detrimental to me. For instance, with me practicing so many things, trying to learn eight inner gates from Gaia might be impossible as it requires strict dedication to Taijutsu. Fuinjutsu is also a major issue. It should be a very vast concept with a lot of theories to focus on which will take a lot of time to learn. It's probably for the best to only learn it after I can make shadow clones. Sadly, this would mean I can't make some easy money by making and selling explosion tags or storage scrolls. Among basic jutsus and wind jutsus, for the time being, let's put focus on basic jutsus. Once I have got those down, I'll start to focus on wind style jutsus. So for the next few months, the time after the academy should be spent on mastering those basic jutsus, shuriken and kunai throwing, sensing chakra, and meditation. I currently have no idea how to sense chakra. I'll have to dig up theories in the library and consult Janki. That'll also allow me to know whether he is a sensor or not. For weapon throwing, let's just wait up until that class is conducted. That way I won't increase any wrong habits I have and correct the form required while throwing them quicker. As for those basic jutsus, I can get them easily from this library, I just have to understand the theories behind hand signs and how to perform them properly. It should be covered in the academy soon, so hopefully, it won't be an issue for long. With that, he stopped thinking for a bit and summarized everything he planned. He then thought, alright, this plan seems to be good enough for now. I should get the required knowledge from the academy soon and can always bug all the sensei if I have any queries. I wonder how strong I'll become after a couple of years of this training. He chuckled, finally starting to read the scroll he had taken. Chapter 9, Gathering Knowledge Fujin started reading the scroll. After going through the entire scroll, Fujin summarized, I see. The hand signs are similar to that shown in the manga. There are 12 basic hand seals that are mentioned. The hand signs actually help to mold and manipulate the chakra in a particular manner. However, that's only a help. 
the ninja still has to actively attempt to mold chakra in that manner. He sighed, this will probably take some time to master. Until this is mastered to acceptable levels, the practice of hand signs will be done instead of basic jutsu training. To master the hand signs, I'll first have to practice them while simultaneously having to mold the chakra in the proper way. Then I'll have to try different seals one after another and change the way chakra is molded according to the respective signs. Only after being able to do that will I be able to start attempting any jutsu. Damn, this is gonna be tedious. Anyways, apart from the basic hand signs, there were also a few other hand signs. The scroll mentioned hand signs for all five elements and a hand sign for clones. Apparently, there were also other hand signs that aren't mentioned here. Oh well, at least the chakra molding part will require proper guidance, so I'll start after it is taught in the academy. And these are just the basics. Later on, I'll have to learn one-handed hand signs, reduce the number of hand signs required to perform a jutsu, and learn to perform jutsus without performing any hand sign at all. I recall quite a few characters were able to do hand signs with only one hand, and many had reduced the number of hand signs required for important jutsus to only one. While he was analyzing the hand signs, his class teacher Jenki entered the library and saw him lost in the scroll. He silently sneaked behind Fujin to see what he was reading. Upon noting the content, he smiled a bit and made his presence known, Hello Fujin. Upon hearing that Fujin suddenly turned behind to see, when did he appear behind me? How long was he here? Not having any answers, he sighed mentally, I put my guard down, this is the ninja world after all. While he may only be a chunin, he is in a whole different league compared to me right now. Well, I suppose becoming a censor could help me to a great degree in such scenarios. Anyways, time to act like a kid and make a good impression. It'll be helpful if I can get more guidance from him. Though he thought of all that, it only required a couple of seconds. He acted to be a bit nervous and said, Good afternoon, Sensei. When did you come to the library? Jenki laughed and said, I've been here for a while, kiddo. You were too lost in your scroll. So what's with your interest in hand signs? Fujin tried to act nervous and said in his childish voice, I heard that some of my fellow classmates are already able to perform ninjutsu. During the exam, someone was talking about an Uchiha who was able to breathe fire when he was only four. I wanted to learn it too. That's why I began learning about hand signs. Jenki was happy that a small kid was showing so much interest and dedication. He tried to comfort the kid by rubbing his hand on his head and explaining, Ah, that was Uchiha Itachi, he is your senior by a year. And he passed the academy in just a year and became a jinin. But don't worry about it, Itachi was an exception. He had already started training from a very young age. And it ain't breathing fire, instead, he was using a jutsu called Fireball. You'll start using jutsus very soon too. Tomorrow I'll teach you all about hand signs. So you can practice properly tomorrow. Until then don't try it by yourself. It can cause accidents, okay? Fujin showed an excited face while nodding and said loudly, Yes, Sensei. However, Jenki quickly said, Softly, this is library, keep your voice down. A slash in, I hope you guys get the meme, lol. Fujin nodded again and softly said, Yes, Sensei. After that Jenki entered Section B of the library. Fujin thought, oh, chunins are allowed in Section B? Then again, I'm not sure if this is for every chunin or just a few. He did say he was an elite. So I guess he is an elite chunin who is probably close to becoming a special jounin or a jounin. Well whatever, at least my current impression should be very good, so that's some good news. And Fujin finally returned back to the scroll. He started to try and understand how chakra is molded with each hand sign and got engrossed in it again. After some time, he heard a door open. Fujin looked up to see Jenki exit section B. He smiled at Fujin and exited the library. After trying to understand the hand signs a bit more, Fujin finally closed the scroll and returned it to where it was. He then grabbed the scrolls on wind nature training and went back to the same spot and started reading. After reading it he thought, this was a bit disappointing. 
All that is mentioned here is the leaf cutting exercise. Waterfall cutting ain't mentioned. Then again it makes sense as not everyone will have Yamato make a bridge for them and not everyone has Naruto's chakra levels in order to make that many clones. The remaining content is mostly about the benefits of leaf cutting exercise and precautions to take. The only useful thing is the deeper explanation of the hand sign for wind nature transformation. He then got up and exchanged the scroll for earth nature training. This one was a bit more comprehensive. Fujin thought, all right this one's more helpful. Apparently, there are two basic ways to master earth transformation. The first one is to crush a stone. This was similar to leaf cutting. And the second one was to mold clay into various shapes, harden it, and so on using only chakra. It makes sense. Most earth-style jutsus I remember were basically just moving a part of the ground above the surface. So clay molding will be very helpful. As for stone crushing, after crushing stones, I could try crushing boulders to increase the mastery of earth nature whereas, for clay molding, I could just increase the amount of clay. He then placed the scroll back. Went to section E and grabbed a scroll on the basics of Fuinjutsu. Upon reading it he analyzed, all right, this doesn't sound too hard. Though I guess the difficulty should increase a lot for later versions. But yeah, this sounds to be too time consuming. Best left for later. He kept the scroll back and started searching section zero for sensor training. He found many that were based on improving the senses of smell or sight or hearing. After searching a lot, he finally found the one he was looking for. Sensing the chakra of anyone in your vicinity. On reading it he found out, I see. So every ninja has a chakra field around them, though not everyone is able to use it properly. However, sensors can not only use their chakra field but also expand their chakra field for hundreds of meters and exceptional sensors can even expand it for a few kilometers. On the other hand, if this chakra field is retracted, then that can help in hiding from enemy sensors. As for training to be a sensor, the greatest obstacles are the other senses of a ninja. So while training, it is advised to shut down the sense of sight, smell, and hearing. Interesting. I wonder if I can shut down just two of them in order to train the remaining one. Good hearing, smell, and eyesight would be very helpful in this profession. The basic method is still meditation, but sort of done in reverse. Instead of meditating to cut myself off from my surroundings, I'll have to meditate in order to perceive my surroundings. Sadly though, I have no idea how to shut down my sense of smell and also don't have any gadgets to stop hearing so I'll require help here. I guess I'll somehow have to give janky hints that I want to be a censor. Sigh. He finally kept the scroll and left the library. It was already evening. He thought, wow, I didn't notice the time at all. I guess I was in the library for over six hours. The library didn't have any windows at all. Makes sense, they don't want anyone sneaking into the library. Probably the walls are fortified with the help of Fuinjutsu to prevent Earth-style users from breaking in. He went towards his home and on the way, bought a small pack of clay for 5 Ryo. Chapter 10, Learning New Skills The next day, again Fujin was the last one to arrive. He came in merely a couple of minutes before 8 a.m. Looking at everyone he chuckled, look at these kids, coming early to sit on the first bench. He went and sat alone on the last bench and removed a stone and placed it in the desk. Jenki arrived at 8 and started the class. The first hour apparently was a lecture. He was talking about the history of the village, the pride that one should have in being a Kanoa shinobi, and all such stuff. Fujin classified this lecture as a brainwashing session. Fujin observed the classroom. The two Naras were half asleep. The Akimikis were probably thinking about food. The three Inazukas were too distracted with their dogs. One of the two Uchihas was very smug for some reason while the two Karama girls were gossiping about something. Others were paying attention. The smug-looking guy was Uchiha Yori. It seems like he wanted to walk in the footsteps of Itachi as he was bragging a lot about how the previous year's best student was an Uchiha who was only seven years old on the previous day. Apparently, 
both the Uchihas could already perform the fireball jutsu. Fujin finally stopped looking around. When Jenki was writing something on the board, Fujin grabbed the stone with his left hand and started to train earth nature while keeping his hand under the desk. When he channeled his chakra, his whole attention was on Jenki to see whether he would notice and react. However, there wasn't any visible change in Jenki's expression. Fujin thought, lucky. He ain't a natural sensor. Or he is ignoring me for some reason, though the chances of that are pretty low. Whatever, both scenarios are good for me. The lecture went on for an hour. Though Fujin paid some attention, the majority of his attention was on training his earth nature. After the brainwashing session was over, Jenki started explaining to everyone about chakra. And then finally moved on to molding chakra with hand signs. Fujin stopped his earth nature training and paid full attention in class. The kids from the clans were however distracted. They had already been taught hand signs before they joined the academy. In that class, Jenki taught everyone about three hand signs and made everyone practice them. He monitored everyone closely. After the lecture was over, he said that in the next three days, he'll be teaching them the remaining hand signs. After that, they broke off for lunch followed by a lecture on history. Senjuteru and Hyuga Hana were answering a lot of questions asked by Jenki in this lecture. Fujin on the other hand stuck to his training while pretending to pay attention in class. The week went by in a similar manner. Jenki taught all twelve basic hand signs as well as the clone hand sign. He stressed the importance of learning hand signs properly, which Fujin noted was similar to the notes he read from scroll yesterday and asked everyone to practice them at home. Other than this, Jenki also introduced everyone to the leaf concentration exercise. In normal lectures, Fujin kept practicing his earth nature training, but if he got bored with it, he used to try to use his wind nature to cut the stone instead of crumbling it with earth nature. In week two, Jenki held a class to throw shurikens. He first started with a competition between the students to understand where everyone stands. He also called a few other teachers to help him with this session. Most of the clan kids performed well. The best was tied between Uchiha Yori and Senjuteru. The other Uchiha, Aburim, and Shimura rounded up the top five. Fujin was a bit startled by the serious attitude of Shimura Nobu. He thought, I guess Danzo got a root-like training program for the kids from his clan as well. Though Fujin had practiced earlier with self-made wooden shurikens, it was barely at an acceptable level. For starters, the difference in weights itself reduced the impact of earlier training. Out of six shots, he only managed to hit one on the board. And even that was closer to the edge rather than the center. He was ranked 21st in the competition. Afterwards, Jenki met up with each and every student giving them advice. When he reached Fujin, he said, All right, you have a lot of work to do on this. First, we'll start with your throwing form. Once we get that correct, you will improve quickly. Fujin nodded and allowed Jenki to correct his posture. And then he tried to replicate the way in which Jenki displayed throwing a shuriken. After Jenki corrected him a few more times. After being satisfied with his throwing form, Jenki moved on to the remaining students. Fujin took this training seriously and practiced it a lot. After that day, his time at the academy was divided into his shuriken throwing practice, which he did on the academy practice grounds itself, right after the academy ended. And after reaching home, he practiced the hand signs, molded the clay, and meditated. He tried sensing his environment in the previous week but didn't have any success at it. So that was left for later. The new thing that he started was that Fujin started to practice walking on the wall instead of leaf concentration. This was done as a substitute for tree climbing. Fujin noted that since the walls are uniform, wall walking should be easier than tree climbing. However for now this should be enough. He arranged the cushions properly on the floor so that he won't get injured when he fell on the floor hundreds of times. Walking on walls took a few days to learn. By the end of week two, he pulled that off without falling down. He could walk on the wall as well as stand on the ceiling. The major issue he faced here was the shortage of chakra. However, every day he practiced, he discovered that his stamina was improving. 
but he wasn't sure how much of that was due to better chakra control and how much was due to an increase in chakra reserves. After trying to analyze it a bit, he dropped the matter, assuring himself that it didn't matter as he was making progress anyways. During all those falls, he also learned how to flip himself in the air to properly land on his feet. After the first month in the academy, Jenki taught everyone the academy's basic taijutsu style. It included a lot of forms and moves to make it a comprehensive taijutsu style covering all areas. But that also meant that it wasn't mastered at anything. However, for now, Fujin didn't concern himself with that. This taijutsu style was obviously way superior to everything he could do in taijutsu. He was quite surprised and thought, I didn't think the basic style itself would be so complicated and cover all aspects. It makes me wonder how much better Senju and Uchiha Taijutsu styles are. And Hyuga Taijutsu is obviously superior to even them. Well, let's first master the academy style. Then I can think about learning a more advanced form of Taijutsu. This will take a lot of time, but luckily I do have a lot of time. After that day, the Taijutsu forms got added to his morning workout as well. The taijutsu training in the academy went on for over a month just to teach the students everything about that taijutsu style. Fujin noted that the ones from Senju, Achiha, Hyuga, and Inazuka clans didn't learn the academy style of taijutsu. After the taijutsu lessons were over, the academy students were made to fight among themselves every week. And depending upon their performance and technique, Jenki gave them tips or asked them to practice a certain form. Even these taijutsu matches were arranged as tournaments. Here Fujin did much better and was ranked 8th in the first tournament. Though his taijutsu style wasn't very good yet, he did benefit from having a stronger body. He wasn't very surprised by it. Though these students are very talented, maybe some even more than him, no 6-year-old kid would put as many hours into training as he did. The ones who do would be rare exceptions, like Guy for instance. Even Rock Lee only started to work that hard after he became a Jinin. Hyuga Hoka ranked first in the first Taijutsu tournament. He was followed by Senju Teru, Hyuga Hana, Achiha Yori, and the third Hyuga. Shimura Nobu was sixth followed by one of the remaining two Senju at seventh. Fujin thought, well this is promising. Unlike them, I haven't had any proper training yet. As I train further, I should grow stronger and a lot faster than these guys. I suppose I'm moving in the right direction then, I should just stick to it. Jenki started to conduct taijutsu tournaments and shuriken throwing tournaments every week for his class. Fujin noted that no such tournaments were arranged for the other four divisions. In fact, in one of his encounters with Daisuke, he learned that they hadn't even had a taijutsu class yet and are still being taught shuriken throwing and making hand signs properly. He thought, I guess they really are serious about developing this class properly. From what I heard, this was done last year as well. Though they were incredibly lucky to have Itachi in last year's class. If they have similar expectations from this year, then they will be very disappointed. Then again, I suppose they won't expect a talent of Itachi's caliber so regularly. Ending the train of thought, Fujin looked forward towards the future, a bit excited to keep improving himself. Chapter 11, Improvements The academy life continued in this manner for the first six months. After six months, Jenki had to report to Haruzen on the progress of his class. He reached the Hokage office at the appointed time and knocked on the door. After being allowed in, he entered the room and respectfully said, Lord Hokage. Haruzen nodded and said, It's all right. How is your class faring? Any talents? Jenki replied, it's going pretty well. While it's still too early to say, I believe the majority of these kids will become elite among chunins, and few probably will become jounins. Senju Teru and Uchiha Yori have been showing the most talent, as expected from someone in those clans. Hyuga Hoka and Hana have also been performing really well. Shimura Nobu is also pretty good. The remaining three from Senju, Uchiha, and Hyuga clans and the lone Aburame are decent as well. Among the civilians, we've had a surprise. The orphan, Suzuki Fujin, has been progressing pretty fast. I've spied a little on him, he is very diligent and works very hard. 
He is definitely someone we should nurture for the future. There's another among civilian kids, Aoki Nori, who is performing very well. The other kids are doing okay. On average, the talent in this batch is higher than the previous one. He said enthusiastically. But then he sighed and said, Sadly, there's no one like Itachi in this class. Haruza nodded and said, That's all right. We can't get someone like Itachi every year. But your report still sounds very promising. If in the next 15 years, we get a dozen Jounins and have remaining at Chunin ranks, then it'll help the village a lot. You've done a good job. Keep it up. You'll be responsible for raising this batch into good shinobi for our village. Jenki nodded his head and respectfully said, Yes, Lord Hokage, and exited the room. After he left Haruzen thought, Looks like we will be having another good crop of shinobi. Still, to think we'd have another diligent orphan. I wonder how his story would turn out to be. The praise that Jenki had for Fujin wasn't undeserved. Fujin improved a lot in these six months. A lot more than Jenki gave him credit for. After all, even he couldn't know the fact that even at home, Fujin spent most time training in a very planned manner. The most important improvement was in Fujin molding the chakra with hand signs. The speed had finally reached an acceptable speed and he was able to do six random seals one after another consecutively. He decided that it was finally time to start learning the basic jutsus. In earth nature transformation, he managed to crumble the rock. The clay molding was also coming along well. He could now manipulate the clay freely. And could partially harden it, but couldn't harden it entirely. Fujin noted that his progress with earth nature was much slower than wind nature. But that was understandable as his affinity was wind. Fujin also managed to create deep cuts and stones using his wind nature. In Taijutsu, he also adapted to the academy style very well. He frequently sparred with Teru, Hoka, and Yori in the academy and now ranked within the top four. Senju Teru in particular was kind of becoming a sparring partner to Fujin. In the tournaments, he also noted that his stamina was very high among his classmates. With only Teru being able to match his stamina. He wondered if this was only due to having a more trained body or was his chakra also higher than others. After all, it made sense for Teru to have higher chakra level thanks to him being a senju. Shuriken throwing was coming around properly too. He was able to hit all six shurikens on the target with his right hand. Though not all used to hit in the dead center yet. But left-handed throwing still needed a bit of practice as he could only hit four out of six with it. He decided to practice till he can consistently hit the dead center with both hands. Then he can try to hit the target while running around. In the weekly shuriken throwing competitions, Fujin slowly climbed into the top 10. Probably the most surprising thing would be that he was able to pop the water balloon around four months after the academy had started. He moved on to the rubber ball, but that was very difficult for him. He felt like it'd be years before he could pop it successfully. The class went on in a similar manner. The enthusiasm of a new academy had died down, however, competition between students had increased a lot. A smug Uchiha Yori had turned into a grumpy Uchiha Yori. Though he was good, he obviously was no Itachi. In terms of shuriken throwing, he was matched equally by Teru and others were slowly managing to hit correctly with all six shurikens as well. Whereas in terms of Taijutsu, both Teru and Hoko were better than him and Fujin and Hana were in a similar level as him. And even in lectures, Hana and Teru used to outdo him. In all, Teru was obviously better than him and Hana was around the same level. Fujin wondered, does this kind of jealousy unlock Sharingan? Or does it have to be a major impact like the death of someone? Well, I do hope he unlocks his Sharingan though, it would be helpful to get some experience by sparring with someone with a Sharingan. Those thoughts aside, Fujin had trouble of his own. His physical workouts in the morning were becoming stale. He had grown comfortable with them and didn't know how to make it harder without increasing the time of workout. While well, saying that he didn't know any method would be wrong, he did know one method, which was adding weights. However, he didn't know if restricting his body with weights when he ain't even seven years old would create any problems or not. He had found out about the prices of the weights. 
After six months of saving, Fujin had saved up over 1,200 Rio and could afford to buy the lighter weights. After thinking about it a bit, he decided to consult Janky. Unlike other things, there wasn't really much to hide about his physical workouts as he used to do it in the open anyways. Anyone who did a little investigation would have found it out. So one day, after the lectures were over, he asked Janky for help. He explained his problem to his sensei properly. After thinking for a bit, Janky demonstrated to him a few slightly more difficult exercises. He also helped out to design a new workout plan for Fujin. After seeing the new plan, Fujin thanked his sensei politely for it while thinking, hmm, this is really helpful. I should have asked him earlier. He actually seemed enthusiastic to help me. But then again, I'm pretty sure that even this will become comfortable for me after a few months. Hence after thanking him, he asked again, Sensei, will it be fine if I make the exercises difficult by wearing weights? Jenki was surprised by the question. He asked seriously, where did you learn about weights? Fujin acted to show that he was nervous and said, Um, I saw a weapon shop in the market when I was shopping. I saw the weights in that shop. Jenki understood and then explained, I see. Well, it's good to be curious, but don't use weights for training. They'll affect the growth of your body and it'll be bad for you in the long run. He then put up a kind smiling face and said, It is very good that you asked me. Next time you have any such ideas, ask me before trying, okay? Fuji nodded. Then after thinking for a bit he asked, Sensei, then is there anything else I could use to make the workout tougher? Jenki was a bit surprised by Fujin's obsession in making the physical workouts tougher. He thought, Fujin was genuinely happy with the new plan, and yet he still keeps asking me these questions. Does that mean that he is thinking that this new workout will soon become easy for him? That's surprising. I knew he was diligent, but not this much. Now he makes me really look forward to his future. Jenki then said, actually there is another way. Instead of weights, you can have some seals do the same work without any disadvantages. Like a gravity seal. Fujin was surprised by this information. He thought, I guess I really need to learn Fuinjutsu. He showed an enthusiastic expression to Jenki. Jenki was happy with the enthusiasm Fujin showed and decided to play a little trick on him. Jenki continued, however these seals can't be given to anyone. Also, they are very expensive if you try to get them, so you can't get them by yourself. Fujin was instantly confused. He frowned a bit and wondered, what's he playing at? I think he is trying to bait me or something. He decided to play along and then sighed and showed a dejected expression. Jenki was happy with the response he saw on Fujin's face and said enticingly, however don't worry. Do you remember what I said on the first day? That the Hokage will watch your exams? Fujin, still confused, nodded his head. Jenki continued, if you perform the best among your classmates, then you can ask Hokage for a gift. So then you could ask Hokage for these seals to help you. Till then you should stick to the plan I made for you. Fujin finally started to get some ideas. He nodded his head while thinking, is he trying to motivate me to perform well in the exams? By dangling a carrot in front of me? Seeing Fujin nod, Jenki smiled and said while ruffling Fujin's hair, good. But the exams will also have a theoretical part and not only physical exercises. So you have to study theory too if you want to come first. Finally getting what was going on, Fujin said enthusiastically, Yes, Sensei, I'll study hard for the final exam. Satisfied with himself, Jenki finally left. After Jenki left, Fujin laughed a lot internally and then thought, Sigh, it's hard to keep acting like a kid, though there is an aspect of fun in it, and damn these adults, trying to manipulate little kids so much. It was the same in my previous life. Everyone just forces little kids to come first in everything they do. The sad part is I actually have to perform well in those exams. Still, it was very hilarious to watch. Him trying to manipulate a little kid. Sucks for him that I am no little kid. I guess he said that just because I don't participate much in those boring lectures. Come to think about it, I don't think I have ever even answered a single question he asked in class. 
No wonder he tried to manipulate me. I guess I'll have to improve my pretending to pay attention in class skill. Anyways, I ain't really worried about theoretical exams. While I won't be arrogant to say that I am the smartest person in the room, my brain is much more mature than theirs. These exams should be very easy for me. That said, the seals do worry me a bit. After all, if someone messes with the seal while putting it on me, it would become very troublesome. I guess I should check up on the gravity seal and some suppression seals in the library sometime later. Ending his train of thoughts, Fujin looked again at the new workout plan and walked to the library. Chapter 12 Betrayal After entering the library, Fujin first entered Section Zero and searched for chakra control scrolls. After searching for a few minutes, he finally found the right one. After finding a place to sit he opened it up and started reading while thinking, I can now walk on walls even in my sleep. I need to try tree climbing a bit and then move on to water walking if I want to improve my chakra control even further. If anyone asks where I learned these things, I can refer them to this scroll. The scroll mentioned leaf concentration, tree climbing, and water walking. However, what surprised Fujin was that a scroll was referred to at the end of the scroll which presented a theory to improve chakra control even further. To satisfy his curiosity, he searched for that scroll and started reading it. After reading the analyze, interesting. The scroll proposes a theory that chakra could be used to counterbalance ourselves against gravity itself. By applying as much force as gravity applies on us, one could float and ascend or descend by applying higher and lower forces respectively. Still, no one has successfully managed to do this. Even Tsunade in the series didn't have any such skill and her chakra control was the best there was in the whole series. As for others who flew like the third Suchikage and the ones related to him, I think they used Earth style to lighten themselves or something along those lines. I don't recall it properly. Anyways, this is an interesting theory. Maybe I could try it sometime later on. Keeping the scroll back, Fujin finally decided to get to his main task. He went into Section E and grabbed the clone Jutsu scroll. On opening it, he found that this Jutsu needed only three seals. They were Ram, Snake, and Tiger in that order. He read the scroll further. After reading it he thought, I see. Even though the hand signs are only three, a lot more has to be done internally. The hand signs only act as a guide. So just knowing the hand signs won't be enough to be able to do the Jutsu. Guess that scraps all my plans for Shadow Clone Jutsu. Anyways, I should start learning this Jutsu. After memorizing everything of importance regarding Clone Jutsu, he left the library. He went back to his apartment and started practicing the Clone Jutsu behind closed doors. As expected, the Jutsu was quite difficult. He had to make a couple of more trips to the library in order to read that scroll again. During one such trip, he saw Gink watching him and smiling. He thought, I guess he misunderstood that I'm visiting the library to learn more about the history and other stuff he covers in class. Well whatever, it's not a problem for me. He also temporarily scrapped his after academy routine and focused entirely on the clone jutsu. Only after he ran out of chakra would he take a break and meditate. It took three days for him to be able to make his first clone. And he was horrified by it. His thoughts were, I never thought I'd make worse clones than Naruto. Only after a week was he finally able to create a decent clone. He practiced it for another week to get a hang of it and could do it at a much faster pace. After that, he started to learn the transformation jutsu. Transformation was going to be a critical technique for him. He planned to disguise himself in order to train outside to ensure that he didn't attract much attention to himself. It also doubles up as training for infiltration missions. In case anyone did catch him, he can use that excuse to get away. It took him a week to pull off transformation jutsu properly to a certain extent. He had transformed into his classmates. However, it wasn't entirely perfect. There were still a lot of imperfections. And that was only in terms of appearance. He hadn't managed to transform his smell and chakra as mentioned in the scroll. He thought, this is tough. Just getting the appearance right is very difficult. 
I guess I may be able to change the smell after a while, but perfectly replicating someone's smell will be difficult. Then again, if I recall right, even Naruto in Chunin exams wasn't able to replicate smell as Kiba was easily able to identify him due to his smell. So I guess it is rather difficult to pull off. Even the ones who pass the academy aren't expected to learn how to change the smell. I guess I can work around this by transforming into people from my previous life and using perfumes to mask my smell. That way at least disguising as a stranger would be doable. He continued with his practice. However, the next morning when he woke up and started his morning workout, he noticed that the environment in the village seemed very tense. Despite it being so early, quite a lot of people were awake. And many ninjas were running around. And most of those ninjas had very solemn faces. Fujin wondered what happened. After the class started, he noticed that a few of the kids from the clans looked a bit tense. He approached Senja Teru and asked why they were so tense. Teru was surprised a bit and asked, didn't you get the news? Fujin was now really curious. He asked back, nope, what news? Teru stated seriously, yesterday night, one of the legendary Sanins, Orochimaru betrayed Kanoha and ran away from the village. He is now a missing Nin. Hearing that, Fujin became very serious. After a few seconds he replied seriously, yeah, that's some bad news. Extremely surprising too. Teru agreed, yeah. Who would have thought that one of the third Hokage students would betray Kanoha? I heard that he did a lot of illegal experiments that killed a lot of people. Who'd have ever guessed that someone so respected would have been such a scum? Fuji nodded solemnly and went to the last bench and sat there. He thought, damn it's hard to act surprised when you already know it is gonna happen. Still, things are happening in a similar way to what happened in Naruto. The results of Third War, the attack of Kurama and Minato's death, then Itachi passing in a year, and now Orochimaru's defection. I guess the next event would be an attempt by Kumo to kidnap Hinata and the death of Izashi. That move from Kumo does make some sense. With Minato dead, Orochimaru defected and the remaining two Sanins not present in the village. Then again, giving Hizashi to them was really spineless of Aruzen. Well whatever, I don't really have any power to interfere or all the information about Kanoha's and Kumo's military. Then again, even if I did have the power, I'd have probably ignored it as it doesn't have anything to do with me. Anyways, Orochimaru leaving is definitely some good news. If I had to pick the ones I totally want to avoid before I become strong enough, then Danzo and Orochimaru would be the ones to top the list. With Orochimaru gone, half the danger is eliminated. Now I just need to hope that I don't catch Root's attention. Otherwise, life will get a lot more troublesome. That said, I do wonder if like in Naruto, here too Haruzen let Orochimaru go or whether Orochimaru was able to retreat by himself. If it's the former, then that's a huge blame for Haruzen. How many people died due to Orochimaru just because Haruzen was too soft to kill his disciple? Heck, even all the deaths caused by Kabuto's impure world resurrection in the fourth great ninja war can be blamed on this bad decision by Haruzen. Fujin sighed after having that thought. While Fujin wasn't disturbed, and even happy that Orochimaru had defected, almost everyone else in the ninja world was tense. In the Hokage's office, Hiruzen was present with a solemn face. Apart from Hiruzen, Hamura and Koharu were also very worried. Danzo was present too. Danzo criticized the Hokage, Hiruzen. You've grown soft. You have let such a huge threat to the village get away. Before Haruzen could reply, Koharu chided, I agree. Orochimaru has knowledge of a lot of secrets of Kanoha. If he were to leak anything to our enemy villages, then it'll be a nightmare for us. Haruzen sighed and replied, It's unfortunate that he chose to defect, but I'm sure that he won't do anything that'll be detrimental to Kanoha. Danzo sarcastically spoke, Yeah, just like you were sure that he won't defect from Kanoha. Not only did he escape from you, but he also killed close to a couple of dozen of our ninjas that were chasing after him. And there's no saying what else would he do. Hamura tried to calm the situation down, well we can keep arguing about this later. The question right now is what to do right now. 
with the number of secrets he was privy to, even the various clan heads are very tense. Danzo stated, we have to mark Orochimaru as a missing nin. Increase his bounty and also send a squad to chase after him and eliminate him. Haru's encountered it saying, sending any squads behind him will probably just get them killed. And we are very short on manpower as it is. Kohara questioned, but we can't leave him unchecked, can we? Danzo and Hamura agreed with Koharu. Hiruzen then said, I'll send Jiraiya to chase after him while thinking, hopefully, he'll be able to convince Orochimaru to return and get back on the right track. Danzo questioned, won't he fall prey to his emotions just like you did? I suggest sending root ninjas alongside Jiraiya. Hiruzen, however not trusting Danzo's intentions, just dismissed it saying, they'll just get in his way. The discussion between the four old teammates continued for a while. In the afternoon, there was a council meeting. All the clan leaders were very tense during this meeting. Orochimaru had worked with all of them at some point and knew many of their clan secrets which would be bad for them if leaked to enemies. A few even blamed Haruzen for having a soft side for his students. The council concluded by labeling Orochimaru as a missing nin, increasing his bounty by 50%, and sending Jiraiya to hunt down Orochimaru. The various clan leaders were doubtful whether Jiraiya would really hunt Orochimaru, however they didn't really have any other option. Every other hidden village was surprised and shocked by this news. In Sunagakure, Raza thought, first Minano and their Jinchuriki's death and now Orochimaru's defection? Are they falling apart? TCH, it sucks that we were hit so badly in the previous war and recovery is so slow due to that bastard daimyo. Otherwise, I'd have definitely taken advantage of this situation. In Kirigakure, Yagura received the reports as well. But he was too busy with Kiri's internal problems to pay much attention to this incident. In Iwagakure, the council debated this matter at length. A few suggested that they should use this opportunity to take revenge for what Minato did to them. While some were cautious, wondering if Kanoha was playing some sort of game. In the end, when the discussion came to an end, they asked Anoki what they should do. Anoki said, there's no point in hurrying to do something right now. Even without Minato and Orochimaru, Kanoha is still very strong. And in any case, there's no way that Brat A won't do something. Let's just watch what he does and how Kanoha responds and then decide what to do. On hearing Inoki's decision, one thought ran through everyone present in the council meeting, fence sitter indeed. In Kumogakure though, the fourth Rakage thought very hard about this incident. After discussing with his council, he decided to see if he could take advantage of Kanoha's misfortune. Chapter 13, Academy Exams while the whole ninja world discussed Orochimaru's defection, Fujin didn't bother with it and kept his focus on his training. After two weeks of training for transformation jutsu, it had finally improved to an acceptable level, though it still had a lot of space for improvement. After that, he began training for substitution jutsu. This one was much tougher than the other two. It took nearly twice the time to learn this jutsu and master it to an acceptable level. However, it wasn't what Fujin had thought it to be. He thought, the technique is basically just misdirection. The main focus here is noticing your opponent's focus and the instant he loses focus a bit, replace yourself with an object quickly enough so that the enemy won't notice you. It ain't an instant switcheroo. So it won't work against someone much stronger than you or someone having a Sharingan activated. The object actually has to be very close to you, otherwise, the jutsu will become much harder to be performed. Sigh, that makes sense, instant switcheroo would have been too overpowered considering that every academy kid learns this technique. It does have a lot of variations though. Jinjutsu, transformation jutsu can be used to fool the enemy better. Chakra threads could be used to bring an object at a distance closer to you. It also states that a lower form summoning jutsu could be used to instantly summon the objects around you, while you hightail out of there. Still, though it ain't as overpowered as I thought, it is still very useful. The subtleness of misdirection would be a very important skill to have as a ninja. Can could be applied in a heck of a lot of scenarios. I should still master it to the point of being able to do it without hand signs. 
but body flicker just has to be focused much more now. I will also have to learn some wind and earth style escape jutsus. For nearly two months, Fujin kept on attempting these jutsus till he ran out of chakra. This process of training till he ran out of chakra had a marvelous effect on his chakra reserves. They increased considerably during these two months. During these two months, he also searched the library for scrolls on increasing chakra reserves. He found two scrolls very easily. One explained that chakra increased as one experienced physical and spiritual growth, i.e., it could be increased over time by doing physical exercises and meditation. Another compared chakra reserves to muscle. Just like how physically straining your muscles would increase muscles, chakra reserves would increase by straining it. So to increase the reserves, one had to keep using his chakra till he ran out of it. Fujin had been dependent on the above two till now, which explained the rapid growth in his chakra reserves. Apart from that, he also found a few other ways or theories. One scroll talked about using nature chakra, i.e., the sage mode, which would increase the chakra reserves and make it more potent for the time the sage mode was activated. Another scroll talked about increasing cellular activity. By making the cells more active, one could extract more chakra out of each cell, thus considerably increasing the reserves. It would also help in improving the physique. Fujin was quite impressed with this theory. Sadly, the way to increase cellular activity wasn't mentioned. Fujin wondered, I doubt it'll be easy to increase cellular activity. Otherwise, this method would be very common. I wonder who came up with this theory. Perhaps I could contact that person in the future. On reading the scroll entirely, he saw the name of the person who wrote this scroll at the end. He was very surprised by it initially and then concluded, makes sense that it was the snake bastard who came up with this theory. TCH, seems like this method is a dead end. Maybe if I rate his bases in the future and get my hands on his research results, I could find the way if I get lucky, though the chances are pretty low to be honest. Otherwise, I could try asking Tsunade. Her knowledge of the human body might exceed Orochimaru's. And she was his ex-teammate. It's possible that she helped Orochimaru with this. Sai, another thing to consider for the future. The other theories were similarly not implementable. Some were not complete, some were detrimental in the long run. Fujin sighed and returned all the scrolls to their place. He thought, I guess my only option is to ask Janki. Sadly, I don't have a reasonable excuse to explain why I want to increase my chakra level. His first question would be how am I running out of chakra? And I can't tell him that I am practicing the basic jutsus on my own. If told it to him, and he told his colleagues, the word would eventually reach Haruzen and Danzo. A six-year-old orphan who can perform all three basic ninjutsu, it's a ticket straight into the root. After Fujin had those three jutsus down, he started to again a lot time for other aspects. For the past two months, he had decreased his shuriken throwing practice time, dropped clay molding, stopped practicing chakra control, and used to only meditate only when he was totally drained of chakra. Among those three jutsus, he didn't intend to work much on the clone jutsu as in the future he'll be replacing it with shadow clones and elemental clones. As for transformation jutsu, it was very difficult to completely master. So he just decided to focus on the appearance part. However, for substitution jutsu, he planned to master it completely. To the extent that he could do it instantly without the use of any hand signs. In these two months, he also progressed a lot in earth and wind nature training during the lectures. He was now instantly able to crumble a small stone into the soil, and also able to cut a stone into two. In a rather awkward but hilarious incident, his desk was once full of soil from crumbled stones and he had to silently clear it after the classes were over. After that incident, he stopped crumbling stones in the class. He wondered what he could do during that time though. Sadly, he couldn't think of a suitable replacement for earth nature training. So he just decided to further focus on wind nature and started carrying a small metal scrap into class and started to try to cut it. Over the next few months, he started to go out of his home and roam the streets of Kanoha while using transformation jutsu to disguise himself as a random teenager. 
He identified a lot of isolated places in a bunch of mini forests within Kanoha and started practicing tree climbing. It was very similar to walking on walls. The only difference being the rougher surface of the trees. He managed to do it within an hour and moved on to water walking. Apart from that, he also read up on the gravity seal and a few suppression seals in the library. Another month went by in a similar manner, leading less than a month for final exams. Fujin finally wondered whether to start preparing for exams, he thought still 25 days for written exams. It's still too early. However, after convincing himself a bit more, he sighed, whatever, it's my first exam in this world, might as well get it done with. While studying, he did note that the syllabus here was tougher than in his previous world. It's probably what would be expected of a 9 to 10 year old kid, and not from a 6 to 7 year old kid. He wondered whether the syllabus in the ending years may actually provide a challenge to him. Soon final exams were upon the academy students. For all other students, the final exams were only the written part. However, for the ones in elite batches, more parameters were added. For Fujin's class, shuriken throwing competition, leaf concentration competition, and taijutsu tournaments were arranged too. For shuriken throwing, a board with circles of different sizes but the same center was placed and everyone had to hit it. The points depended on which circle the shuriken hit, with the smallest circle having the highest points and the largest having the lowest. In all, the shuriken competition was worth 30 points. Leaf concentration competition was only to see how long one could keep the leaf from falling down. It was worth 20 points. The one who held it for the longest would get the full 20 points and the points of others would depend on how long they kept the leaf from falling as compared to him. For example, if the one who held it for the longest held it for 30 minutes, he would get 20 points, whereas if someone else held it for only 21 minutes, he'd get only 14 points. The Taijutsu tournament was straightforward, with points depending on rank. It was worth 50 points. And the written exam itself was worth 100 points. The exams finally happened. Fujin did get a laugh out of how serious everyone was about the exams. In written exams, Fujin was confident that he answered everything right, though he wasn't sure how everyone else performed. Two days after the written exams, the other competitions were to be held. He guessed that they wanted to grade the written papers first so that Okage can reward the winner right there. They started the day with leaf concentration. Fujin, as he had already started to practice water walking, was quite confident in this competition. The competition started. The first guy dropped his leaf in merely two minutes. He was from the Inazuka clan. More than half of the class dropped out within the first four minutes. Fujin could hear their groaning and upset voices from them. After ten minutes, only nine students were still competing. After fifteen minutes, the only ones left were Suzuki Fujin, Hyuga Hana, Senju Teru, Shimura Nobu, and Achiha Yori. Right around that time, he heard Yori groaning. He knew from the exercises conducted in class that at max the others could go twenty-odd minutes. Senju Teru dropped the leaf during the nineteenth minute, Nobu dropped it in the twenty-first minute, whereas Hana continued till the twenty-second minute. Fujin decided to build up a decent lead for the points he'll be losing in the Taijutsu tournament. Wanting to stop around half an hour, he continued up to the 33rd minute before intentionally making a mistake and dropping the leaf. Though he had outperformed his classmates, he wasn't that worried about attracting a lot of attention, as last year, Itachi didn't drop the leaf for freaking two hours. And there were rumors that he didn't drop it but was asked to get up. On opening his eyes, he saw a few kids looking at him enviously, and Yori nearly fuming at how outmatched he was in this competition. The next one was the shuriken throwing competition. Yori, Teru, Nobu, Fujin, Hoka, and a couple more scored perfectly in this competition. Looking at Yori's fallen face, Fujin noted, this competition is indeed unfair for him. From what I've seen, Yori is able to hit a still target while he is moving very accurately while he can also hit a moving target on a consistent basis, though not dead center. Sadly for him, the exam wasn't that difficult and hence many others were able to match him. If not, only Teru and maybe Nobu would have been able to match him. 
In the Taijutsu competition, Hyuga Hoka ranked first, followed by Teru and Hana. Fujin was ranked fourth and Yori and Nobu were fifth and sixth respectively. Fujin defeated Yori in the quarterfinals. Admittedly, Yori's technique was superior to Fujin's, however, his physique was much weaker. However, in the semis, Fujin lost to Hoka, and in the fight to decide rank three, he lost to Hana. He noted, damn these Hugas are tough to fight. Heck, pure taijutsu competition against them is completely unfair. Even Teru, though he fought well with his Senju style, in the end, he still lost. If I meet these Hugas in Chunin exams or somewhere, I'll be sure to pack a shitload of explosion tags to fight from far away. Hiruzen had visited to spectate the Taijutsu completion. Fujin did note that everyone was much fiercer during the Taijutsu competition, especially Hana. He wondered if that was because it was the exams, or because the Hokage was spectating. With all the exams completed, the teachers allowed the students a small break while they readied the final scores of everyone. Chapter 14 Results While the teachers were calculating the final scores, all the students were waiting around on the training grounds. Fujin internally laughed while noticing, Wow, some of them are so nervous, it's so cute, ha ha ha. Only the two yawning Naras and Teru looked calm. After adding up the scores and cross-checking, the teachers finally came back, led by Hokage himself. Hiruzen gave another inspiring come brainwashing speech while praising everyone for their efforts and the display of their talents. After his speech, Genki walked forward and displayed the results on a board. As Fujin expected, he was the one ranked first. The scores of the top five were, Fujin, 100 plus 20 plus 30 plus 44 is equal to 194. Hana, 100 plus 13 plus 29 plus 46 is equal to 188. Teru, 96 plus 12 plus 30 plus 48 is equal to 186. Nobu, 98 plus 13 plus 30 plus 40 is equal to 181. Yuri, 95 plus 09 plus 30 plus 42 equals 176. Fujin, looking at his rank, was very satisfied. It was as he expected. However, on taking a deeper look and checking the scores in each individual category for him and others, he was a bit shocked, damn. I'm ranked one only due to the leaf concentration competition. If I didn't build a huge lead there, then Hannah would have outranked me and Teru would have been tied with me. I didn't expect anyone else to get a 100 in written exams. He exhaled a long breath of air in relief, I guess I have been incredibly lucky with the marking system of the leaf concentration competition. Chakra control is where I am much superior than these kids from clans. But sadly for them, their specialties weren't marked in this manner. Yori and Teru could have easily scored much more if the shuriken competition was made more difficult. Similarly, they'd have been much superior than everyone if ninjutsu was tested. After all, fireball jutsu is a rank C jutsu. I am sure Janki would have noticed this too. So next year, the marking scheme might be different. Perhaps other exams would be marked similar to the best scorer as well. He concluded his thoughts with, even though I ranked first, I still have much to work on. I shouldn't slack off. Instead, I should be intensifying my training. I'm sure these guys would be trained hard by their clans during the vacation. After coming out of his thoughts, he noticed those around him. He noticed that Hannah and Teru were looking at him with very aggrieved looks. As if he had done them a huge injustice. After a second he realized that they were probably mad due to the results of the leaf concentration competition. He just decided to ignore them. After displaying the results, Hiruzen wanted Jenki to announce the prize. However, after looking at Jenki, Hiruzen felt as if Jenki was looking very grumpy. He began to guess what made him so irritated, wondering if he could get to hear an interesting story. He decided to ask him later. Jenki was really irritated. He thought, this brat. For ten fucking months he didn't answer a single question in class. Always seemed half distracted. Who knows what the fuck he does with his left hand always under his desk. The one time I tried to check, all I found was a lot of soil under his desk. 
and now he scores a perfect 100 on written exams? Don't tell me that after he goes home, all he does is study. Right then he felt like the Hokage was looking at him. Seeing Hokage looking at him, he understood what Hokage wanted and quickly announced, All right, everyone, be silent for a while. After getting the class's attention, he continued as I had told you guys on the first day, Lord Hokage would come here to watch your performance. However, there's an additional reward for the one who scores the highest in this exam. The best student can ask Lord Hokage for a reward. On hearing this, the civilian kids were surprised. While the kids from clan seemed to already know this. Genki announced loudly, Suzuki Fujin, step forward. Fujin walked forward while thinking, I wonder what are the limits of the reward. Can I ask for private tutoring from him? Any forbidden or rank S jutsus? Or better yet ask for the scroll of sealing? Hee <laughs> hee, I wonder what face he'd make if I asked for the scroll of sealing or something like Edo Tensai. Oh well, need to show proper respect now I guess. When Fujin reached in front of Hiruzen, he bowed respectfully. Seeing that, Hiruzen was very pleased. He smiled kindly and said, You performed really well. I can see that you have worked really hard to be able to rank first in your class. The will of fire burns strong in you. Fujin thought sarcastically, Yeah, right. Hiruzen continued, Ask what reward you'd like. Fujin took a glance at Jenki and was a bit surprised at his irritated look. He then looked towards Hiruzen and respectfully said, Lord Hokage, I would like to get seals that can replicate the effect weights have on our physique, but without any detrimental side effects. Hiruzen was a bit surprised by what Fujin asked for. However, he soon nodded and said, All right. However, it will require some time to be prepared. I'll call you to my office when it is ready. Fujin tried to show a very happy and enthusiastic expression. He said in an excited manner, Thank you very much, Lord Hokage. After that, he retreated back among the kids. The exams were finally over. Fujin, who had already grown used to the new routine provided by Jenki, would finally have better means to strengthen his physique. However, before they were dismissed, Jenki announced that they would have a class tomorrow. Hearing that most of the kids groaned, Students from other divisions already started their vacations two days back. Jenki, however, tried his best to assure everyone that this will be the last class. The next day, everyone was present in the classroom. Jenki arrived and the class greeted him. A few were still upset at being called for class. Jenki started by saying, Before we start, I have to say that I am very proud of your performance yesterday. Keep up your hard work and soon you all will be splendid shinobi. Hearing that calmed down the upset ones. He continued, I hope that you guys continue your training on vacation as well. As for today's class, don't worry, it'll be very exciting for you. I will be talking about what options are available to you guys in the future. That is what type of ninja you can become. After that, Jenki started telling them what all options are there in the future. He started with the easiest one to understand, the medic meme. He explained what a medic ninja does and emphasized their importance in a squad. He even mentioned Sinane in order to increase the interest of his students. He followed it up with various other possibilities like Assault Ninja, Tracking Ninja, Sensor Ninja, Hunter Neen, Infiltration Ninja, Communication Ninja, and so on. He explained the benefits of each and every one of them as well as their restrictions and limitations as well as the risks associated. He also gave a good role model for each option. He also explained about specializing. He explained, Jinjutsu, Taijutsu, various elemental ninjutsu, a ninja could become very powerful if specialized in one of these. But a basic capability for rest is important too. Otherwise, you will have a lot of weaknesses. He explained more about them. The lecture continued for two hours straight. Around 10 a.m., Jenki finally ended his lecture. He said, All right, with this now you are officially on your vacation. Fujin was very happy with this lecture. He thought, Finally, I got a chance. Many students got very excited and started celebrating. However, Jenki raised his voice and continued, But, 
Think about what we talked about today. Discuss it with your parents and decide the optimal way for you to train. If anyone has any doubts, they can consult me. I'll be in the staff room till noon. With that, he finally ended his class. Many students just ran out of class. Fujin instead went to the shuriken training ground and started practicing. After half an hour, he decided to visit Janki. On reaching the staff room, he knocked and entered after being permitted. Janki was the only teacher present. It made sense as vacations had started. Looking at Fujin, Janki was still irritated a bit. However, after a few seconds, he let out a sigh and thought, forget it. I guess he is just too reserved to actively participate in class. Fujin was puzzled by looking at Janki Sai. He called him to get his attention, Sensei. Janki replied, So, what queries do you want to clear? Fujin replied, Sensei, could you update my workout routine again and also tell me more about those seals and how to use them? Janki nodded and took a look at his workout routine again. After considering the addition of seals, he made a few changes to the routine and asked Fujin to follow them. He said, All right, follow this plan and if you get comfortable, you can increase the pressure that seals can put on you. However, don't increase the pressure a lot or you can get injured and won't be able to practice for weeks. Fujin nodded, Thank you, Sensei. However, he still stood there and asked something Janki would have never guessed. He said, Sensei, I thought about the roles you mentioned during the lecture and I'm really interested in being a sensor. So can you tell me how I should train for it? Janki was really surprised by this request. Not able to understand the reason, he asked, Why do you want to become a sensor? Fujin replied confidently, Sensei, if an enemy sneaks up on me or my team in the future, being a sensor would help me save all of us. Also, I'll be able to detect enemies from far away and prevent us from falling into any ambush. That's why I wanted to become a censor. After finishing, Fujin smirked internally. Jenki was surprised a bit by the answer. All the stuff that Fujin just said was what he himself had said in class. He thought, no wonder he scored full in written exams. But still, something doesn't add up. He seems a bit too interested in becoming a censor. It's not something that can happen in merely two hours. It's as if he knew about sensors beforehand. He asked, Since when did you want to become a sensor ninja? Fujin wasn't ignorant of the fact that Janki could have found this request a bit suspicious. He acted to show that he was nervous, and said, Um, I wasn't aware of sensor ninjas until today's lecture. He then sheepishly rubbed the back of his head while saying, However, I was thinking along those lines from the day you snuck up on me in the library. If it was an enemy, he could have killed me without me even knowing what happened. Jenki was stunned by the reply, I never thought that a simple incident as that had such an impact on him. And that was merely his first day. Sigh. Whatever, I guess I'm the one to blame for this obsession of his. He then replied, I am not a censor, so I won't be able to help you with this. Hearing that he saw a dejected look at Fujin. Fujin was thinking, oh please, not another trick again. I don't want to wait till next year's final exam. However, Janki had good news for Fujin. He continued, however, I have a good friend who is a censor and is in the censor division of Kanoha. I'll ask him to train you over the vacation. I hope you don't have any other plans for the vacation. Fujin put up an excited expression while thinking, oh, I do have a lot of plans, not just for the vacation but also for the next year or two, and said, no sensei, in an excited manner. Janki smiled and said that he'll pick up Fujin tomorrow at 8 a.m. Fujin then took his leave. Chapter 15, Censor The next morning, Janki showed up at Fujin's house at 8 a.m. After picking him up, they went to a training ground. Fujin saw that a middle-aged man, probably in his late 20s or early 30s, was waiting. He noticed that the man had a Yamanaka crest on him. He thought, should have guessed. In Kanoha, they are the best censors. Janki approached him and said, Yo, this is the kid I was talking about. Fujin, he is Shin. He was my classmate. 
He is a special Jounin. He'll be giving you tips on how to become a censor. He may seem grumpy at times, but don't worry, he is a very kind person. Fuji nodded, Good morning, Shin Sensei. He noted that Shin, who was already looking a bit mad at Jenki's introduction, seemed even more grumpy after he greeted him. Shin angrily said, Damn you, Jenki. Not only do you give such a shit introduction, but now are also trying to pull me into being a sensei? He then looked at Fujin strictly and said, Kiddo, don't ever call me sensei. Fujin wondered, Why is everyone so strange? While Jenki asked mockingly, Damn, why do you have to be so grumpy so early in the day? Fujin acted to show he was nervous and asked, So what do I call you? Shin thought for a few seconds, and then put up a smile on his face, with his eyes almost sparkling, and said, Call me Shinaniki. His face looked borderline creepy. Fujin's expression immediately became entirely plain and almost blurted out, Why don't I call you old geezer? Jenki facepalmed and scolded, Stop being creepy. Let him call you sensei. Shin sighed in disappointment and replied, All right, leave it. Then looking at Fujin, he said, All right, kiddo, first let's see how talented you are in becoming a sector. If your talent is very poor, then I won't be teaching you and you shouldn't waste your time on it either. He first lectured Fujin a bit about what sensors do and how. Then instructed Fujin to sit in a meditative pose and told him how to sense his chakra field. It took nearly half an hour for Fujin to sense his chakra field. The instructions were very helpful. Shin then tested Fujin's chakra field a bit. After some testing, he concluded that Fujin's chakra field had a radius of 7.3 meters. Shin commented, 7.3 meters, not bad. An average ninja has a chakra field of 4 to 5 meters. In my Yamanaka clan, we train our youngsters in becoming a sensor if their chakra field exceeds 7 meters, while for other Kanoha shinobi, the minimum requirement is 5.9 meters. However, that is just the bare minimum. Quite a few in the Yamanaka clan had their chakra field exceed 10 meters before they started training to become a sensor. I myself had a radius of 10.6 meters. So while you can become a sensor, you'll have to do a lot of hard work. So are you sure you still want to train to become a sensor? Fujin processed all the information quickly and nodded. Shin said, All right, I'll guide you. However, the process of training to become a sensor is quite complicated. We will need proper training facilities. I'll take you to the place where Kanoha sensors are trained. You will start visiting there daily at 10.30 a.m. from tomorrow onwards. Jenki nodded at his former classmate. He looked at Fujin and informed him, Lord Hokage will have your seals ready by tomorrow. Report to his office tomorrow at 6 p.m. Jenki nodded and said, Thank you, Sensei. He then accompanied Shin to the training facility. The location was slightly away from the residential areas. It was in the middle of one of the many, many forests in Kanoha. Fujin memorized the location and then took his leave. The next day, Fujin reached the training facility at 10.28 a.m. He saw that Shin was already there. On entering, Fujin saw that there were a lot of rooms in the facility. The facility was mostly empty with very few people actually being there. However, Fujin noted that quite a few rooms were occupied. Shin said, these rooms isolate everything outside it, and also have seals that can eliminate all sound and smell in the room so you'll have to entirely be dependent on your ability to sense. Fujin paid attention while Shin was explaining it. He thought, I see, this makes sense. I suppose this is where most of Kanoha's sensors train. I guess other trainees are occupying other rooms. I don't recall properly, but I think Kanoha also had a facility that aided it to monitor the whole border of the village to look for intruders or something along those lines, though it was only shown in Shippuden and not in Part 1. I wonder if that facility is also in here, or is it someplace elsewhere? Shin led Fujin into one of the rooms. The room was very dark. All walls were painted black. The room was pretty big too. On entering, Shin explained to Fujin how to train to be able to sense with only the help of his chakra. He said, a blindfold will be placed on you, 
and after the seals are activated, all sound and smell in the room will be eliminated. After that, a few objects will be placed in the room. These objects have a small amount of chakras sealed within them in a manner that can be detected by sensors. So your job will be to detect these objects. We will start by placing the object 3 meters from you, and later increase the range to 5 meters and then to 7 meters. Once you are done with it, then I'll teach you how to increase the size of your chakra field. Fujin understood and thanked him. He started the training. The training continued till 12.30 with him having no success at all. At that time, Shin ended the training. He said that they'll daily train here for two hours and also gave him a few tips in order to make some progress. He also had a few words of encouragement for Fujin as he said that these things can't be sensed in a day and to not get very upset. He also provided Fujin with a small cubicle object. He said, this is one of the objects that I had asked you to sense. You can temporarily borrow this to practice at home. Though you won't be able to block your sense of smell and sound, however, it shouldn't matter much as you don't specialize in either of those. So just try to practice with your blindfold on. Maybe ask someone else to place the square down somewhere after you have put the blindfold and sat in your meditative posture. That way you won't know where exactly the cube is beforehand. However, don't practice for very long. Fujin understood all that Shin said and nodded. He then thanked Shin and left for his home. With the academy over, he now had seven additional hours he could use for training. The training at the facility, traveling to and fro and lunch, took slightly less than three hours. Fujin allotted all the remaining four hours for chakra sensing training temporarily. In the Hokage office, Haruzen looked at the custom-made seals on his desk. He sighed softly while thinking, Kanoha's edge in Fuenjutsu is fading fast. With the annihilation of the Uzumaki clan and the passing away of Mito-sama, our progress in Fuenjutsu had almost come to a standstill. Kushina and Minato had just started to make progress, but they died too young. Now it almost took two whole days to get such a simple seal custom made for Fujin. The request is still quite surprising though. Jenki did say that the kid was diligent, but asking for such seals at such a young age is incredibly rare. Only a few geniuses among the clans usually train with this. However, even they start at a later age in most cases. I do recall him glancing at Jenki first before asking for the prize. I guess Jenki was the one who suggested the idea to him. I guess I should have a nice chat with him when he visits me in a few hours. At 6 p.m., Fujin reached the Hokage office and entered after knocking. He greeted respectfully while bowing his head slightly, Good evening, Lord Hokage. Hiruzen was impressed by it, he thought, well at least his manners are very good. He said, Look up. Here are the seals you requested. This seal is a special seal designed by our village, it combines the features of a few basic seals in order to create a perfect tool to help train the bodies of our shinobi. You can manipulate the amount of pressure the seal puts on your body freely. The pressure is applied on the whole body. Fujin nodded and said, Thank you, Lord Hokage. He then looked at the seal placed in front of him. The seal was engraved on a square-shaped paper. He thought, There is just one seal. I thought that there would be four or more seals to be applied on various parts of the body like four limbs and so on. I guess this seal is much more advanced. Sigh, I can't analyze this seal then. Still, it's better that I have to place this seal on myself and no one else has to make the seal on my body. This way the chances of someone creating issues will probably be lower. That said, I'm not supposed to know much about Fuinjutsu. He then looked up at Hokage and asked, Lord Hokage, how do I use this seal? Hiruzen replied, just place the seal on your chest. It should stick to your body. The seal is resumable, so you can remove it and put it again if you ever wanted to. But don't ever give this seal to anyone else. Fujin replied, Yes, Lord Hokage. But how do I increase or decrease the pressure caused by the seal? Also how much pressure can be applied by the seal? Hiruzen chuckled at the curiosity of the youngster in front of him. He replied, Just focus your chakra on the seal. 
It's similar to how you focus the chakra on the leaf during the leaf concentration exercise. Then you can decide whether to increase or decrease the pressure and it'll be done automatically. As for the maximum pressure, it can apply a lot. It is equivalent to wearing a body vest of 100 kilograms, 50 kilograms weights on each leg and 25 kilograms weights on each arm. Fujin was shocked by those numbers. He looked at Haruzen in disbelief and nearly cursed out, bastard, shouldn't you say that first? However, he maintained control of his emotions. In order to keep up his act, he gulped and showed a bit of fear on his face. Haruzen looked at Fujin's expression and smirked internally, thinking, well, this will ensure that he always uses that seal very carefully and doesn't harm himself with it. After that, Haruzen talked a bit with Fujin. He tried to understand what caused Fujin to require these seals. He also asked about his daily life, whether his apartment is comfortable, whether he ate properly, and so on. He also made Fujin try to control the pressure in his presence. He also explained some tips and precautions. For instance, he said that while sleeping, Fujin should always deactivate the seal. He also cautioned Fujin against using the seal while sparring or fighting saying, if you get used to it, then you will find it hard to properly control your movements when you deactivate the seal. In the end, he praised Fujin's performance in the exams and let him go. After leaving, Fujin thought, 250 kilograms, huh? I really want to know if anyone actually uses it all. I do wonder how much weight Lee carried. The number was never mentioned in the series. While leaving the Hokage office, Fujin had already activated the seal. In front of Haruzen, he kept the pressure very low. However, after leaving the Hokage building, he increased the pressure. He increased it to a level where it put a decent amount of strain on his body, while still being able to bear it. He ran all the way to his home and thought, finally, even this simple run was a challenge. Though I will probably have to reduce the pressure a bit in order to be able to be able to complete the workout routine Janky provided. I suppose I'll have to test for a few days in order to get the pressure right. I can track my progress too, as I will know the percentage of max pressure applied by the seal. He also thought about what all Haruzen told him and focused on two points, he specified to not use the seal while sleeping and fighting. I suppose not following the first one ain't an option. As for second, I can understand his point of view and concerns. If I do it, then trying to fight without that pressure will cause plenty of issues. Of course, they can be fixed with some work, however, if in the middle of a fight, it'll be deadly. However, Kagaya did have a high gravity dimension. So I should try to learn to fight under high pressure too. But there's no need to do it now. Maybe later on I could build a gravity chamber and practice there. That might be more effective. Still, I gotta admit that this seal is very good. It applies pressure throughout my body. The pressure on my legs is more than on my arms. Even my back feels the strain. I guess the seal is made in a way that every muscle is properly exercised. Which would result in the proper development of the whole body. There won't be any cases of some muscles being developed more and others being underdeveloped. I guess Haruzen left out the specifics, not expecting me to understand them. This method is much superior to the weights Lee used. I guess I really need to be thankful to Janky. Though, this does make me wonder why these guys haven't given the seal to every Kanoha shinobi. Is it that hard to produce? Ending his train of thoughts, Fujin started to meditate. Chapter 16, Second Year Over the next few days, Fujin experimented with the pressure applied by the seal. He turned seven years old as well. It took him four days to be able to figure out the amount of pressure he could be under and still complete his workout. It was slightly over 2% of the seal's max capacity. He thought, wow, that's very low. Then again, I'm barely seven years old now. Anyways, at least my physique should develop faster now. His sensor training continued as well. It took him eight days to finally be able to sense the objects placed around him. Yamanaka Shin was a bit disappointed by the progress, he sighed and thought, eight days, while it ain't bad, it's not very good either. He probably won't be able to be an exceptional sensor. 
though with some work, he could be a decent one. While time is slightly better than the average of other Kanoa sensors, it lacks when compared to sensors from my clan. On average, we are able to sense the object on the seventh day, and the more talented ones do it even faster. Oh well, Kanoa does severely lack sensors. Due to the existence of the Hyuga, Aburame, and Inazuka clans, the village didn't really invest much in training sensors. The majority of Kanoa's sensors come from my clan. Having another sensor, even just an average one, will be good for the village. After that, Shin moved the objects away from Fujin and placed them four to five meters away. As the basics were the same and the objects were still in his chakra field, he was able to sense them very quickly in less than half an hour. Shin was surprised by the speed. He moved the objects seven meters away, and the same thing repeated. This surprised Shin a lot. Well, this is surprising. Though on average a Yamanaka senses the objects on the seventh day, sensing after moving it away takes some time, with most going into the eighth day and a few even to the ninth day. I guess he has more talent than I thought. Fujin's thoughts were, while it did take a long time to detect it, to detect after the increasing range wasn't tough. The principles were the same and the object was still in my chakra field. I guess the next training would be to increase the size of my chakra field. He sighed slightly thinking, I hope the training for it isn't as boring as this one. After the training was done, Shin said to Fujin, Not bad, you have progressed faster than I thought. Over the next four days, keep practicing the same at your home, so that you get more comfortable with sensing chakras in your field. I'll be out on a mission, so I won't meet you. Once I return, we will start training to increase the radius of your chakra field. Fujin thanked him and left. The next couple of months went in a similar manner. The training for increasing the chakra field included even longer hours of meditation. He had to focus on one point and try to increase the range in that direction. Fujin thought, this is going to take a long time. I guess over the vacation, I should work on being able to train while also keeping my eyes open instead of putting up a blindfold. That way I can train for this in the class too. Otherwise, there will be no hope of continuing this training after the academy restarts. Over the vacation, he kept up his physical workouts, which produced great results thanks to the seal. He also trained a lot in the substitution jutsu. His goal was to reduce the time required to perform it and also reduce the number of required hand signs from 5 to 0. While he didn't make any progress on reducing the number of hand signs, he was able to perform it much faster, being able to do it in less than a second, though he wasn't sure of the exact time due to having no instruments to measure it. For clone jutsu, he was able to create three clones, which if he recalled correctly, was the requirement for the Jinning graduation exam. Transformation jutsu was progressing well too as no one was able to see any issue with him when he was roaming the streets while being transformed into others. But he hadn't yet tested it against someone who knew him. As for chakra control, he became capable of running freely on water surfaces. So he reduced the time allotted to it and only practiced it twice a week instead of daily. While he had some ideas to improve his chakra control even further, he decided to try them later so as to be able to focus more on ninjutsu. The wind nature transformation training had taken a step back as Fujin felt that he had trained enough for it. He thought being able to cut a stone was probably on par with being able to cut a waterfall. Even on the metal, I'm able to leave small scratches on the surface. As for earth training, he had bought more clay to work on molding it and had also brought a small one-foot rock into his home, which he attempted to crumble after being bored of sensor training. As for sensor training, after teaching Fujin how to increase the radius of his chakra field, the meetings with Shin were reduced to only twice a week. When the vacation ended, Fujin was able to instantly sense chakra if anyone stepped in his chakra field, unless that person had hidden his chakra. However, he had to actively focus to do that. If he didn't focus, then he wasn't able to sense anyone. However, he noticed that he was able to passively sense chakra in a 0.6 meter radius around himself. Shin said that this was something every sensor developed over time. And was very important as this didn't require attention and the sensor could do other tasks simultaneously. 
his radius of the chakra field increased to over four times its initial size to slightly over 30 meters. Shin was quite impressed with the pace of his improvement. Shin also taught Fujin to be able to measure the amount of chakra in the ninjas in his chakra field. He explained its uses in identifying the threat level. But he also explained to not be entirely reliant on it as the amount of chakra can be hidden as well. He demonstrated to Fujin how he could reduce his chakra that others can sense, or even completely hide it to appear as a common civilian. Shin taught the same to Fujin too. Fujin had some success in hiding his chakra completely, though it wasn't perfect yet. However, trying to reduce it and putting up a facade of having a lower chakra level was very difficult as his chakra would fluctuate a lot. On the other hand, Fujin was able to sense chakra without restricting any of his senses or without having to use the hand sign or even while moving around. However, without the hand sign, the radius of the chakra field used to reduce to around 25 meters, and while moving around, it went down to merely 17 meters. It showed that he still had a lot of work to do. On the last day of vacation, Shin said, you have improved a lot. In the future, you can easily become a good sensor with some more training. So keep working on it. We won't have any more training sessions, but feel free to approach me if you have anything to clarify. Fujin thanked him for all his help over the past two months and took his leave. He also returned the chakra objects that he had borrowed. Fujin was really grateful to him. Though Fujin's capabilities as a sensor were still very poor, in the past two months, Shin had drilled all the basics of being a sensor into him. Now he merely needed to put more efforts into becoming a good sensor. The new year in the academy finally started. Jenki was again our class teacher. Fujin guessed that he'll be the class teacher until they became a jinin. The new year started with another brainwashing lecture. Fujin, not wanting to waste any time, employed the art he had mastered in his previous life and remastered in this one the art of faking attention in a lecture. He moved his attention to his chakra field. His plan was to focus on increasing the radius of his chakra field. But upon sensing others, he decided to compare everyone's chakra levels first. After noticing everyone's chakra levels, he concluded, Wow, my chakra reserves are really very good. The efforts taken over the previous year and a half have really been very fruitful. It's good to finally be able to see the results of my efforts. As for others, Fujin noted that on average the chakra levels of the civilian students and students from Nara, Yamanaka, Kato, Hataki, Saratobi, and Kurama clans are lower than others. Comparatively, students from Hyuga, Akimichi, Inazuka, Aburaim, and Uchiha clans have slightly more chakra. In all, Uchiha Yuri's chakra is the sixth highest in the class, while Hyuga Hoka ranked seventh. While that was what he expected, the one with the fifth highest chakra surprised him. He thought, now that's surprising. The fifth highest chakra level is Shimura Nobu. I guess Danzo really has a proper training system for kids from his clan. As for the ones at the top, there was no surprise. He thought, Sai, these Sinjas are really blessed with high chakra reserves. Even the two who aren't that talented have chakra reserves almost 50% greater than that of Yuri. Whereas Terra's chakra reserves are more than twice that of Yuri. It's even larger than mine. Anyways, the chakra levels of everyone are just as expected. Only Nobu was an exception. This implies that they haven't started to do any training to increase their reserves. Makes sense though, as they are only seven years old. Anyways, if he doesn't focus on increasing his chakra level, I should be able to increase my chakra reserves to become larger than Teru's. He then tried to measure the chakra level of Jenki. On measuring it, he thought, I see, his and Shin's chakra reserves are very similar to each other. I guess there isn't much difference between an elite Chunin and a special Jounin. It's just that a special Jounin has a skill that is at Jounin level, while the rest of his skills are only at elite Chunin level. For Shin, it is his capabilities as a sensor. I gotta agree that becoming a sensor is very convenient. Unless the ones being sensed are sensors too, there's little chance of anyone realizing that they are being sensed. 
though I suppose all of the Katya level ninjas would have mastered this to a certain extent. Oh well, it's not like I'm planning to hunt any Kages. Anyways, enough with this class. I should check the ones from other classes, especially the ones who will be becoming Jin in this year. While the 25 meter radius of my chakra field is pretty insignificant in an open field, in a compact building, it covers a lot. With those thoughts, he started to focus on chakras outside his classroom. He first observed the classroom in which he had seen Daisuke run into. Noticing the chakra levels of the students there, he observed that they were really low. He then focused on the room where he knew the classes for senior most batches happen. He measured their chakras. He observed that there were a few with really pitiful chakra levels. He guessed that most of them won't become Jinin. On average, however, their chakra level was only 20% higher than Teru's. Though there were a few having much higher chakra levels. Fujin guessed that those kids were from the Senju clan too. Fujin concluded, I see. I suppose by the end of this academic year, my chakra reserves should become high enough and could be considered Jinin level. And I know all the three basic jutsus too. So in terms of chakra and ninjutsu, I should reach Jinin level in a year. Even taijutsu should reach that stage in less than two years. But that won't be enough to actually pass the graduation exam. The graduation exam has so much more than just taijutsu and ninjutsu. There's training on moving stealthily, setting up an encampment, incapacitating a target, freeing yourself if you are captured, using a first aid kit, even hunting, cleaning, and cooking a wild animal, and a lot more that will be taught in the academy. Without all that knowledge and training, becoming a ninja might well be suicide. Not to mention, actually trying to graduate so early would be stupid. Itachi was a different case. He is the son of the Uchiha Patriarch. I, on the other hand, am merely an orphan. It would attract a lot of unwanted attention. In addition, just from the point of view of ninjutsu, I still have so much more to learn. I still have to learn a few more basic jutsus like body flicker, and not to mention I still have to learn wind and earth style jutsus. Apart from that, I'm almost entirely blank when it comes to jinjutsu and have a lot to learn in kinjutsu. So there's no point in graduating until I have gained everything I could from the academy. If I ever reach a point where I can't make much progress due to being in the academy, then I'll consider graduating early. After considering all that, Fujin finally focused on increasing the radius of his chakra field. The remaining lecture went in a similar boring manner. However, at the end of the lecture, Jinki said something that excited some of his fellow students. He said, This year, we will start learning ninjutsu. Chapter 17 Body Flicker Fujin wasn't surprised by that news. He had already gathered enough information about the academy in the previous year. For normal students, the ninjutsu training began in their third year. However, for the elite batches, it began in their second year. Having already learned the three basic jutsus, he wasn't much interested in the news. Though he did have a concern, he thought, I'll have to hide the fact that I can use these jutsus. I'll need to learn how to fail at these jutsus. And have to do it in a manner that doesn't give me any bad habits. I suppose I could just make hand signs without molding my chakra, or maybe mold chakra for a few of the hand signs without molding it for one. I'll have to test that first. When around 7 to 8 are able to perform the jutsu, I'll show that I have just managed to do them too. In the first week, Jenki just revised what they had learned in the previous year and tested all the students. However, seeing the progress of some of the students left Fujin speechless. Jenki too was surprised, but it was a joyous surprise for him. In the leaf concentration exercise, Hana, Teru, and Nobu all were able to hold the leaf for more than half an hour, while Yori and Hoka exceeded 25 minutes. Fujin dropped his leaf after 36 minutes in order to not attract any suspicion. His thoughts were, damn. If they keep up this competitive nature, they may well reach beyond one hour by the end of this year. While it's reasonable to expect me to keep up, I should instead show that I've slacked off and not made much progress. While Jenki might get a bit suspicious, if he ever asks me, I'll just say I felt bad for them and am letting them win. 
Janky was very impressed too. He thought, for kids were able to stick the leaf for over half an hour, another two should be able to reach that in another couple of months. This batch is good. I guess that Fujin brat spurred them all. They might actually be able to do tree climbing and even water walking before they graduate. Oh, this is so nice, I could get a huge bonus from the Okage. The shuriken competition didn't give much insights into their growth, as many were already doing very well in the previous year. The Taijutsu tournament, however, didn't show that much improvement for everyone. Among the ones at the top, only Yori and Nobu made significant progress. Fujin guessed that it was only because of his performance in the leaf concentration exam that made everyone focus a lot on it. However, the Inazukas were performing much better than last year and were very aggressive too. Due to the poor scores of all three Inazukas in the exams, they were given some special training by their clan in order to not embarrass the clan any further. In one of the spars, one Inazuka kid screamed, I'll defeat you no matter what. There's no way I will go through that training in my clan ever again. Hearing that, the other two Inazuka students winced. Fujin, getting a hint of what would have happened thought, this world is in a severe need of laws punishing child abuse. Sadly for that Inazuka student, he still got mercilessly beaten into the ground by Nobu, which made everyone feel pity for the poor kid. The Taijutsu tournament, however, did provide Fujin with the opportunity to finally test his progress. And he was very pleased with the results. After deactivating the seals, his body moved a lot faster. And his blows carried more weight. He tied against Teru in their match. After the first week was done, Fujin entered the library and went into Section D. He thought, I've probably tried the substitution jutsu over a thousand times. I'm still not able to reduce the hand signs needed for it. Honestly, jutsu is almost completely useless against ninjas if you have to make those hand signs. Even a random jinin would be able to identify the jutsu and be on alert. Though I guess it might still work on normal bandits. Anyways, I guess I'll need a few years to be able to reduce the number of hand signs needed. So let's just move on to a new jutsu. He quickly started searching for the jutsu he wanted to learn. He was quite excited to learn it as it was one of his favorites. On finding it, he read out softly, the body flicker jutsu he found a place to sit, and read the scroll. After reading and analyzing it, he concluded, hmm, this jutsu can be called both easy and complicated at the same time. It's easy as there is only one hand sign required. The tiger seal. So the way of molding chakra is very simple. And it's complicated as actually performing this technique is quite difficult. I would have to focus a lot of chakra in my legs to be able to move at such high speeds. According to the scroll, initially, I'll only be able to flicker a few meters away. Only when I'm able to flicker a 100 meters away would I be considered to have learned this jutsu. It is also mentioned to use something like smoke or leaves just before using this jutsu so that the enemy doesn't understand the direction in which you flicker to. Also, it is very important to ensure not to run into someone or something while using this jutsu. I suppose my being a sensor might help a bit in this regard. However, there's no such thing as the maximum distance one can flicker away. Instead, it is the amount of time you can sustain this jutsu. I thought that I'll need to learn to be able to flicker many times consecutively if I want the help of this jutsu to be able to escape. However, instead it is the amount of time you can maintain this jutsu. So if I'm able to flicker 100 meter away in a second and am able to sustain this jutsu for 10 seconds, I'll be able to run a kilometer away. But this is good I suppose. It's more convenient than having to flicker again and again. After learning the whole process from the scroll, Fujin left the library. He transformed into a random 13-year-old stranger in an empty alleyway. And then ran into a nearby mini-forest. He then ran around in that mini-forest while trying to sense if any chakra is present around him. After that he thought, all right, this forest is clear. Also I'm under a disguise. So I can start training. While the forest isn't the best place to train body flicker, but, since the amount of distance I can flicker initially will be low, there shouldn't be an issue. Though I'll need to train in open spaces once I start to flicker long distances away. 
and he started training for this jutsu. The months went on in a peaceful manner for Fujin. The physique kept improving due to the seal. He used to increase the pressure of the seal by 0.1% from time to time. In the academy, Genki started ninjutsu with the transformation technique. Fujin had experimented and found it easy to fake hand signs without molding his chakra. However, he felt that it was wasteful. So he tried another trick. He started faking the first hand sign, but while changing the hand sign to the second seal, he used to try to mold the chakra for the first seal without the aid of the first hand sign. In this manner, he practiced doing those jutsus with one hand sign less. As expected, Teru and Yori were the most talented in ninjutsu. They competed for the top two spots. Nobu, no matter how hard he tried, only ranked third, Hoka, Hana, and the Aburame kid competed for ranks four to six. Fujin ranked himself tenth in transformation jutsu, seventh in clone jutsu, and eighth in substitution jutsu. It took him a month to be able to do the body flicker jutsu despite learning the way to mold chakra within just three days. Even then, he was only able to flicker for a few meters. Over the next month, instead of trying to increase the range, he instead worked on increasing the speed of performing the jutsu, and also managed to pull it off without using any hand signs. In a single month, he probably practiced that jutsu thousands of times to be able to do that. Next, he worked on increasing the range of the jutsu. It took him four and a half months in all to reach 100 meter with body flicker. He then started focusing on sustaining the body flicker for a longer period. Sometime around this time, the incident of Kumo trying to kidnap Hinata and the death of Hizashi happened. Both Hoka and Hana were very solemn the next day. In order to properly measure his progress, he bought a stopwatch. After six months, he was able to 400 meters away in less than four seconds. After that, he thought, my original plan was to start with elemental jutsu by now, but body flicker does have more applications I want to explore. Sigh. Let's stick to it. Mastering body flicker to a high degree will be extremely essential later on. He continued with his body flicker training. By the time the exams for second year were up, Fujin had managed to sustain his body flicker for 12.76 seconds and managed to cover 1.9 kilometers. He could also change the direction midway, though he couldn't do it very frequently, and could also perform flicker while in a forest and having to avoid running into a tree. He was extremely pleased with his progress. Over at the academy, he had managed to reduce the hand signs required for transformation and clone jutsus by one and for substitution jutsu, he was close to reducing it by two. His chakra field had increased a lot during this year. Its radius had increased to 180 meters. Without the hand sign it reached 162 meters and while running at normal speed, it could reach 135 meters. His chakra reserves too had grown exponentially. Physical training and meditation itself were a huge boost. On top of it, he had practiced body flicker till he dropped on a daily basis. He had performed body flicker for tens of thousands of times over the past nine months. His reserves now exceeded Teru's. On comparing it with the senior most batch, he noticed that his reserves would be well above average in that class, probably entering the top ten. Only two students, probably from the Senju, can exceed him considerably. Even then, he was sure that in another year, he would surpass their current chakra level. He thought, I guess it's time to ask Haruzen for the Shadow Clone Jutsu. A slash in, I would like to clarify the Shadow Clone Jutsu a bit. Shadow Clone Jutsu isn't a forbidden jutsu, it's merely a B-ranked jutsu that Jounins can learn easily. In Naruto, it was shown that a Jin in Konoamaru was able to perform shadow clones and use Rasengan on one of the pains. Even Kiba, while being a Chunin, was able to perform a shadow clone. The jutsu in the Forbidden Scroll of Sealing was the multi-shadow clone jutsu. This is the one that Naruto spams and Kakashi had used to scare slash bluff away Gato's thugs. So I'll follow this pattern, someone with Jin in level chakra can create one to two shadow clones, with Chunin level chakra can create 3 to 5 shadow clones and with a Jounin level chakra can create more than 5 shadow clones. The increase in his chakra level could be seen when he was finally able to burst the rubber ball 
finally making progress in stage 2 or Raisingian training. However, he was only barely able to burst it. He still needed more chakra to be able to actually perform Raisingian. His skill at throwing shurikens had increased too. He was now able to hit the board while running around and was also able to hit a moving board. In order to allow students to practice that, a board used to be suspended from a tree branch and moved. It worked like a pendulum. However, he still struggled to hit a moving board while he was running himself. Fujin decided that after he managed to do that, he'll start practicing hitting his clones with shuriken as that would replicate battle scenarios even better. Something that Fujin gained while practicing in the many many forests in Kanoa was shurikens and kanais lying around. He had found 23 shuriken and 11 kanai. However, 7 shurikens and 4 kanai were very badly damaged, leaving him with 16 shurikens and 7 kanai. He handled them with extreme care, not touching any directly, in case they were coated with poison. He thought, well this is convenient. Though these are used weapons, they are still very usable. However, I need to wash them properly in order to remove any sense of previous users and in case there's any poison applied to them. Still, I've been in these forests for so long and only found so few of these. I guess everyone collects them back after using them as they aren't cheap. Maybe others like me roam around trying to find them too. He sighed, whatever, these many should be enough for me to practice. And soon, it was time for the second year exams. Chapter 18, Second Year Exam As Fujin had expected, the whole marking system for their class had been revamped. He wondered if the same also happened for other elite batches. As for the overall exams, the written exam had 100 points, Leaf Concentration Competition had 20 points, Shuriken Throwing Competition had 20 points, each of the three ninjutsu had 10 points each, and the Taijutsu Tournament had 30 points. In the written exam, he noticed that it had five divisions among itself, each being more difficult than the previous. While it wasn't much hard for him, he had no doubt that eight-year-olds from his previous world won't even pass this exam. Seeing how hard the exam was, he purposefully made a mistake in two questions worth two marks each. For leaf concentration, the same marking system as the previous year followed. Yori, Hoka, crossed 45 minutes, Nobu dropped at 56th minute, Teru at 59th minute. Hana crossed one hour and held it for another four minutes. Fujin, knowing that the written exam this year was tougher and not expecting anyone to score full, dropped his leave after one hour 11 minutes. The shuriken exam also had multiple layers like the written exam. The first was to throw eight shurikens at a stationary target board. The second was to run alternately to the right and left to a circle drawn on the ground and throw from the circle while running. The third was to hit at the target board that was hanging and swinging like a pendulum. Each of these stages were worth four points each. The last stage, worth eight points, had white plates being launched in the air by Jenki. The plates were spinning incredibly fast caching them to not move at a set path and deviating slightly. Yori, Teru, Fujin, Nobu, Hoka scored max in the first three rounds. Hannah struggled in the second round, while scoring full in first and third. The fourth round, however, was tough. Nineteen students didn't manage to hit even one. And six, including Hannah, managed to hit just one. Fujin guessed that most of them just scored a lucky hit. Fujin had been observing the plates all the time to try and see a pattern in them. He got some hints, but not enough and it resulted in him wishing, damn, if only I had a Sharingan. Hoka and Fujin just hit two. Nobu hit three plates, Terra managed to hit four and Yori managed to hit seven of the eight plates thrown by Jenki. Fujin was quite impressed by Yori's performance, especially considering that he hadn't yet awakened his Sharingans. After the competition, Yori returned to his smug self. In ninjutsu exams, Transformation and Substitution Jutsu were analyzed and marked by Jenki. For clone Jutsu, they were marked depending upon the maximum number of acceptable clones anyone made. Teru made five clones and looking at his chakra, Fujin was confident no one else would exceed him. So he created four clones. 
Fujin hid his skills in this exam as he knew that Hannah wasn't very good in this aspect and no one apart from her would come close to his score in written exams. The Taijutsu tournament was similar to the previous year. Only major differences being the Inazukas performing much better and Fujin having a much stronger body. Right now he could have the seal apply 5.3% of its max pressure. It had improved his physique a lot. He trashed through the majority of his opponents. This time, he ran into Teru in the semifinals and managed to beat him. While Hoka beat Hana in his fight. Yori beat Nobu for rank 5, whereas Teru beat Hana for rank 3. Against Hoka, the fight was very intense. To Fujin's surprise, his advantage in physique wasn't that great. In the end, he still lost to Hoka. He thought, is he too using seals or something similar to strengthen his body? His performance in ninjutsu isn't as good as his taijutsu, and it's better to not talk of his performance in written exams looking at previous year's scores. Sai, I guess all he does is train in taijutsu and my main focus has been on ninjutsu. Little wonder that I can't beat him. After the scores were tallied, the results of the top five were Fujin, 96 plus 20 plus 14 plus 23 plus 29 is equal to 182. Teru, 81 plus 17 plus 16 plus 30 plus 28 is equal to 172. Nobu, 86 plus 16 plus 15 plus 28 plus 25 is equal to 170. Hannah, 91 plus 18 plus 12 plus 21 plus 27 is equal to 169. Yuri, 79 plus 14 plus 19 plus 28 plus 26 is equal to 166. After looking at the results, Jenki thought, hmm, this is pretty similar to last year. Only difference is that instead of the leaf concentration competition, Fujin built his lead in the written exam. How much does this kid study exactly? The last 20 marks were quite tough to get. As for the rest, Teru was the one who performed the best overall. Except for the written exam, he is in the top three of every exam. Leaf concentration competition is still dominated by Fujin. But with the performance of the others, I can start tree walking exercise next year. In the shuriken throwing competition, Yori was in a league of his own. Same with Hoka in the taijutsu tournament. Though that seal did help Fujin a lot. I guess I should suggest to Terra's parents to get that seal for him as well. It will help him a lot. In ninjutsu, Teru, Yori and Nobu are all excellent. Just that Teru has more chakra than the other two and I'm pretty sure that they do no more jutsus as well. This class has performed really well. The top 8 to 12 students are all very good. Lord Third should be very happy with their performance. After he was done thinking, he put up the results on display. Looking at it, everyone had mixed reactions. Since the exam markings were made to ensure that the ones who perform well stand out, the ones who didn't work hard scored very low. A few still struggled to hit a stationary target board with shuriken, so there was no way they could do much in the remaining three rounds. There were a few who didn't manage to learn even one ninjutsu properly. And the majority didn't get all the three ninjutsu down. There were only 12 students who could do that. The written exams were very tough too. The last 20 marks being very difficult to get and even the 20 marks before that being significantly difficult. Fujin did note the disappointed expressions of the ones who scored very bad. It reminded him of how much worse the life of the kids here was when compared to his previous world. And even then these were considered to be very good conditions. At least they didn't have to fight in a war. Among the toppers, Yori was upset thinking, why am I still ranked only fifth? Still I have at least shown everyone how good the Uchiha are at shuriken technique. But that's not enough. Hannah was incredibly upset with tears almost forming in her eyes. She was upset at her rank dropping from second to fourth. Nobu didn't show any emotions, however, even he was upset at not being able to top the exam. Terra sighed looking at the scores, last year it was the leaf concentration competition, and this time the written exam. Sucks to not be rank 1 due to the written exams. Still at least I'm the best when it comes to the skills required on the field. 
not to mention that the exam didn't consider the water-style jutsus I know. Fujin looked at the results showing a happy expression. His thoughts were, well, this went as expected. Though I'm surprised that some guys scored over 80 on the written exam. I guess the brains of the kids here develop faster. My shuriken still requires some work, but that's fine. In taijutsu, I doubt I'll be able to surpass Hoka unless he slacks off. In ninjutsu, I'm on par with Teru and others. Heck, I could have made eight clones and decreased their scores if I wanted to, but there was no need for it. So it's going good. Next, I should focus on elemental jutsus. However, then he frowned mentally thinking, still, the performance of the kids in this exam has been so good that I'm worried they may make a few of us graduate early. I'm glad that Jenki hasn't started teaching about all the other important stuff yet. I guess his plan was to allow everyone to learn ninjutsu and fighting skills first so that they can keep improving it over the years. Though with the pace at which he has been going, it makes me wonder if he wants to make us graduate early or teach us more complicated stuff. Jenki looked at the expression of all his students and sighed. He noticed that only Fujin had a happy expression, Nobu was expressionless as always and Terra just looked a bit down. Almost everyone else was incredibly upset. He sighed, I got excited and made the marking system really in favor of the geniuses. Last year's results made them more competitive, however this year's might have a detrimental effect. I'll need to talk individually with everyone in order to pacify and cheer them up, so that they take this exam results as a motivation to do better in future. He then glanced at the Inazuka kids, I guess I should call their parents too. The exams ended with another brainwashing speech by Haruzen. He called Fujin forward and asked him what reward he wanted this time. Fujin stepped forward and said, Lord Hokage, could I get to learn the Shadow Clone Jutsu? Hiruzen was really surprised by this request. He asked, Where did you hear about the Shadow Clone Jutsu? And why do you want to learn it? Fujin showed an excited expression and said, Lord Hokage, we were told that the second Hokage had started this academy. So I became quite interested in him and hence read a lot about his life and everything he did. On understanding more about him, I was very inspired by him. And when I read that he had created the Shadow Clone Jutsu, I became very interested in it. Also, the Jutsu seems very useful. Having a clone that can actually do something will be very helpful. He then looked at Hiruzen with expectations. Hiruzen looked at the excitement shown by the young student in front of him. Looking at the respect he had shown to his sensei, he emotionally thought, Sensei, even after being dead for decades, your will of fire still inspires the kids in Kanoha. Hiruzen had sensed his chakra level during the Taijutsu tournament. Fujin, wanting to ask for the Shadow Clone Jutsu, didn't bother hiding his real chakra level. Hiruzen thought his chakra level is sufficient to be barely able to form one Shadow Clone. Fine, I'll give it to him, but I need to warn him about the dangers of that technique. Hiruzen nodded and said, all right, I'll prepare the scroll for you. Come to my office tomorrow at noon. Fujin showed that he was even more excited on hearing that and thanked him immediately. However, on the inside, he was quite shocked. He thought, that's it? A few good words about Tobarama and he agreed? Should I have asked for Flying Thunder God or Impure World Resurrection? He sighed internally and further thought, then again, Shadow Clone isn't really a very complex jutsu. It is just be rank and even elite shunins can easily access it from the library. Also, my respect for Tobarama was genuine. Unlike Haruzen, he did do his job properly. Though how he died in war despite knowing Flying Thunder God is a mystery to me. So Haruzen wouldn't be able to pick up on anything. And Tobarama creating that jutsu is written down in scrolls about him in the library. So I guess there wasn't much to be suspicious about. With those thoughts, he walked back to his fellow students. Jenki then announced about meeting with everyone personally tomorrow and gave everyone a time slot. He asked them to bring at least one parent along. Chapter 19 Shadow Clone Jutsu The following day, Jenki was very busy with the counseling of all his students. Fujin was the first one in at 8 a.m. as Jenki had set the schedule according to their ranks. Seeing Fujin, Jenki's thoughts were, 
this kid has done well. But he is only an orphan. I don't think he has any idea how vast this world is. Even though he ranked first twice consecutively, there is still a lot he needs to do. I need to ensure that he doesn't get arrogant and lose his way. Fujin first greeted him, Good morning, Sensei. Jenki replied, Good morning. Congrats on your performance yesterday. Fujin smiled and replied, Thank you, Sensei, and took his seat. Jenki smiled, and then quickly got serious. He said, So this meeting is in order to review your performance until now and to see what you should do in the vacation and in the next year. Of all the students from this class, I have interacted with you the most, so don't worry and listen to my advice properly. Feel free to ask all your doubts. Fujin nodded. Jenki continued, Your performance has been very good so far. With you ranking first in both years, that is very obvious. However, in both exams, it was only due to you scoring very well in one exam that you ranked first. Fujin nodded seriously, while thinking I'm not even eight years old yet. Should you be having such a serious talk with me? Are eight-year-olds supposed to understand this? Jenki on the other hand thought, the kid didn't get upset? He is more mature than other kids his age. Jenki continued, so you will have to put more focus on other areas. Tell me, what do you do after the lecture is over? Also, what do you do on weekends? Fujin had already guessed that such a question might be asked, though he had thought something like this would have been asked long back. He replied, Sensei, I mostly study what you taught in class, try to understand it. Then I train on the ninjutsu you taught us or I do leaf concentration exercise. And before sleeping, I meditate. On the weekends I study a lot and also train on my sensor skills. What Fujin said was a properly thought out answer he had prepared long back. Showing a major focus at studying would explain why his scores in written exams were so high. The listener would think that he spent most of his time studying. He said that he spent very little time on ninjutsu, which would justify his slightly lower scores there. While his meditation along with morning exercises would be the reason for the high growth in his chakra levels. The answer also showed that he was a very diligent student. Jenki wasn't surprised with the answer. He had guessed that it'll be something along these lines considering Fujin's performance. He said, I see. Now let's look at your performance this year. You have done very well in the written exam, chakra control, and taijutsu. However, your ninjutsu needs a lot of work. So over the next two months, you should focus on improving the three ninjutsu I taught. Also, even after the third year begins, spend more time on learning ninjutsu and less time on studying. After all, in the future, when you do missions, it'll be a lot more important than what you read. Fujin nodded, inwardly surprised, thinking that's a first. No adult has ever told me to study less. Especially not a teacher. Jenki was satisfied with his words being listened to seriously. He had a little gift in order to get Fujin work more on ninjutsu. He said, I know that you have asked Lord Hokage for shadow clone jutsu. So do learn it properly, in the future it'll be very helpful. However, I have a little gift for you. Saying this, he put a paper in front of Fujin. On seeing that paper, Fujin sighed internally, I wasted my 100 Ryo, and then asked curiously, Sensei, what's this? Jenki replied, this is chakra paper. It'll tell you what your chakra nature is. Here pass some of your chakra through it. Fujin did it. The chakra paper split into two. He gave Jenki a puzzled look. Jenki then explained a bit more about chakra paper and said that Fujin's chakra nature was wind. Fujin nodded excitedly despite already knowing it. Jenki said, the way to train your wind nature is that you should take a leaf and try to cut it with your chakra alone. It may take a few months to do it. Once it is done, you can then use wind style jutsus. Fujin nodded again. Jenki also informed Fujin that Yori and Teru could already perform elemental jutsu in order to rouse his competitive spirit. After some more discussion, Fujin took his leave. He was a bit sick of having to feign ignorance of the stuff he already knew. Still he was a bit glad of this discussion. 
he would have a proper excuse if anyone in the future asked him about when he trained in wind style. Sadly, he'll still have to repeat this again today. Jenky spent the remaining of his day counseling 14 other students, while the other 15 were scheduled for tomorrow. He had such advice for everyone else. Teru was advised to get the same seal as Fujin. He didn't have much advice for Nobu, so he just tried to get him to be more social. For Hannah, he consoled her a bit due to how upset she was. Then he informed her that she put a lot more focus on her rank instead of important aspects. He told her to reduce her time spent on studying and leave concentration as the majority of her time was spent on it. Instead, he asked her to focus more on ninjutsu and taijutsu. For Yori, he strongly suggested his parents to ensure that he meditates for at least an hour daily. For Hoka, the advice was to focus more on academics. And in a similar way, the advice continued all day as well as the day after. At noon, Fujin visited Hokage's office. Hiruzen handed him a scroll saying, This scroll has the shadow clone jutsu. You are not allowed to share this scroll with anyone else and have to return it to me after you have learned it. Fujin nodded. Hiruzen then talked a bit about the shadow clone jutsu. He warned Fujin, for the time being and maybe for the next year, don't ever try to create more than one shadow clone. Also, when you dispel the clone, all its memories will be transferred to you. And that might cause you a huge headache. So always be careful while dispelling your clones. Also, don't shadow clones while you are sleeping. It'll be very bad for your health. Fujin nodded and thanked him again. Hiruzen then talked a bit about Tobarama and Fujin had to feign interest in listening to it. After half an hour of stories, Hiruzen finally let Fujin go. Fujin sighed and complained, isn't a Hokage supposed to be super busy in his paperwork? Why did he have so much time to talk with me? Two consecutive sessions of having to feign ignorance as well as interest had Fujin a bit tired. He decided to skip his ration bars and instead went to Ichiraku for lunch. His thoughts were, fuck it, I have saved decent amount of money, I can afford to treat myself for today. Soon after lunch, he started training for the Shadow Clone Jutsu. After reading it properly, he thought, this is easily the most difficult jutsu I have seen yet. The process of molding chakra is very complicated. Makes me wonder how did that brat learn it in less than a day. However, this Shadow Clone is a bit more flexible than the one in Naruto. Chakra doesn't necessarily have to be distributed evenly among my clones. It is up to the caster's will and capabilities in deciding how much percent of his chakra must each clone have. He could create them with equal chakra to hide himself or give it more or less chakra depending on the need. Another difference is that dispelling the clone won't return all its chakra to the original body. Instead there is some chakra loss that happens during this process. As the jutsu is mastered, this loss reduces, however it won't ever go down to zero. So in the future, I need to be careful in the amount of clones I make. Otherwise, I could run out of chakra very quickly. On finishing his analysis, he began learning shadow clone technique. Knowing the basic clone jutsu helped a bit. The training continued for a while. Fuji noted that this training drained his chakra very fast. He could only practice for an hour before he was out of chakra. So from the next day, he practiced shadow clone jutsu, as soon as he got up, then around noon, and finally again in the evening, getting three hours of training done while doing either physical exercises or meditation for the remainder of the time. He also carried a few leaves with him. On the ninth day, he was finally able to make a clone. Fujin noted that while molding the chakra is more difficult, its execution was much easier than the body flicker jutsu. After another six days, he was finally able to create an acceptable clone. It was entirely identical and took half of his chakra. However, on sensing, Fujin noted that some chakra was lost while creating the clone, resulting in the clone having slightly less chakra. This wasn't acceptable. However, he decided to test the clone first. He asked the clone to go into the bedroom and write any random number somewhere and then dispel. The clone went into the bedroom and wrote 8196 on a scroll there. On dispelling, Fujin got all the information and checked if it was true. 
He thought, all right it works. He made another shadow clone. This time, he stabbed the clone's arm with a kunai, causing the clone to dispel. He waited for a few seconds and then concluded, all right, I just got the memories of the clone. The pain wasn't transferred to me. So this jutsu should be safe to use in battle. He then formed the clone again and this time had the clone do the three basic jutsus. The clone could perform them as good as he could. He couldn't test body flicker at his home, so he decided to leave it for later. He then had the clone perform shadow clone. The clone managed to do it, but within a second, they were both dispelled. Fujin sensed that their chakra was very unstable. On thinking, he came to the conclusion the clones were dispelled as they didn't have enough chakra. Even though a ninja could make a shadow clone with a small percent of his chakra, the shadow clone still needs to have some minimum chakra level. And my single clone probably barely exceeds that limit. Wait, does that mean, after using a few jutsus, my clone will disappear even if it has some chakra just because the chakra isn't enough? This conclusion had him on alert. He quickly rushed into a mini forest nearby. After transforming and confirming no one was around, he made a shadow clone. The clone, knowing the plan, started performing body flicker again and again within the main body's chakra field as the main body kept a track of its chakra level. The clone had around 49% of Fujin's chakra. When it fell down below 41%, the clone dispelled. Having his theory being confirmed right, Fujin sighed, I guess it is impossible to have the clone assist me in ninjutsu training. Though to be honest, it's kind of pointless too as I can't last long on ninjutsu training without having my chakra depleted. After spending half a minute grumbling about his low chakra reserves, he decided, well whatever. This was expected. Hopefully someday in the future, I'll be able to use clones to train. Let's just learn this jutsu properly and be done. In the next five days, he had learnt the shadow clone to an acceptable level. Now no loss of chakra happened while forming the clone. As for the chakra loss while getting chakra back from the clone, it was around 5%. Fujin noticed that it was reducing quickly. With the work on shadow clone done, he decided that it was time to finally start practicing elemental jutsus. Though he decided to wait for another 10 days before he returned the scroll to Haruzen. That way Haruzen would underestimate his talent a bit. Chapter 20, Wind Release On the 21st day of his vacation, Fujin made his way to the library. On the road, he thought about a lot of wind-style jutsu. His thoughts were, finally I'll be starting with wind release jutsu. In the series, wind was probably the least powerful element. Though Naruto had wind nature, all he used was Raisin Shuriken. Tamari did have a lot of jutsu, but she used a giant fan. Kakazi used pressure damage, which was very lethal. I think there was also great breakthrough used by Orochimaru and probably Gale Palm used by someone. And lastly, Danzo used his vacuum jutsu, which were very lethal. Sadly, other than Tamari, no one else specialized in wind jutsu and the number of wind jutsu were very low too. Luckily, this world does have a lot more wind release jutsu. I might be able to form a comprehensive battle system through it. Last time I just read their names. This time I'll be reading their scrolls too. And then decide the set of jutsu to practice. Still I wish I could have got to read the descriptions of higher ranked wind jutsu as well. It'd have been very helpful in order to decide. On reaching there, he went through entire sections E and D and made a list of all available wind release jutsu. They were Gale Jutsu, E. Wind Clone, E. Wind Levitation, E. Projectile Control Jutsu, E. Wind Retreating Jutsu, E. Gale Surge, D. Breakthrough, D. Dust Cloud, D. Slashing Wind Skill, D. Wind Explosion, D. Propelling winds, D. The first question for Fujin was, why was wind clone merely a ranky jutsu? On reading the scroll, he understood why. Wind clone was extremely simple. Elemental clones were like normal clones, just that they were made of elements. That's why they could perform attacks. 
they got dispelled upon getting hit. Since the material needed for a wind clone was basically the air around, it was extremely simple to make it. However, it was still quite useful, and something he definitely was going to learn. He continued reading the rest of the jutsu to understand what they did. He first read all the ranky jutsu. After reading them, he analyzed, these jutsu aren't lethal. Actually, they don't have much use in battle either if compared to other jutsu. Instead, I think that they are the means to improve the control of the wind element. I think they will be very important in the future when I will be learning more complex and powerful wind jutsu. Wind levitation is basically using winds in order to raise inanimate objects in air. The weight of the object that can be levitated and the height to which it can be carried as well as the time for which it can be levitated depends on the user's control over the wind element as well as their stamina and focus. Projectile Control Jutsu uses wind to control the projectiles launched around the user. So a shuriken or a thrown kunai or senban can be manipulated to change direction with the help of winds. Wind Retrieving Jutsu uses winds to pull objects towards the user. It's similar to Nagato's universal pull, except it's done with the help of winds and power depends entirely on the user. And Gale Jutsu just creates a small wind flow in a direction. It doesn't cause any harm, but has a couple of good uses. For example, it could be used to cover up any footsteps left behind, or change the direction of winds around you to restrict the directions your scent can be carried to. Besides, it probably also serves as a base to all wind jutsu that involves blowing out air. On concluding his analysis, he sighed thinking, I'll have to learn all these jutsu. Not for combat, but to improve my control over wind. That said, wind clone, levitation, control and pulling, these are excellent jutsu for pranking. I wonder if the ones who made these were pranksters or something. While thinking about it, an incredibly evil idea popped into Fujin's head. An idea that would have made the lives of Kanoha citizens a living nightmare. He thought, I wonder what kind of shit Naruto would pull if he knew these five jutsu. He sucked as a student, maybe as a ninja too, but he was easily tier S in terms of pranks. Damn, I'm so tempted in teaching him this stuff. I'd get enough content to laugh for a lifetime. Fujin had a laugh at that idea. Calming himself down and getting these distracted thoughts out of his mind, he started reading the rank D scrolls. After finishing them all he concluded with a single thought, damn, wind release is extremely powerful. That thought wasn't due to the jutsu being overpowered, but instead due to the growth potential of the wind jutsu. Some of those jutsu, if mastered, and used correctly, could end up becoming as good as rank B or even rank a jutsu. He then analyzed each jutsu, dust cloud jutsu is basically just a smoke screen. It should work well with me being a sensor and not needing eyesight to track the enemy. Also it is very simple, so if I have time, it's worth learning. Slashing wind jutsu is the one Tamari spammed in the Chunin exam. While it packs good power, it requires a fan to use. It's not really my preferred weapon. So I'll probably skip this one. Breakthrough Jutsu is a powered-down version of Great Breakthrough Jutsu. No harm in learning it. I can later replace it with Great Breakthrough and then maybe with Pressure Damage. Gale Surge is a defensive Jutsu. The user sends the air around the user in an outward direction. It could protect me from projectiles and could also disturb the enemy's rhythm. Though its range is too short, at merely 3 meter. Propelling Winds is a movement technique. Small blasts of winds are released from hands in order to help evade. Hmm, this jutsu is pretty simple. I am not really a fan of it, however I have some ideas in the future that could require this jutsu as the base. Wind explosion jutsu seems very versatile. Chakra is infused into wind to form into a ball like Raisingan and it explodes on impact. Though it isn't as powerful as the Raisingan and only causes slight damage, it is a very interesting jutsu. I wonder if a combination of this jutsu and wind clone jutsu exists. It could make wind clones extremely lethal. Having analyzed all the jutsu, he had to make the tough final decision of deciding which jutsu to learn. He thought, all of these jutsu have good uses. However, will I be able to learn all of them? He was lost in his thoughts. 
Not able to reach a conclusion, he decided to calm himself a bit and analyze further, as for how many of these jutsu I can learn will depend on my speed of learning these jutsu. And just learning is rather pointless. I'll need to master them. For now, let's eliminate the ones I don't want to learn. It will be slashing wind jutsu. He sighed, this is the only one I don't want to learn. I want to learn all the others. Never mind, let's list them in the order of importance. Rank E Jutsu are important to be able to get a better control of wind nature. So they are compulsory. Among the remaining, wind explosion Jutsu would probably be the most useful considering its future potential. Next would be wind propelling Jutsu. While it in itself ain't that good, however, if in the future, I'm able to create small blasts of wind willingly around my body to propel myself, then that might become a deadly fighting style. Breakthrough Jutsu would be next as it forms the basis of a few stronger Jutsu. Also it provides an AoE option. Gale Surge and Dust Cloud will be the last ones. Gale Surge provides defense in one direction, but it is very temporary. And Dust Cloud just provides cover. I suppose that's enough calculations. I still have a few years before I may have to fight. So let's just try these jutsu. Hopefully a year will be enough for it. Next year I would like to learn a few earth release jutsu and probably one or two jinjutsu. I suppose this year I should also start with kinjutsu. Maybe a sword or two. They go really well with wind release. Ending his train of thoughts, he read the scroll of wind release, wind clone jutsu properly. After getting the basics down, he left the library and on arriving in a secluded mini-forest, started training for it. However, what happened really surprised him. It only took him one try to be able to do the wind clone jutsu. He was left speechless by the ease of it. After calming himself, he analyzed, the jutsu is very similar to normal clone jutsu and I have already learned even shadow clones. Not to mention, my affinity is wind nature and I have already trained a lot to master this element. So I suppose it's no wonder I'm able to learn it in one try. Actually, if I compare it with Itachi, then this achievement isn't much worth mentioning. He was able to do Fireball Jutsu, a rank C Jutsu, on his first try. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. He comforted himself saying, it's alright. This is the fruit of my hard work over the last three years. He spent the rest of the day testing the capabilities of his wind clone. Unlike shadow clones, it didn't transfer memories back, but it didn't require high amounts of chakra either. Since it used the air around it, Fujin guessed that this is the most chakra-friendly clone jutsu. In merely a few hours, he managed to create ten wind clones. It could do all the jutsu the main body could, except shadow clone, and would dispel on taking a hit. After experimenting, Fujin realized that in a head-on battle, wind clones would be more effective than shadow clones. Many times that day, he had the thought of going back to the library and learning another jutsu. However, he didn't act on that urge as it might have attracted attention. He sighed thinking, I should have found a way to steal those scrolls. After being satisfied with his progress, he returned home. On the way, he had a peculiar thought about the jutsu he had learned so far. He thought, of the six jutsu I know, three of them are clone jutsu. The next day, he read and learned Gale Jutsu. He had to first gather the chakra and then expel it from his mouth as a gust of wind. He was able to perform it properly after a few tries. The Jutsu was really harmless. When he tried it on a tree, except some old leaves falling down, it didn't cause any harm to the tree at all. After an hour of practice, he could cover up the footsteps he left behind. Using the jutsu to change the direction of wind in a small area took a few hours to practice. Though he had no idea how successful or unsuccessful he was at covering up his scent, he decided to have an Inazuka check at some time in the future. The next day, he tried learning wind levitation jutsu. While he didn't get this one on his first try, he still managed to perform it correctly within 10 minutes. He was able to levitate a leaf in air at a height of about 5 meter. It took him half an hour to do the same with a pebble. By the end of the day, he could levitate stones with a diameter of 15 centimeters and at a height of 15 meters and maintain it for 78 seconds. 
he had read in the scroll that this jutsu could be used to lift a boulder over a hundred meters in the sky. And he guessed that even that wasn't its limit. So in the future, he could keep practicing it to his heart's content. The next day he tried the projectile control jutsu. And he finally had a challenge. This jutsu needed really fine control over the wind. He created a wind clone and had it launch shurikens and tried to control it. After a few hours, he managed to change the direction of the shuriken, but he could control it. Since the shuriken spun, he felt that it made the jutsu harder and decided to experiment with a kunai instead. It decreased the difficulty considerably and at the end of the day, he managed to maintain decent control on a thrown kunai. He practiced this jutsu for another three days in order to get a better hang of it. After these four days, he felt as if he had a better grasp on the wind element. The following day, he tried the wind retreating jutsu. Attracting an object towards yourself by having the winds flow towards you proved to be a challenge. The wind flowing towards yourself was the first obstacle. The second was that if he was able to create a strong enough wind flow, he himself would be affected by it. That issue made Fujin wonder if he could create wind paths around himself to perform this jutsu. He left that thought for the future. It took him three days to learn this jutsu and be comfortable with it. He returned the Shadow Clone Scroll to Haruzen after that. Chapter 21 Wind Release It took just 10 days for Fujin to learn the 5 rank E Wind Release Jutsu. With one more month of vacation still remaining, he started training for the rank D Jutsu. He revamped his plans thinking, my initial plans were to learn in order of their importance, but since I'm able to learn at such a quick pace, let's just learn in the order of ease of learning them. So let's do Breakthrough Jutsu first. And follow it up with Dust Cloud Jutsu and Gale Surge. On getting all the required data from the library, he began the training for Breakthrough Jutsu. The initial process was very similar to Gale Jutsu. Only, the amount of chakra he had to gather was larger. The winds generated needed to have much more power. Also the winds had to be made sharper to cause damage. On his initial few tries, the result was only as good as Gale Jutsu, but he could clearly see where he should improve. In merely 15 minutes, he was able to expel a stronger gust of wind from his mouth. He noted, it ain't very powerful yet, but its damage should be damn good if paired with a fire jutsu. Anyways, this jutsu will require a lot of work. The process of gathering chakra as well as the process of converting chakra into wind should be faster. The chakra gathered should be larger as well to increase the damage done. He practiced it for seven days until he got the hang of the jutsu. He also tested it on a poor tree, which resulted in it losing the majority of its leaves and many branches. His thoughts were, that's good. Though it probably won't kill anyone, it can easily injure most jinnins. The next day he grabbed the scroll for dust cloud jutsu and memorized it. This jutsu was incredibly easy. Its process was similar to Breakthrough Jutsu, just that it had to be focused on the ground to lift the dust above. It also had some aspects of Wind Levitation Jutsu to ensure that the dust cloud existed for a longer time. He was able to raise a dust cloud on his very first try, however it lasted a very short time. Properly incorporating the Wind Levitation aspect took a few hours. But by the end of the day, the progress was sufficient. The next day, he began training for Gale Surge Jutsu. It was almost the opposite of wind retreating Jutsu. Here, he had to distill the air around him with his chakra and then suddenly release it up to three meters in a direction. In a way, it resembled the almighty push of Nagato. Of course, the power was extremely lagging. This Jutsu didn't really provide a very good defense. However, Fujin's reason for learning this Jutsu was due to a couple of ideas he had with it. The first being, to increase the range and power of this jutsu and the second was to be able to release wind in every direction around him. That way this jutsu could become incredibly disruptive. If the range and power is increased, then it'll be perfect to create a nuisance on a battlefield whereas an omnidirectional release would be helpful in case he's ever surrounded by enemies. It again took him only a day to learn this jutsu and practice it to an acceptable level. On the next day he started learning the Wind Explosion Jutsu. He treated this Jutsu as a practice for his Raisin Gan later on. 
Here he had to gather the wind and shape it in a spherical form and infuse a little chakra in it. That was the difference between it and Raisingan. Raisingan was purely made of chakra, whereas this jutsu was majorly made of wind and only had a small percent of chakra in it. Since the amount of chakra was low, these spheres could be launched at the enemy. Since he was already practicing for Raisingan, this jutsu became much easier to learn. Within a couple of hours, he was able to get the jutsu right for the first time. After trying it for a few times on nearby trees, he concluded, though the chakra infused in the winds explodes, it is not what causes the damage. The damage is caused by the winds, which become lethal after the explosion. They can cause a large amount of cuts and some of them can be very deep. I tried to infuse more chakra to increase the power of the explosion, however it didn't work as the wind sphere couldn't move as fast or as long distance. Even if I increase the amount of winds to maintain the ratio of chakra to wind, the sphere still becomes very bulky and no longer has the same speed. He sighed, I guess upgrading it would be a very complex task. Anyways, I should instead try to change my point of view. Perhaps I should try to combine this jutsu and the wind clone jutsu. If the wind clones can explode in this manner, then it will transform into a killing strike. The practice for wind explosion jutsu continued for a week. After the first day, Fujin stopped improving the wind sphere, instead focused on increasing his speed of forming the sphere and the speed of launching the spheres. His goal was to be able to launch these explosive spheres one after another without any breaks. That way, though it won't be a killing blow, it'll still cause a lot of damage to anyone who couldn't dodge or block these spheres. It could also cause death due to having lost too much blood. However, he was still quite far from reaching that stage. On the following day, he started learning the propelling wind's jutsu. Here the task was to gather the chakra in his hands and burst it in a direction. That burst would apply an opposite force on him and move him in the opposite direction. This technique could be used to change directions quickly. However, in terms of movement on land, this technique was quite inferior to body flicker. Its advantage lay when the user's feet weren't on ground as this jutsu was very convenient to use while in air. Thanks to all his training over the past month, creating bursts was very easy. The issue was in controlling the amount of movement he had. Also his footwork needed a lot of adjustments. To employ this jutsu, one had to be very light on his feet and allow himself to be pushed back by the burst. While he could control the amount of force of the burst, the force applied back changed in accordance to how much pressure was applied on his feet. That was incredibly hard to control. On the third day of its training, he managed to bypass this issue by using two tactics. The first was, he would slightly jump in the direction where he wanted to go to and then use the burst to push him there. The second was to use the burst and then force his feet off the ground instantly which would make him move out of the way. However, the control for second one was lacking a lot. It would cause him to flip in the air a couple of times which could be dangerous in a fight if the enemy followed and persisted with his or her attack. He trained to improve his control over this jutsu for six days, after which he was happy with his progress. That night after dinner, he decided to sit down and think about his current status. He thought, in the last 32 days, I have learned 5 rank E wind release jutsu and 5 rank D wind release jutsu, including the 3 basic ninjutsu, body flicker and shadow clones, I now knew 15 jutsu in all. He analyzed his jutsu further and concluded, my wind clone jutsu makes the normal clone jutsu redundant. I should completely drop its usage. Gale jutsu 2 doesn't need any more work. It can cover footsteps adequately and in fights, breakthrough jutsu is much better. That leaves 13 jutsu. Even though I have learned them, if I talk about truly mastering a jutsu, then I have probably mastered just one jutsu, which is body flicker jutsu, on which I spent 10 whole months. Next I should focus on mastering these wind release jutsu. Especially to perform them without hand signs. Even though the body flicker jutsu took 10 months to master, if I have learned anything in the last one month is that either my talent in wind nature is extremely high, or these wind release jutsu were very easy. So mastering them shouldn't take very long. I could also upgrade my substitution jutsu by substituting with my wind clone rather than nearby logs or other objects. 
Other than that, I could also try to combine wind clone and wind explosion jutsu. Similarly, I should experiment trying to use body flicker and wind propelling jutsu simultaneously. If body flicker jutsu could freely change directions, then it will be extremely lethal. And I still have to learn to strengthen my weapons using wind chakra. After thinking about these ideas, Fujin decided to think how he could get his hands on rank C jutsu. He thought, I'm not sure if I can get access to rank C and rank B jutsu anytime soon. I could ask Jenki, but even if I am successful, I don't think he'd give me more than two or three jutsu. And that'll also attract a lot of attention. I could ask Haruzen for access to higher sections in the library after the third year exam, but I'm doubtful that he'd agree. Even if he did agree, I will probably be monitored when I enter the library. And if they see me reading those high rank jutsus, they may have someone keep an eye on me. That would mean that I can't practice ninjutsu secretly like I do right now. And if they sent someone good enough to avoid me from sensing him, that would mean my skills would be known to Haruzen and soon to Danzo. He sighed, leave it, let's follow stability. There's no point in taking such a huge risk. If I master all my current jutsu and also a few earth release jutsu and can't progress any further, then I can consider graduating early. Over the past year, he had thought quite a bit about graduating early. His thoughts were, initially I thought that graduating early would attract a lot of attention. Perhaps it still would in Naruto's generation. But right now, graduating early seems to be highly supported and even encouraged by teachers. In the last two years, there were many who graduated after their fourth or fifth year in the academy. A few even graduated after the third year. I guess the village wants to have new ninjas join in their ranks as soon as possible. Which is why it may be encouraged right now. Though if someone graduates at six or seven, then it'll still attract a lot of attention. During this vacation, Fujin had almost entirely focused on ninjutsu. His routine was, work out in morning, and then ninjutsu training the whole day. When he ran out of chakra, then he would practice meditation or practice shuriken throwing. Everything else was halted. Fujin decided to continue practicing his wind jutsu in the last week of vacation. However, he started additional training. He started trying to hit his wind clones with shurikens in order to improve his skill at it though he wasn't sure whether to be upset about his shuriken throwing skills or be happy at his clone's speed and maneuverability as he didn't manage to hit his wind clone even once. However, he did improve at a rapid pace. Chapter 22, Fuinjutsu The third year started after the vacation. This year, Jenki focused on other crucial aspects of a ninja apart from fighting capabilities. Fujin was a bit surprised that he didn't push for any more advanced jutsu, but on thinking for a bit, he understood more than half of the class isn't able to keep up. Considering that he asked me to learn wind nature, I'm guessing he gave similar advice to others who could keep up. This way, the struggling ones would catch up and the students who are performing well can reach the next level. I guess they want to ensure that every single kid from this class becomes a capable ninja to fill up the void left by the dead. Still, from his speech, it seems like everything will be taught in this year itself. After the lectures were over, Fujin went to the library. He went in section E and picked up the scroll named Introduction to Fuinjutsu. He recalled reading it a couple of years back. He read it once again, this time properly. On reading, he analyzed, Fuinjutsu contains two parts. The first is the writing part. However, this has two parts as well. First, the language. Fuinjutsu has special symbols which I have to understand before attempting to make seals. I will need to learn to draw each symbol properly as well as infuse my chakra in the mentioned manner. Any mistakes would make the seal fail and could cause unintended complexities if the seal did something else. This is actually very similar to hand signs, just that the number of symbols is much higher. The symbols serve various functions. The main function I can see is its ability to produce an element. There are symbols for each of the five elements, and symbols which can suppress or enhance them. There are also symbols to control time and space. A simple storage seal has a lot of space symbols, whereas a complex one will not only have space symbols, 
but also time symbols to ensure that time slows down in that storage seal. The second was the logic part. This part is very similar to coding on Earth. Since I know coding, this part is easier for me. However, it ain't much of an advantage. Coding is pretty easy to learn, I'm sure the brighter kids from my class could pick it up within a week or two. After the writing part, the next part was to mold my chakra to create what the seal is used for. For a simple sealing scroll, I would have to create that storage space with the help of the symbols and also set up the conditions for activating the seal. Sigh, this is pretty complicated. Anyways, let's start. I should start with the symbols, but there are hundreds of them. It'll take months if I try to learn them all. So I'll just pick a seal and learn its symbols. That way I could monitor my progress. After analyzing all the seals in the scroll, he decided to learn the most used seal, the storage seal. It used 16 types of symbols. Majority of it were different types of space symbols. A few increased the amount of space in the seal, some restricted the space in order to maintain the boundaries, some ensured that the space stayed stable, and so on. He drew the required symbols perfectly on a spare scroll and also took down notes related to it. He had seen a few others do the same in the library, so he wasn't worried about getting into trouble, though he was very surprised at Kanoa's magnanimity. Once that was done, he left the library. He went to the market and transformed in an alleyway. After searching for a bit, he found the shop he was looking for. There he bought the special ink required for Fuinjutsu as well as special scrolls for the same. The scrolls were made of a special material. It was much sturdier and could apparently last for centuries if not damaged by external force. It could easily bear the chakra applied to it while seals were inscribed on it. The special ink, on the other hand, would make infusing chakra much easier. Trying to make the symbols with normal ink was a lot harder to do. However, there was another substitute for this special ink. That was the blood of a ninja. These items were quite expensive though. The scrolls cost 60 Rio each and a small bottle of ink cost 100 Rio. He bought five bottles of ink and five scrolls to practice. He sighed thinking, I hope these last a few months at least. I only have 4,370 Rio left with me. He then went home and on reaching there, he made a shadow clone. A couple of months of crazy physical training, high amount of meditation and constant ninjutsu training till he dropped due to lack of chakra had resulted in a high rate of growth of his chakra. It had increased by around 25%. It implied that he could now make two shadow clones if he wanted to. However, both will barely have any chakra to do anything. If he made one shadow clone with exactly 50% chakra, then that shadow clone could last till his chakra dropped to 32% of Fujin's max chakra. So effectively, it had more than doubled the shadow clone's usable chakra. Fujin and his clone started the work on the first symbol. After trying it for half an hour, Fujin confirmed, as I thought, the amount of chakra needed to practice this is quite low. This is good news for me as my shadow clone will last a lot longer. Calculating for my clone's remaining chakra, I'd say he'll be able to last for hours while practicing these symbols. After an hour's practice, he dispelled his clone. On dispelling it, he got all the memories from the clone, along with a minor headache. He created another shadow clone. This time the clone practiced the symbol for two hours, took a break of two hour, then practiced it again for one hour, and then took another one hour break followed by one hour practice. Fujin went out to practice shuriken throwing on a wind clone and increasing the radius of his chakra field. He didn't practice any ninjutsu as practicing it with only half his chakra wouldn't last very long. After seven hours, he dispelled his clone. This time the headache was a bit worse, but still bearable. However, recalling Hiruzen's instructions, he decided to sleep. He was very happy with what he had done today. After waking up early the next morning, he thought, excellent, the experiment was successful. Now that my shadow clone can last seven hours and practice these symbols for four hours, I can leave my shadow clone at home and it can keep practicing Fuinjutsu while I'm at the academy. I guess my chakra needs to increase by another 20 to 25% so that my clone could practice for seven hours straight. Still, 
I need to decide what the clone should do in the spare three hours. He thought for a bit and then it clicked him, yeah, why not? I should buy a few cooking books for the clone to learn. In the past two years I have learned to make various breakfasts, but I didn't learn to make a proper lunch or dinner as I didn't have much spare time. This seems the perfect opportunity to learn it. All right, today, after the academy, I'll buy the books. Happy at the possibility of finally being able to eat delicious meals, he decided to analyze his daily routine, so with this sorted, I will continue to do my physical training in the morning, during lectures my clone can practice fuenjutsu while my main body pays attention for important lectures and work on my chakra field in the remaining time. After the lecture is over, I'll have to return home, dispel the clone and take a short, probably an hour's sleep. Then I can practice my ninjutsu and shuriken throwing. And the year continued in this manner. Jenki taught a lot of practical knowledge that was needed for ninjas. And Fujin continued his hard training. Fujin did note that the class was a bit more serious this year. He thought, I guess his one-on-one -on -one talks had a good effect. After six months, Fujin was able to do the rank E wind release jutsus with no hand signs, only the wind clone needed a single hand sign. Among rank D, he could do wind propelling jutsu without hand signs, however the rest required one or two hand signs. Twenty-three days before the exams for the third year were up, he managed to do all but two without hand signs. Only dust cloud jutsu still required a couple of hand signs and wind clones still required one hand sign. Similarly, Shadow Clone 2 had dropped to just one hand sign, the clone seal, which he wasn't able to do without hand signs. His breakthrough jutsu and wind explosion jutsu now were able to do much higher damage and all the other wind release jutsu had been mastered to a certain extent. It took his clone three months to master those 16 symbols and another month to successfully make a storage seal. It took another month of practice to be able to do it comfortably without any mistakes. He had spent 4,000 ryo on the materials till then, leaving him only with a little over 2,000 ryo with him. He had created five proper sealing scrolls. Each time when he bought the materials, he had bought it from different shops under different disguises. Of the five shopkeepers he met, he had observed that one of them seemed greedy and with loose morals. He thought, I can't continue the expenditure on Fuenjutsu. Probably another four months before I'm totally broke so I'll have to sell my scrolls. Trouble is, whom to sell? I can't give out my identity and I'm not sure if any shopkeeper will agree to buy without knowing the seller. Sigh, I'll have to approach the one with low morals and greedy nature. Luckily, one of the shopkeepers fits the bill. Unless he has put up a facade, so I should take some precautions. Preferably, I should send a clone under transformation jutsu. 861 Chapter 23, The First Deal Over the next few days, he had his shadow clone spy on the shopkeeper. Jenki's training for stealth was really helpful during this period. His name was Jing. He was probably in his forties. The clone observed his actions, his movements to see whether he is a hidden ninja. He had already tried to sense his chakra, it was merely civilian level. Fujin wondered if at some point in the past, Kanoha conducted a drive to unlock chakra of a lot of people. He also observed his dealing with other customers, where he keeps his inventory, where he keeps his cash, and so on. The spying was quite successful as on one lucky instance, he heard Jing bargaining with his supplier on the price of some of the items. On hearing them talk, he understood that the supplier sold an explosion tag to him for 500 Rio and storage scroll for 1,200 each, while he sold the storage scroll for 1,500 Rio and the explosion tags for 750 Rio to his customers. After being sure that he was a safe target, he sent his shadow clone with the five scrolls. His clone took the appearance of a middle-aged man and approached Jing when no one was in his shop. On seeing him approach, Jing put up a kind smile and said, Hello, what do you want to buy? Fujin's clone replied, Hello, I'm not here to buy, but to sell. Hearing that, Jing was quite surprised. He raised an eyebrow and asked, Sell? Who are you? Fujin's clone replied, You can call me Zoro. Jing noticed the fact that the man in front of him asked him to call that. He then asked, 
What do you want to sell? Fujin's clone paused for a moment and stared in his eyes. He then said, Storage scrolls. Jing, trying to gain an upper hand in any negotiations, said dismissively, I already have three suppliers for storage scrolls. Why should I buy from you? Fujin's clone smirked and replied, Because my scrolls are better. That statement got Jing interested. He asked, How? And I'll inspect your scroll first before buying from you. Fujin's clone maintained his smirk and replied, Suit yourself and handed him a scroll. Jing took the scroll and invited him to a room inside the shop. On the way, he asked, So what's the name of your company and who is the person in charge of it? However, he was dismissively answered with, You don't need to concern yourself with it. Hearing that Jing thought, Oh, a secret organization? So either he is someone who doesn't want anyone to know that he can make storage scrolls, or he has a secret organization behind him which probably does some shady work. Hee <laughs> hee, I'll make a ton of profits from this sheep. On reaching the room, Jing started inspecting the scroll. Fujin clone's claim wasn't empty. A standard storage scroll has 10 storage seals in it. However, the one he made had 12 seals in it. When he saw Jing inspecting the scroll, Fujin's clone thought, it isn't difficult to make 12 seals in a single scroll. You just have to draw the seals closer to each other. Actually, if anyone wants to make an optimal storage scroll while keeping the size of the scroll the same, then he could make 25 seals in the scroll. However, for the ones who mass produce these seals 10 is the optimal number. The reason is that many buyers don't need more than 10 seals in a scroll. And for the ones who want more, the producers would profit more if they bought more scrolls. It also resulted in less effort needed to make the scroll. So it had become an optimal number for them to make maximum profits. However, I don't have any such restrictions. I just want to make some money to continue practicing Fuinjutsu. On looking at the number of seals in the scroll, Jing had similar thoughts. However, he could also think even further than Fujin as he had a lot more experience and information. He analyzed, while just having two more seals might not seem such a big deal to normal people, but I know the ninjas who want to buy scrolls having more storage seals in them. Just last week one Jounin was talking about the convenience of having a storage scroll with more seals. I can sell this scroll to him for a much higher price. Probably even over 2,000 Rio. Then he looked at Fujin and thought, now the only question is whether he is aware of its value or not. After a few moments his expression became unpleasant and he angrily said, Your scrolls only have two seals. And the quality of each seal is the same as others. Ten seals are already more than enough for a single scroll. I will buy it from you, however I'll pay you the same price as I pay to my suppliers. Knowing the kind of guy the shopkeeper was, Fujin's clone smirked again and said, Now now, we both know that ain't true. There are too many ninjas who will willingly buy scrolls with more seals. Jing, however, dismissively replied, Yes, but they won't be willing to pay higher. Still seeing that you could add two more seals, I'll pay you a bit more. Instead of 1,000 Rio, I'll pay you 1,100 Rio. Hearing that, Fujin's clone scoffed and said, Do you think I live under a mountain? The standard scrolls are supplied for around 1,200 to 1,250 Rio. Even if you consider the least at 1,200 Rio, just considering that it has 20% higher seals would raise the price to 1,440 Rio. Not to mention the fact that some ninjas might be willing to pay more. Hearing that put a lot of pressure on Jing. He internally sighed at the numbers thrown by the other party. The haggling continued for a few more minutes. Jing took advantage of the fact that the opposite party wasn't willing to reveal his origins and used that point to decrease the buying price to 1,150 Rio. After the haggling was over, Fujin's clone thought, sigh, that was some intense haggling. This fellow is much better at haggling than me. But either way, while he may think that he made a profit, just being able to sell these scrolls for over 1,000 Rio each is more than enough for me. He then smirked internally, thinking well I still have one more advantage to play. While he may be a better haggler, I have the advantage of being the lone supplier of the 12 seal storage scrolls. Hee <laughs> hee, I am so interested in looking at his final decision. 
After deciding the price to be 1,250 Rio, Jing asked, So Zoro, how many scrolls do you have to sell? Fujin's clone didn't reply, instead he placed four scrolls in front of him. Looking at that, Jing was at a loss of words. He thought, just four? So including the one I inspected, there are only five? What is he playing at? Seeing that the seller wasn't saying anything further, he showed an enraged expression and asked angrily, Only five? You wasted all my time for only five scrolls? Fujin's clone calmly replied, The boss has sent a few like me to other shopkeepers to sell it too. Depending upon the price each shopkeeper gives for these scrolls, the future sales to those shops will be decided. After hearing that, Jing's expression was really a sight to see. Fujin's clone had a laugh internally. It was the first time in a negotiation that Jing had lost his composure. Fujin's clone's thoughts were, while I don't necessarily need a higher price, doing this would cast much lesser doubts on me. Also, the existence of a boss behind me will keep this fellow from going overboard. Jing, however, got lost in his thoughts, damn. What to do now? By buying one scroll for 1,150 Rio, I probably won't get any more scrolls from him in the future. But if I pay high, and others still pay higher, then I still might not get any in future. Still though, a boss and more people like him? Are they trying to change the whole storage scrolls market? He thought for a bit more and then asked, will you be selling all your scrolls to only the one who buys it for the highest price, or others as well? Fujin's clone replied, we will be selling it to many shopkeepers. Only the amount of scrolls we sell to them would depend on the prices they offer. Of course, the ones who offer lower than average might not get any. But I'm not privy to the exact plans. Jing analyzed for a minute and then sighed. He thought, buying it for a low price would mean killing the goose that drops the golden eggs. But how much should I buy it for? I don't want to pay a lot for it. Otherwise, my profits won't be enough. Let me go with 1,500 Rio. That should be enough to earn higher off them than normal storage scrolls. He then offered a price of 1,500 Rio per scroll. They completed their deal and talked a bit about how and when future deals would happen. Fujin's clone walked out of the shop with 7,500 Rio. He handed the money to Fujin in an alleyway while he wandered off a bit and dispelled himself after confirming that there was no one around. After looking at the cash, Fujin's thoughts were, wow, am I really that good at negotiating? However, after getting his clone's memories back, he thought, nope, I am probably closer to a novice rather than a master. It was just that the final bluff was too much of a temptation for him to ignore. Probably, he also thought that a powerful organization might be behind me, which threatened him a bit. Well, whatever, this is good cash. I should consider selling scrolls often to him. He then went to a few other shops under different disguises to buy materials. He bought 30 bottles of ink, 25 scrolls, and 200 blank paper tags. The blank paper tags cost 10 rio each. So in all he spent 6,500 rio on the materials. He then bought some meat and returned home. He thought, now that I do have some cash, I should definitely increase my meat consumption. The meat business here is entirely dominated by the Akimichi clan. All the shops which sell meat belong to them. I wonder if it is because they are good at it due to economy of scale, or if they were given monopoly over this business when they joined Kanoha. After that day, Fujin began learning other seals too. He learned a few basic ones like heat seal, cool seal, hard seal, soft seal, shock seal and wet seal. These seals used elemental symbols. However, the number of symbols required was much lower as compared to a storage seal as these did very basic things. The heat seal could only be used to warm a room, while the cool seal absorbed heat from the surroundings to make the room cooler. Shock seal could apply a small electric shock, but it was very harmless too as Fujin could bear the shock without any issue. Hard seal was used to harden a surface or an object where a soft seal did the reverse. Wet seal was used to gather the moisture from the air and make the surface it had been stuck to wet. All these seals had to be made on a paper tag, and to use it, it would have to be applied on a surface and be activated. 
the elemental seals had a requirement of the user being able to use those elements. But since these seals were very basic, he could do it despite not having mastered fire, water, and lightning natures. In all it took him four and a half months to learn all these seals. During this time, he also started selling 20 storage scrolls to Jing every month for 30,000 Rio. He kept the amount low so that the major suppliers of storage scrolls won't be annoyed by him and try to find him. On the other hand, Jing was very happy too as he could sell these scrolls for around 2,300 Rio. By the time third year's exams were up, Fu Jin had saved over 100,000 Rio. Chapter 24 Graduation In the third year, Jenki had focused entirely on the basic skills. It made this year a lot more fun. After having taught one skill entirely, he used to come up with games so that everyone would get used to using it. For instance, after teaching how to move stealthily, he gave everyone 29 tags with their roll numbers written on it. Everyone had to put these tags on the backs of other 29 students and avoid others to put those tags on their own back. Thanks to Fujin being a censor, no one managed to put any tag on his backs. The few who tried to sneak up, got a punch or an elbow to their face. While hunting wild animals had resulted in most students making some really funny faces. Killing an animal didn't create an issue for everyone, though Fujin did sigh thinking, I never thought that my first kill in this world would be a freaking rabbit. The fun part according to Jenki, which he enjoyed the most, was having everyone cut open the animal they hunted, clean it and prepare it for cooking. An act that disgusted most of the students, including Fujin as he had never done anything like this in his earlier life. Only Nobu was completely unaffected. And in order to make everyone learn cooking properly, Jenki banned bringing lunch to the academy for a few days. Their lunch was the wild animal they cooked. Later in the year, he also introduced tree climbing as a chakra control exercise for his students. In this manner, the year progressed. One week before the final exams, Jenki dropped the news that surprised Fujin. He thought, while I did know about it, for the announcement to be made this suddenly is surprising. Jenki had announced, if there is anyone among you who wants to attempt the graduation exam, then let me know within the next three days. However, by the end of the day, Jenki did regret announcing that right in the morning. He sighed, damn, I should have announced it when the lectures ended. No one paid attention to today's lectures. After going home, Fujin thought hard about it. On analyzing, he concluded, there's still a lot more for me to learn. Right now my wind jutsus, basic jutsus, shadow clones, body flicker, shuriken throwing and taijutsu has progressed to the level that I'm satisfied with. But I still have to learn earth release jutsus. And also need to work on sword skills and jinjutsu. As for fuin jutsu, though it has been coming along well, I still haven't started on the intermediate level seals which are available in section D of the library. And there's also Raisingan still left to master. Also, while graduating will ensure that I won't have to waste time in the academy, but since Kanoha currently is suffering a shortage of ninjas, I suppose my free time might be curtailed rather than getting more time to train. Also the missions might have more risk than usual, especially with the third war still fresh in everyone's minds. All right then, I won't participate in it. While the top scorer not attempting the graduation exam might raise questions, it's better than dying on some rank C mission gone wrong. However, unlike Fujin, the other kids from his class were perfectly brainwashed by the will of fire. And hence many were interested in participating in the graduation exam. However, knowing that they won't be able to pass, many parents didn't allow their children to take part in the exams. In the end, there were seven students who decided to participate in the graduation exam. Yori, Nobu, Teru, Hoka, a civilian kid, and the two from Aburam and Hitaki clans decided to attempt the exam. Fujin did see that Jenki was a bit disappointed in him not attempting the graduation exam. But he was relieved as Jenki didn't talk with him on the matter. The graduation exam was around a week after the third year exam. The third year exam went as usual. A few more parameters were added to the exam based on the skills that Jenki had taught in this year. This year, the reward from the Hokage was also dependent on the graduation exam performance. 
that pretty much meant that Fujin won't get any rewards for rank 1. So he decreased his performance slightly in the written exam and once again didn't give his all in the ninjutsu exam. So in the end, he only ranked 4th, Terra ranked 1st, followed by Nobu and then Hana. Fujin was actually very grateful that Hana wasn't attempting the graduation exam. While he wasn't aware for the reason, it meant that he wasn't the only one with high scores who wasn't attempting the graduation exam. Unknown to him, however, Hannah was extremely upset that her parents didn't allow her to become a ninja so soon. A week later, the graduation exam was conducted. For the students from the elite classes, the exam was very similar to normal exams. Only, it was more comprehensive. The main addition to the exam was a 50-point exam that provided students with various scenarios that they would face and asked what they would do in those scenarios. Except Nobu, everyone else struggled in this exam. In Taijutsu, only Hoka and Teru performed above par, while Yori and Nobu were barely average. In Ninjutsu, however, Teru, Yori and Nobu displayed why exactly they deserved to be Jinnins. Yori perfectly displayed two rank C Jutsus, Fireball Jutsu and Phoenix Sage Fire Jutsu. Teru was able to perform Jutsus of two different elements. He was able to perform one rank C Water Gunshot Jutsu and three rank D Jutsus, Ground Shaking Jutsu, Headhunter Jutsu and Stone Shuriken Jutsu. Nobu showed off his variety by performing one rank E Jutsu of each of the five elements. In addition, he was also able to perform higher rank Jutsus of Fire Nature, which was his affinity. He performed two rank C Jutsus, Fire Dragon Jutsu and Flame Bullet Jutsu. After all the tests were conducted, the performance of all students were analyzed. From Fujin's class, only Teru, Yori and Nobu graduated and became Jinnins. Due to his better performance than Nobu and Yori in Taijutsu, he ranked first in his class. From the batch, which was one year senior to Fujin, 11 students graduated and 28 of their seniors graduated as well. However, Fujin was oblivious to all these developments. As soon as the summer vacation began, Fujin went back to his ninjutsu training. He was satisfied with his progress in wind release and decided to start training earth release jutsus and hence visited the library. A slash in, this is probably the last time during the academy when it'll be theory heavy. But since the previous feedback mentioned that there was too much theory, so I won't go into explanation of each and every jutsu. If Fujin or someone else decides to learn them later, I'll explain the jutsu then. He looked at every earth release jutsu in section E and section D and made a list. The first thing he noticed was that Kanoha had a lot more earth release jutsus as compared to wind. Though it wasn't really surprising considering the low number of wind release users. The list of earth release jutsus he created was Rock Throw Jutsu E Rock Shield Jutsu E Stone Bracers Jutsu, E. Swift Earth Jutsu, E. Earth Release, Transformation Jutsu, E. Trapping Jutsu, E. Mud Mode Jutsu, D. Earth Clone Jutsu, D. Rock Thorn Bed Jutsu, D. Stone Shuriken Jutsu, D. Headhunter Jutsu, D. Pebble Barrage, D. Ground Shaking Jutsu, D. Earth Tremor Sense Jutsu, D. Earth Mound Creation Jutsu, D. Mud Interceptor Jutsu, D. Earth Military Movement Jutsu, D. Stone Breastplate Jutsu, D. Mud Weight Jutsu, D. Earth Release Camp Jutsu, D. Earth Release Node Jutsu, D. His first thoughts were, hmm, no Earth Wall Jutsu? That's a rather simple Jutsu, to be ranked higher. Even the Iron Skin Jutsu of Kakuzu isn't here. I hope it is there in higher sections. He then began reading each and every Jutsu and started analyzing them. It took him around two hours to go through each and every one of them. He concluded, the Earth Release Jutsus are more comprehensive than the Wind Release Jutsus. The only point where it is bad is that the offense is lacking a bit. Surprisingly many of the jutsus in this list have a similar potential like wind ones. However, there is one big drawback. Most of the earth release jutsus, especially the ones with high potential, will be severely restrained if the fight is over a water body. 
Now that I think about it, IWA is pretty lucky to not share any border with Kiri. Otherwise they'd be in very passive situations in the wars. Anyways, I can ignore all offense-oriented earth release jutsus. For defense, rock shield jutsu is a good option. It probably is an inferior version of earth wall jutsu. So it can be upgraded later. I also wonder if I could use the hard seal to make the shield more durable. For trapping, mud mode jutsu is a good option. It creates a 6 feet deep moat with 6 feet radius around the user. It should serve as a base for that rank as swamp jutsu which Jiraiya had. I don't recall the name though. As for movement, earth military movement jutsu is a must learn. It allows traveling through the ground for short distances. Having another way to escape is always good. Earth release, camp jutsu is pretty handy too. It can make a cave within mountains. There are a few small hills in the village, like the one where there is a waterfall. I could try this jutsu somewhere near there. Also, these four jutsus make a neat combo. I could use camp jutsu to build a cave within a mountain. Then use rock shield jutsu to hide the entrance. Prepare a moat around the mountain, and if anyone manages to find the cave, then I can escape with earth military movement jutsu. He began his training for the earth release jutsus. While he hadn't honed his earth nature as much as wind nature, he still had honed it a lot. He could crumble boulders to dust in just a few seconds. That's why he managed to learn them very quickly. However, they were a bit tougher to learn when compared to wind release jutsus. He learnt rock shield jutsu within a few minutes and then spent a couple of days on it to increase the size and durability of the rock shield that he used to raise from the ground. He also attempted to apply the hard seal on the rock shield he raised. It increased the durability of the shield. However, applying the seal and activating it took around 1.5 seconds to pull off, something he might not have in a fight. The camp jutsu was learnt within a day. Though the cave was a bit dusty, he could just use breakthrough jutsu to clean up all the dust. He could also use the rock shield jutsu to cover up entrance if he wanted to hide though he had to leave a small space open in order for air to circulate. He didn't bother perfecting this jutsu as there was no need for it right now. The next was the mud mode jutsu. It had an aspect of water nature as well. So it took him close to a week to learn it. He would need to improve his water nature if he had to improve this jutsu further. So he decided to leave this matter for his future self. And lastly, he practiced earth military movement jutsu. This one was quite difficult to learn. The jutsu involved moving through the ground like he is swimming. So he had to soften the ground a lot to be able to do that. It took him 11 days to pull it off successfully for the first time. It took another 2 weeks for him to be able to move around more freely. He was only limited by the amount of oxygen he had underground. The softening of the ground resulted in some oxygen entering underground, however it was very limited. He stopped when he was able to move 100 meters underground. He thought, all right, the earth release jutsus have been learned. Though I still need to work more on rock shield jutsu and earth military movement jutsu. However, I can do that slowly over the next year. Next, I need to learn chakra flow. He went to the library to learn about it. Chapter 25, Chakra Flow He visited the library and searched in all four sections he had access to. Surprisingly, he didn't find a single scroll on what he wanted. He thought, this is surprising. Does it mean that they are kept in a higher section, or do they don't provide that technique for normal ninjas? While leaving the library, he analyzed for a bit more, yeah, that might be the case. Infusing chakra into weapons isn't that big of a deal. If I recall right, most samurai were able to do it. However, in Kanoha, Asuma was the only one I recall to do it. And Danzo too was able to do it, but his method was different. Anyways, I suppose I'll have to try it myself. I don't think Janki or his friends might know this. On the way back to the mini forest, he thought of various ways to do it. His first thoughts were, let's just try to flow my chakra through a kunai like I try to do it when trying to cut a leaf. Only, instead of trying to cut the kunai, I'll try to make its edges sharper. He then tried to implement that trick, 
however he had many troubles in doing it. He had instantaneous success in what he was trying to do as he was able to imbibe his kunai with his chakra on his first try. However, the chakra amount that got imbued was very low and even after trying to infuse more chakra in it for two days, he didn't improve much. Also while the kunai's sharpness and penetrating capabilities improved, it wasn't much and he didn't make any improvements over the couple of days. He thought, what a bummer. This seems to be a dead end. I guess having a chakra blade might aid, but something seems wrong. Perhaps I'll improve if I stick to this, however it'll probably take years. I need to think of another way. He thought for a few hours, and then it clicked him. He decided to go the Hunter x Hunter way. He thought, yeah, that's right. I could try the similar way as in Hunter x Hunter. I'll first try to release my chakra and coat it all over my body. And then try and extend that coat to cover a kunai I'm holding. While the method is very inefficient, it should allow me to learn it faster. Once I'm able to do it, I'll have to practice doing it without coating my body and directly infusing chakra into the kunai. Coating the entire body with chakra wasn't something any ninja preferred to do. The reason was simple insufficient chakra. Doing it would exhaust the chakra of the user very quickly. From what Fujin could recall, apart from the Jinchurikis, only the Rakage coated their body with chakra. Others would at most coat a body part or weapons to enhance them. Fujin began training in the new way. And it was very exhausting. In merely seven minutes, he ran out of chakra. However, he could see that he was making some progress in extending his chakra to kunai. It was slow, but a steady growth he observed in seven minutes. He guessed that in around ten attempts, he'll be able to perfectly coat the kunai with his chakra. However, with the chakra exhaustion, he could probably only train it around three or four times in a day. Not to mention, there was much more to do after coating the kunai with his chakra. Not wanting to waste weeks on this, he decided to buy soldier pills. After resting for a couple of hours, he went to his home to get cash and then left to buy the pills. He transformed in an alleyway and went to a shop that sold soldier pills. Soldier pills were extremely useful for a ninja. When he read it the first time, he was a bit amazed by it. A top quality soldier pill could provide around 30 times the chakra of an average jounin. And it didn't do it right away, but provided the chakra in small parts every hour, consistently over three days. It also released enzymes which stimulated the ninja to stay awake for three days. That's why someone who consumed a soldier pill could fight for three days straight. Unknown to Fujin, there were also better soldier pills, but they were custom made for top ninjas and not available for everyone. Fujin decided to buy soldier pills of medium quality. These were mostly used by chunins. Fujin's own chakra reserve now was much higher than average fresh jinin. It was probably better than an average jinin. In the next year, his chakra reserves should grow to the same level as the weaker Chunin Academy teachers. Despite not yet having Chunin level chakra reserves, he still decided to buy medium quality soldier pills because of how exhausting the training was. He bought five pills for a total of 10,000 Rio. The prices did make him curse out and also thank the fact that he had started learning Fuinjutsu. The next three days, he trained a lot. On the first day itself, he was able to coat his kunai with chakra. He then charged it with wind nature, and that had an immediate impact on the kunai's sharpness and penetrating power. The chakra extended kunai's range by 5 centimeters. He experimented a bit with his new ability. He thought, excellent, I can cut through branches like I am cutting through thin air. While I can't cut a tree, it's because the size of kunai is too small. With a sword even that shouldn't be an issue. The kunai is also able to penetrate deep within a boulder. I recall Naruto and Asuma being able to penetrate through a boulder in one of the fillers, so I could try that. Honestly, if an enemy underestimates me and tries to block the kunai, then he'll be very badly injured. But I do need to reduce the amount of chakra I need to do this. The next part of the training should be to directly try to coat the kunai without coating my whole body too. So how should I proceed? The thought for a bit and then concluded, just directly trying to code it will probably end up in failure. 
I should instead try to coat only my hand with chakra and then try to extend it to kunai. I guess I could also try to train in how to infuse chakra in my punches in this way too. While it won't be Tsunade level, the power of chakra infused punches should completely outmatch the power of normal punches. He then proceeded trying to coat only his fist with chakra. It took a few hours to be able to do that. He thought, okay, this wasn't so hard. He then tried to extend that chakra to kunai. While he was able to extend it, the amount of chakra he could now extend to the kunai was much lesser. He thought, I see, since I'm just coating my fist, that's why the amount of chakra I'm extending is much lesser. So basically I'll have to concentrate more chakra in my fist. He then started to concentrate more chakra in his fist. This was much harder than expected. It needed a very high level of chakra control to be able to do that. Luckily for Fujin, he had trained his chakra control a lot. It took him a day for him to be able to double the chakra he could concentrate in his fist. Not satisfied with the amount, he kept on trying more. However, soon three days were about to be done. Hence he decided to rush back home before it. As soon as it was three days, exhaustion hit him real hard. The side effect of using soldier pills was bad. Luckily it was only a short-term exhaustion and didn't have any long-term effects. He straight away went to sleep, without setting any alarm. When he woke up, he looked at the clock and thought, Oh, it's 8.10 a.m. Wait, I fell asleep yesterday at 4.30 p.m. So I slept for over 15 hours? Damn the exhaustion hits hard. Also I'm very hungry right now. After brushing and cleaning up, he grabbed a couple of ration bars and are them. He did his morning workout, though it was three hours late, and decided to go out to eat meat for lunch in Yakiniku. He rested for the rest of the day, and the next day, continued his training. It took another three days for him to double the amount of chakra he could concentrate in his fist again. He thought, wow, I wonder how strong my punch is now. Let's test out on the boulder. On punching the boulder, a lot of cracks appeared on the boulder, but Fujin was screaming internally, bloody hell. This hurts like a bitch. After a few moments, he checked his fist and thought, wow, there are no visible injuries. Though it hurt a heck lot, it didn't cause any bleeding or injury. It only caused a few small scratches. I guess I have really become strong. He spent the next 15 days increasing the amount of chakra he could infuse in kunai and also making the chakra much sharper. While just infusing wind chakra in it had made it very potent, he had to shape his chakra to form a thin edge that aligned with the edges of kunai for maximum effect. By the time the vacation was over, his kunai could penetrate through 3-4 meters wide boulders and get stuck in the fourth boulder. And the range of kunai, due to chakra flow, was increased by 15 centimeters. However, he noticed that once he was able to increase the amount of chakra infused in the kunai and make it much sharper, it started to deteriorate the condition of his kunai. Two days before the vacation was over, the kunai with which he was practicing crumbled. He sighed thinking, well it was a kunai I picked up in the forest. I wonder if a new kunai will last longer. I guess I'll need to buy a few kunai later on. I should also check on the prices of chakra blades. The day before the academy started, he visited the best weapon store in Kanoha to look for chakra blades. He hadn't transformed this time and just went in as an enthusiast. The reason was that he wanted to show an interest in it and the fact that the shopkeeper was a retired ninja whose chakra was almost twice that of Jenki. The prices however shocked him. He thought, what the fuck? A small chakra knife costs 2 million Rio? Heck! Why didn't Kakuzu steal Asuma's chakra blades instead? And though they don't have any chakra swords, the details in the book say that the cheapest one costs 7.5 million Rio. The prices got him thinking, damn, what should I do? The costs are too high. If I focused a lot on Fuinjutsu and sold a lot of seals, I might be able to make that much in a year or two, but it'll attract a lot of attention. Not to mention that the chakra swords have to be custom made, so trying to get it with a random disguise will most probably not work. I really doubt that the village won't pay any attention to such a big purchase. If I wait till I can earn by doing missions, 
I doubt I can earn this much till I am able to do rank A missions. That's a long time away. He thought for a bit more, and then it clicked, that's right, I do have the option of asking it as a reward for Maruzen. This year, I'll train a lot to dual wield swords. And even show off my training a bit to show everyone how interested I'm in swords. And Jenki knows that my nature affinity is wind. So they will get the hint. Though there are two main problems. The first being that pretty much everyone will know about it. The second is whether Haruzen will actually reward me something so expensive. He thought for a bit more, oh well fuck it. I can bypass the first issue by asking Haruzen to hold onto my swords. When I'm confident that I can take on Jaunin's, I'll ask him for the swords. As for second, if he refuses, then I will ask him for smaller chakra blades. With all the crap he talks about the will of fire, it'll be damn fun to see how he would refuse a young kid twice. Sadly, I have built a rather mature and a bit nervous image. So I can't throw tantrums if he refused me twice. Though I'll definitely have my revenge if he says no twice despite boring me for hours year on year with his brainwashing speech. If he declines, then in the future, I'll fund Naruto's pranks by supplying him with various seals. Then I'll enjoy watching the mess he makes of Kanoha. With those thoughts, he laughed like a devil. If Hiruzen was aware of Fujin's thoughts, he'd have probably shivered. Chapter 26 Getting AC Rank Jutsu The next day, the fourth year in the academy started. Not having paid any attention to the graduation exam and wanting to get the information, he decided to go a bit early to the academy. He reached the class at 7.45 a.m. On reaching, he saw that 24 kids were already there. And there were three new faces. He looked around the class and didn't see Teru, Yori, and Nobu in the class. He then went to Hoka, sat beside him and asked, Morning. What happened in the graduation exam? Hoka's mood first soured as he hadn't passed. But on realizing, he looked at Fujin in disbelief, You don't know? Fujin shook his head. Hoka continued, Have you been leaving under a rock? Fujin replied, Nope, just under trees. Hoka gave him a deadpan expression. Fujin asked again, Well, are you going to talk today? Hoka then showed a sad face and answered, I failed. Only Teru, Nobu and Yori passed. Fujin, having expected that, nodded. He then asked about what happened in exams. Hoka gave the summary of what all happened. Despite already knowing the possibility, he sighed at the fact that those three could perform rank C jutsu. He thought, sigh, I guess being in a top clan or being backed by a crazy old fellow has its benefits. Fujin then asked whether those three formed a jin and squad. However, Hoka replied, No, Teru and Yuri were placed together in a squad with someone a year older. No idea where Nobu went, but I haven't heard about him after the exam. Fujin thought, I see. I guess Danzo inducted him into the route. Though I am surprised that he didn't take Nobu when he was three to four years old itself. He then asked, So what's up with the three new guys? Hoka dismissively replied, No idea. Seeing Hoka unconcerned about the new guys, Fujin thought, uh, he isn't the right guy to ask this. He is very aloof if it doesn't involve Taijutsu. But this much information is enough. I wonder if I could use this info to get a few C rank Jutsus from Jenki. After the talk, Fujin decided to continue sitting there for the rest of the day. While he didn't make much of a relationship with his classmates, due to constant spars, his relationship with Hoka and Teru was better than others. Surprisingly, today, Jenki didn't enter the class alone, but was also accompanied by an old man. When he entered, everyone stood up and greeted him, as he was the headmaster of the academy. One entering, he first made some small talk. Then he started talking of Will of Fire. And finally, he asked the students to try to graduate this year. Fujin was quite surprised with this. He only had one thought, wow they are really desperate. After he left, Fujin thought, I guess not participating this year is not an option. Then again, I have learnt most of the things I can. Only Jinjutsu and Learning Swords are left. And the second book of Fujinjutsu is still left. 
Still, if they are this desperate, I might actually have a shot at chakra swords. After that, the headmaster introduced the three new kids. He said, since three of your classmates have already become Jinin, we have transferred three students from other divisions to your class. So be friends with them. The three kids introduced themselves to the class. They were the top three among the remaining 400 students of their year. Some students were happy to have new classmates, some felt like they didn't need anyone else to join in, so the reaction was mixed. Fujin's thoughts were, I see, so in this way, they ensure that the other students don't become too pressured due to few of their classmates becoming Jinnins. The three kids will ensure that the absence of the ones who graduated isn't always felt, but they will still serve as a benchmark for the rest. Also, the new kids in this class will have to work much harder, if they keep up, they'll become quite strong in the future. It's a pretty smart move. While Fujin was acknowledging the ingenuity of the move, one person in the class was extremely unhappy and almost crying too. That person would be the class teacher. Jenki thought, I taught everything I had to teach to all these kids last year itself. All I had to do was to wait until they absorbed everything and passed the graduation exam. But now I have to again teach these new kids everything. While he was depressed and lost in his thoughts, he had a thought that horrified him, wait, so if this year more students pass out, does that mean more students will join the class and I will have to teach them again? His shoulders dropped on having that thought, he really was depressed. He sighed, this isn't what I signed up for. After introducing the new kids, the headmaster left. Jenki then announced the syllabus, and it surprised Fujin once again. Jenki said, this year, your main focus will be to master everything I taught you guys in the last two years. The three basic ninjutsu as well as the basic skills I taught you. In addition to it, I will also teach you five new rank E jutsus. They will be fire release, one jutsu, wind release, gale jutsu, lightning release, static string jutsu, earth release, rock shield jutsu and water release, fish spit. These jutsus are compulsory for you to learn in order to graduate, however, they will be very helpful to you if you are able to use them. I've already explained nature affinities to you last year. So I'll check your nature later, and at the very least, you'll have to learn the jutsu of your affinity. Learning all five will help you if you decide to graduate early. Your former classmate, Nobu, was able to perform all five of these jutsus. That's why he was able to graduate so early. Mentioning Nobu riled up the class and made them very competitive. Jenki was satisfied with the reaction. He thought, it's nice to see them so motivated. I should be thankful to Nobu for performing this during the previous year's exam. Else I might not have decided to do this. Fujin thought, well this is surprising. I didn't think Jenki would teach Jutsus of all the five elements. But it isn't much of a concern for me. I already know two of those five Jutsus. After the class was over, Fujin grabbed a sparring sword from the academy and started practicing swinging it. He had two basic ideas, which is why he wanted to learn using swords. The first one was to infuse wind chakra in his swords, make them incredibly sharp so that he could cut his enemies down, even if they block it with their weapons. It would make him incredibly deadly in close combat. The second idea was to shoot out slashes or thrusts at mid-range, similar to what Zoro and Myhawk did in One Piece. Of the two ideas, the first one seemed very realistic. Fujin was confident in being able to do that very soon. He wasn't quite sure about the second one though. His memories regarding the small events in Naruto had grown a bit hazy by now, so from what he could recall, there was only one ninja who could use brute force at mid-range. That was Guy while performing his morning peacock and evening elephant. However, even if he wasn't able to send slashes flying with brute strength, it could be replicated by launching a slash of chakra instead. Like the samurai are able to do and it could be improved further by charging that chakra with wind nature. After practicing for an hour, he sighed at his sword skills. He thought, even though I have watched a lot of sword play in my previous life, I don't really have a proper way to train it. Oh well, I'll bother Janky once again. So he kept the sword back, and went to find Janky. 
On finding Janky, he saw Janky talking with a fellow teacher. He waited for a bit. Janky, after seeing Fujin, cut short his talk and asked Fujin why he was here. Fujin said, Sensei, I want to learn how to use swords. Can you teach it to me? Janky almost cried internally, first, that headmaster made me teach three new kids everything again. Now this brat comes and asks me to teach him how to use swords. As if I don't have any other work to do. And he doesn't even attempt the graduation exam. He gathered himself and sighed, whatever, I can't say no to him. But I do need to have a talk with him. I want him to graduate this year. If he stays for another year or two and if others start taking a cue from him and ask me to teach more, my life will become hell. Fujin was surprised at Janky sighing. He wondered, what's up with him? Wasn't he always very enthusiastic when the students wanted to learn more? Janky then replied, I don't use swords much. But I have a couple of friends who do. I'll arrange you some sessions with them. While he was saying this, he thought, I am so glad that I made so many good friends on whom I can offload my students. Fujin nodded and thanked him. Janky then asked a few more things. And then moved on the topic to graduation exams. He asked, Fujin, what are your thoughts on graduation? Fujin sighed internally at the question, there really is no other option this year. He put up a thoughtful expression and said, I will be attempting it this year. Last year I wanted to attempt it too, but I got a bit scared as it was told to us at the last moment. And I didn't know what to do. He then showed a slightly yearning and slightly sad expression and said in a sad voice while looking down, but after hearing that Yori, Teru, and Nobu were all able to perform rank C jutsus, I guess it was a good thing I didn't attempt the exam. I would have made a fool of myself if I did. Fujin maintained that expression, while hoping that Janki takes pity and gives him some rank C wind release jutsus. On seeing Fujin's expression, Janki felt some sympathy for him. He thought, an orphan with no clan becoming a ninja is pretty difficult. Not having the resources that a clan provides puts them at a huge disadvantage. I myself struggled a lot due to coming from a civilian family. He sighed a bit and decided, all right, I should cheer him up and give him a rank C jutsu. Great Breakthrough Jutsu is a very basic one for wind users. And I'm sure that Lord Hokage would agree too. But first I need to check up on his progress. He tried to cheer Fujin up a bit, and then asked, We checked your nature affinity more than a year back. How far have you progressed with it? Fujin replied, Sensei, I managed to cut the leaf in two. I learned Gale Jutsu from the library. I can also do Breakthrough Jutsu, but I'm still improving it. Janky was a bit surprised at the answer, I didn't expect him to come so far and even practice jutsus by himself. Then again, he was very diligent. Also rank E and D jutsu aren't hard to perform. But since he has learned these two, great breakthrough jutsu should become easier for him to learn. He then said, that's good. Can you show me how well you can do them? Fuji nodded and they went to the training grounds. Fujin first performed Gale Jutsu properly. Though he could perform it without hand signs, he made all the hand signs while showing it to Janki. Janki nodded and said, That's good. Show me Breakthrough Jutsu, try it on that tree. He pointed to a nearby tree. Fujin once again made the hand signs, but he made them at a slower speed. He also controlled the power of the Jutsu. It only broke off a few leaves and a few twigs. After performing the jutsu, he thought, well this much should be enough. If I had gone full power and turned this tree into a naked tree with plenty of deep cuts, a certain someone would have gotten very interested in me. Janki was impressed with Fujin's performance, that's good. Though the power is a bit lacking, it's sufficient considering that he is only nine years old and didn't have anyone to teach him. But his talent in ninjutsu is definitely not as good as the three who passed. Janki thought a bit more on whether he could help Fujin more, but he couldn't come up with anything. He concluded, oh well. Even if he doesn't become a ninjutsu expert, he still is a censor. Not to mention that his taijutsu is solid too. And though his ninjutsu ain't very good, the wind element makes fire stronger. 
so he will have a lot of between his sensor skills and winjutsus, he will provide a lot of utility to his squad. So becoming a special Jounin within a decade shouldn't be an issue for him. He might even become a Jounin if he grows well. On concluding his thoughts, he said, Nice work Fujin. Both the Jutsu have been learned very well. Though you should work on increasing their power. Fujin nodded and said, Yes, Sensei. Jenki continued, Don't worry about rank C Jutsu. I'll see if I can get one for you. Fujin quickly thanked him. The next day, Jenki, after taking Haruzen's permission, handed the scroll for Great Breakthrough Jutsu to Fujin. He said, This Jutsu is the next stage of Breakthrough Jutsu. Learn it properly, it'll help you to graduate. Fujin thanked him again. Chapter 27 Kinjutsu From the next day, Fujin restarted his Fuinjutsu practice by leading a clone back home. He hadn't practiced it much in the last two months as he couldn't leave clones behind when he did ninjutsu training. He still had a few basic seals to learn. Fujin guessed that it'll take another two to three months to be done with them. Then he could move on the next scroll. One dilemma he had was whether he should leave one or two shadow clones back home. Since the time he had started to practice shadow clones, his chakra had grown to over three times. According to the scroll, if a shadow clone could use two-thirds of its chakra before dispelling, only then it is considered a proper shadow clone. According to that logic, Fujin could make only one proper shadow clone. However, practicing Fuinjutsu for seven hours didn't require that much chakra. So he could leave two shadow clones if he wanted to. On analyzing, he decided, for now let's just leave one clone. I'll see how the academy goes for the first week and then decide. The day after that, Jenki handed Fujin the scroll for Great Breakthrough Jutsu. Fujin started learning it the very same day. It was very similar to Breakthrough Jutsu. Just had a lot more power. He managed to learn it on the very same day. Though there was still a lot of room for improvement. The power had to be increased a lot, and hand signs had to be reduced to zero. He recalled, I remember Orochimaru making a mess of the forest in the Chunin exams with this jutsu. So there's a lot more I need to do to increase in power. But at least this jutsu is learned. I'll keep the scroll with me for three weeks, and then return it to Jenki. Later in that week, Jenki checked everyone's affinity. Unsurprisingly, most had the fire affinity. The remaining were split between the earth and water affinities. No one had the lightning affinity, and Fujin, whose affinity was already known, was the only one to have the wind affinity. Jenki also explained the jutsus to the class. The lightning one basically just formed strings of lightning that could shock anyone it touched. But it lacked power and was pretty harmless overall. The water one involved spitting out one small jet of water. Fire release, one jutsu however surprised the whole class. While it was a simple jutsu that involved producing a heat ray with one finger, it was the most basic jutsu from a set of six jutsus. Each of the six jutsus built up on one another and the last one was a very powerful rank A jutsu. This information got Fujin very interested in the technique. Right now, he had the knowledge of only one rank A jutsu. Having another he could learn would increase his firepower a lot. However, he controlled his desire for the jutsu due to two reasons. He hadn't yet trained his fire nature, and this jutsu didn't seem like it could be enhanced with his wind-release jutsus. In all, the five jutsus could be used alongside the basic skills Jenki had taught. Fire release, one jutsu could start fires. Fish spit jutsu could douse it. Gale jutsu could cover tracks rock shield jutsu could defend and create a cover to hide and static string jutsu could paralyze small animals for a minute or two. So they were pretty handy. Next week, Jenki announced, Today we will be learning about swordsmanship. I have invited a guest teacher to guide you. Jenki had thought about this after Fujin asked him to teach him how to use swords. He concluded, Swordplay training can be done by everyone. So it won't be fair to only arrange it for Fujin. If someone of the 30 students have innate talent for swordsmanship, then it'll be a good find. Even if no one has interest in it, just learning how to use another weapon would be helpful for them. 
I'll just talk to Lord Hokage and try and arrange someone for this job. Fujin was surprised by the announcement, but on thinking more, he realized that it was very reasonable. Everyone went to the academy training grounds. On entering, they saw Jenki talking with a tall, muscular guy who carried one sword on him. Jenki introduced him, he will be teaching you how to use swords. His name is Nakaya Michi. He is a chunin like me. Everyone greeted Michi respectfully. Michi first started by giving a background of swordplay. He gave a rather passionate speech about being a swordsman. He talked about the first and second Okage using swords. He also talked about treating the sword as an extension of your body. Fujin was getting serious guy vibes from this guy. After 15 minutes of his speech, he then got to the basics of swordplay. He taught how to hold the sword, what stance to take, how to swing it and so on. Fujin paid a lot of attention to his instructions. However, not everyone was interested in it. The students from Nara, Akimichi, Inazuka, Aburame and Hyuga clans showed zero interest in it. After a week, Michi asked who all were interested in pursuing swordplay seriously. Aside from Fujin, only one civilian kid and one from the Hataki clan decided to practice it seriously. Michi talked to all three of them to understand more about them and why they wanted to pursue swordsmanship and to what degree they wanted to learn it. On asking that question to Fujin, he replied, I want to develop my swordplay as much as I can and make it my main mode of combat in close distance. Michi then praised and asked, That's a good attitude. You'll be a fine swordsman one day. But do you have any ideas on how to proceed ahead in using swords? Fujin wasn't sure what all options were available in Konoha. So he shook his head and said, No, I am not aware. Can you tell me what all paths are available? Michi replied, Well, in Konoha, we have a lot of dances that go along with swords. For example, I know the dance of Crescent Moon, which is one of the strongest kinjutsu in Konoha. There are many basic styles that you would need to learn before you can do this kinjutsu. Fujin blinked and replied with a question, Dance? Michi laughed out loud and then replied, Well, they ain't exactly dances. They are just movements that have to be done in a particular pattern. That pattern helps you create some effects which are very lethal in a battle. Like some movements create after images or make you disappear or make it seem like you ain't moving. But since those movements seem like a dance, it was termed as such. Fujin put up his thinking face and thought, well I obviously know that. However, the dance, while having good effects, is in itself very restrictive. A good opponent can easily disrupt those movements. Baki could straight up defend it by having stronger defensive means. That's why that Hei guy died so easily. Though if someone learns all these styles, they could come up with a very advanced Kinjutsu style, but that'll easily take a decade or more. Not the kind of time I have. I just want a straightforward approach with swords. High offensive power, enough proficiency to defend with the swords and my agility to dodge or chase if need be. With wind chakra flow, just this much will be extremely lethal against any normal ninja. Now how to convey this to him. I can't just say that your styles are weak. I can't just say that if Madara asked you whether you can dance, and if you showed him your dance of crescent moon, then he might bang his head on the ground and go back to his grave. Wait, that doesn't sound like Madara. No, he might instead drop a few meteors. Yeah, that sounds like him. He then answered, For now I don't want to learn the various dances. I just want to learn how to do a strong frontal assault with swords. He then paused for a few seconds and said, Um. I don't know if it's possible or not, but is there any way to make the swords more lethal or send flying slashes? Fujin had to be very careful here, after all, the library had no mention of chakra flow. So he had to present it as his own idea. Michi was initially a bit disappointed with Fujin as he didn't want to learn the various sword styles of leaf. But he was very surprised when he heard the question, did this brat think about chakra flow by himself? Also aren't those samurais able to send chakra flying in the form of slashes? This kid has a very innovative way of thinking. Sadly, I myself haven't learned chakra flow or samurai saber techniques. He was a bit distressed over it, 
Now what to do? It's super embarrassing to tell him that I don't know it. Dance of Crescent Moon doesn't require chakra flow. Also learning it will take a lot of effort, which is why most of us don't learn it. He thought a bit more and finally sighed and said, What you are talking about is chakra flow. We send chakra through our swords to make them stronger. However, it is a very complicated technique and very few in Kanoha know it. So don't worry about it right now. As for flying slashes, samurais are able to do it, however their techniques are a secret, so learning it will be difficult. Fujin showed disappointed expressions. He thought, wow, this guy is useless. Couldn't he at least get someone who knows that to teach me? Looking at Fujin's disappointment, Michi consoled him saying, but you don't need to worry, those are very level concepts and you can have an opportunity to learn them in the future. For now, I'll drill all the basics in you. Fujin nodded at him, thinking, sigh, my expectations have grown a bit too much. This guy doesn't really owe me anything to do that. I guess having a class teacher who is so helpful increased my expectations a lot. He then thought for a bit more and concluded, well, if Hiruzen denies me chakra blades, then I could ask him to arrange someone to guide me in samurai saber techniques. Even though Michi said that those techniques are a secret, it's highly unlikely that no one in Kanoha knows it. Also, now that Michi has mentioned it, I do have an excuse to explain from where I learned about it. After that discussion, Michi started teaching the basics to all the three students. Later that day, Fujin bought a sword for himself. The sword was normal, but its quality was better than a normal kunai. It cost him 22.5k ryo after some bargaining. The reason to buy it was because he couldn't practice chakra flow with the sparring swords in the academy. Chapter 28 Jinjutsu The year continued in such a manner. Michi did drill a lot of basics in Fujin, which Fujin absorbed like a sponge. As for the five basic elemental jutsus, Fujin didn't bother to learn them for now. From the second week, Fujin started to leave two clones back home to learn Fuinjutsu, this doubled his speed of learning Fuinjutsu. However, in order to not mess up his brain, both clones practiced the same symbol or seal. One and a half month after the fourth year began, Fujin was done with the basic Fuinjutsu. In this period, he also noted, since both my clones practice the same seal, it doesn't double my speed of learning. After dispelling both of them, I get the perspectives of the clones. Hence the base form is much stronger, but it comes at the cost of the learning speed. In all I think that my learning speed has increased by around 60%. He analyzed for a bit more and concluded, the optimal use of shadow clones will be when each of my clones learn different things. However, the one attempt I did caused me an insane headache. So while this ain't the best use I can make of shadow clones, I guess this is the most optimal path for me. I suppose having a sturdier base would be more important than learning speed. After learning the basic seals, he decided to learn more advanced seals from the next version which was in section D of the library. This book had seals to store an element in it. For instance, seals that could seal fire in them. It made him wonder if the seal Jiraiya used to store Amaterasu was such a simple seal. The element stored could be created with the help of ninjutsu. However, this wasn't a necessity. Elements could be taken from surroundings as well. Like for water, he could store water from a river in the seal. On reading the seals in the book, he realized, it looks like the seals Shikamaru used against Kakuzu are in this scroll. However, I guess what he used wasn't normal water, but instead water that conducted electricity much easier. I guess they put a lot of salts in the water, or maybe something else to increase its conductivity. Anyways, even these don't have much use in combat. It'll require very high creativity to use them effectively. He started learning those seals. Three months after the fourth year began, Fujin managed to perform great breakthrough jutsu without any hand signs. In the next month, he managed to do the same for rock shield jutsu. However, he still had to slam his hands on the ground to perform it. He decided, I should learn to perform rock shield jutsu by stamping one feet on the ground instead. So I'll have to learn how to send earth nature chakra underground through my feet instead. He thought a bit more and concluded, it's difficult. 
The hand signs for rock shield jutsu gathers earth nature chakra into the hands and then it's released into the ground. In order to do it by stamping the foot, I'll have to manipulate the chakra to be released from my feet instead. But if I could learn it, it'll be an incredibly annoying defense. I could make a shield with every step while I run backwards. I guess it's worth it, so I'll train later while also trying to create wind bursts through my feet. After another month, Fujin decided to start training to use two swords at the same time. He bugged Michi to train him with the basics for the same. He then made a point to ensure that a lot of people see him training with two swords. His previous sword had deteriorated a lot in these five months, so he bought two new ones. He trained for another month, but didn't have any success at reducing the hand signs for Earth Military Movement Jutsu to zero. With only four months remaining for final exams, he decided to stop training the two Earth Release Jutsus and start learning Jinjutsu. He visited the library and began searching for scrolls on Jinjutsu. He found a few scrolls in Section Zero. Some were just on basic knowledge of Jinjutsu which were covered in the lectures, a few on countering Jinjutsu and one on learning it. He began reading the one that explained how to learn it. However, the very first sentence startled him. His first thought was how straightforward. The scroll started by stating, Jinjutsu requires very precise chakra control and very high intelligence, if you lack either, then don't bother. However, he soon became very skeptical, is very high intelligence really needed? After all, Kurina used Jinjutsu on fucking Itachi. He continued reading it and analyzed, I see, so a Jinjutsu is created when a ninja extends their chakra flow through the cerebral nervous system of their opponent to control their mind's chakra, thereby affecting their five senses. In this way, illusions of what doesn't exist can be fed to the opponent. Jinjutsu in itself can be divided into two categories. First is creating a whole new environment with Jinjutsu. Here the opponent can easily tell that he's under a Jinjutsu. Itachi's Tsukuyami or the Jinjutsu Kurinai used on Itachi and Kisame can be included here. The second is just to make a small change, i.e., to plant a small suggestion in the opponent. This is harder to detect, but it isn't as strong as the first one. However, when used at the right moment, this is very lethal. The scroll also talked a lot about how to extend their chakra through the opponent's nervous systems and tricks to do it stealthily. It also had a lot of diagrams regarding the cerebral nervous system. He then went to search sections D and E of the library to see if he could get a basic Jinjutsu to learn. However, he received a big surprise. There were over a hundred Jinjutsu in just those two sections. He was shocked by it and thought, did they put everything that Uchiha and Kurama have here? He sighed at the high amount of reading and analysis he'd have to do. In order to not waste too much time, he just began opening the scrolls on spot and reading the description and keeping them back. It still took him over four hours to go through all of them. After reading each and every scroll, he concluded, most of the jutsus here have no combat application. It's just different ways and scenarios of using Jinjutsu. I guess someone like Itachi or even Kurinai could easily use these after reading it once. Anyways, I don't really have any intention to be a master at Jinjutsu. With those Uchihas around, it's pretty pointless anyways. I just need to learn ways to counter it and that darkness Jinjutsu that Hashirama or Tobarama created to counter the Sharingan. Though I guess that one is a B or a rank Jinjutsu. So I guess I should learn a couple. Let's go with rank E double vision Jutsu and rank D demonic illusion, hell viewing Jutsu. Double vision makes the opponent see doubles of everything so it would be useful in putting the opponent under a lot of pressure. And Hell Viewing is the one which Kakashi used on Sakura. He then read how Double Vision Jutsu is performed. He also read a few scrolls on countering Jinjutsu, and then followed the usual protocol and reached a mini forest. Jinjutsu training couldn't be performed solo. It needed someone to cast the Jinjutsu on. Otherwise, its result will be entirely unknown so he created a shadow clone to practice it. His plan was, I will try to cast a Jinjutsu on my clone. Once the clone dispels, I'll get all memories of what was experienced by the clone as well as my ability to cast a Jinjutsu. Also, 
The clone will try to resist the Jinjutsu and will try to release it, this way I can train in both casting and countering Jinjutsu at the same time. To counter Jinjutsu, a ninja had two ways. The first being to stop his chakra flow and disrupt it. And the second being to inflict pain upon yourself to break out of the Jinjutsu. Stabbing yourself with a kunai, or biting the tongue or any other means were fine too. Of course a shadow clone couldn't use the second way. He began by trying to affect his clone's cerebral nervous system with his chakra flow. He recalled all the diagrams he had seen and the ways to affect your opponent's cerebral nervous system with your chakra. It required extremely precise chakra control. He didn't have any success on day one. He kept practicing it, and it took him 16 days to be able to do it. After another seven days, he was able to successfully use double vision jutsu on his clone. For double vision jutsu, after his chakra invaded his clone's nervous system, he had to affect his vision and double all inputs it received. The main point was to ensure that your chakra output is so low that the enemy doesn't sense it. His clone observed, Wow, I can see doubles of everything. Two of my main body, two trees for each one, even every pebble on the ground and the clouds too have doubled. Apart from that, the ground and sky seems normal. I guess because it is so large, I can't make any difference between one or two of them. But, regarding the doubles, I can't see much difference between them. If I hadn't already seen the surroundings, then I would have not noticed most of the things to be doubled. I just think that there are more pebbles on the ground, the forests are denser and that there are more clouds in the sky than normal. I'd of course notice the peculiarity of seeing two main bodies though. So I guess if I am visible to the enemy while casting this Jinjutsu, the enemy would understand that something is wrong. Similarly if there are more than one opponent, then it'll be identified very quickly too. Apart from this, even though my main body did suppress his chakra as much as he could, since I'm a sensor, I could actually sense his chakra trying to influence me. He then closed his eyes and tried to sense around him, I see, since the Jinjutsu targeted my vision, only that was affected. If I try to sense, I only sense one main body. So this Jinjutsu won't work against sensors. The clone then stopped sensing and nodded to Fujin. Fujin took that signal and launched four shurikens on the clone. The clone saw them as eight shurikens and thought, I saw both the main bodies toss four shurikens each on me and flickered around to dodge the shurikens. Fujin then used projectile control jutsu to have those shurikens chase his clone. Since he could see eight shurikens, it was a bit tougher to dodge them. After half a minute, the clone used Gale Surge Jutsu to disrupt the main body's control over the shurikens. He then used Wind Retrieving Jutsu and pulled two shurikens towards himself and caught them with each hand. However, he was only able to catch one, while the other disappeared. The clone then dispelled himself and passed all the memories to Fujin. Fujin analyzed, I see. The Jutsu isn't as useful as I thought it'd be. The only use is when an enemy is all by himself, and I hide around him and target him with shurikens. Even that will only work if I get him to an unknown place where he won't observe any difference in his surroundings. Also, it won't work against sensors. One very important piece of information I got is that I can sense an enemy trying to influence me through Jinjutsu. The question is, did that happen because I am a noob when it comes to Jinjutsu, or can every sensor sense this passively? If I can, then this will become an excellent way to counter Jinjutsu. All I have to do is disrupt my chakra before the enemy completes his Jinjutsu. Of course, there will be limitations for this. I don't think this way would work against Sharingan as it performs Jinjutsu with only eye contact. However, I could sense Jinjutsu cast by others easily and disrupt it midway. Who knows, perhaps with practice, it might even counter the Sharingan. He then resumed his practice. Only this time, his clone would stop and disrupt his chakra after the Jinjutsu was casted. The clone managed to get it done within a day. On the next day, his clone would attempt to disrupt his chakra as soon as he felt Fujin's chakra invading his nervous system. Surprisingly, that only took a few hours to learn. Happy with the progress, he decided to move on to the next Jutsu. Chapter 29 Combat Practice 
Fujin started to learn demonic illusion, hell viewing jutsu. This jutsu was more advanced than the previous one. In its simplest form, it affected the opponent's vision and showed him the view that the caster wanted to show him. Alongside that, the caster also had to affect the opponent to trigger fear and dread. This jutsu could be improved by influencing the opponent's sense of smell and hearing too. Fujin recalled, the jinjutsu that Kakashi casted on Sakura had Sasuke asking her for help. So I guess he controlled her hearing too. I am not sure if he influenced her sense of smell too, then he could have added a stench of blood. He began practice for this jutsu. He practiced triggering his clone's fear and dread, and then influencing his sense of sound and smell. It took seven days to get all these three down. He then had to work on creating an illusion, however he hit a roadblock, so what exactly am I afraid of? He thought for a bit, the only thing I fear right now is Danzo forcefully inducting me into Root. But even then, it's not something I dread. I guess that's my good luck that I don't have any mental demons. He thought more, and then it finally clicked him. He casted the Jinjutsu on his clone. His clone allowed the Jinjutsu to be cast. Nothing happened for a few seconds, but then the clone saw something. There was a small black dot over the horizon, and it kept getting bigger. He soon noticed what it was and thought, fucking tail beast bomb? As soon as he saw it, he felt fear and dread. However, having experienced it for a few days, he understood that Fujin had triggered his fear and dread. The tailed beast bomb hit him and the illusion was over. The clone then dispelled himself to pass the memories back to Fujin. Fujin thought, that went well. I guess right now, my biggest fear is dying like a cannon fodder without being able to do anything about it. He then thought a bit more about the illusion, the illusion was pretty well. However the shape of the tailed beast bomb wasn't stable, that has to be improved. Also the ending was abrupt. While a weaker opponent, like Sakura, might fall unconscious, a hardened ninja would definitely not be unconscious after the illusion. So perhaps it could be expanded further to give me more time to deliver a killing blow. Perhaps after the explosion, I could induce the smell of soil and blood, and maybe show the opponent an image of his own dead body, make them think they died and are now a soul or a ghost for a few seconds. He continued working on improving his illusion. It took a week for him to be satisfied with the illusion he created. After he had learned those two jinjutsu, less than three months were left for final exams. Fujin was progressing very well on all parameters. However, there was one important aspect that he hadn't focused on yet. He thought, all right, everything's going well. My chakra level is already on par with the weaker academy teachers. My ninjutsu and taijutsu too have probably surpassed Jinin level. Fuinjutsu is going well, I should be done with the current scroll in another six months. In kinjutsu, basics have been learned well and chakra flow has become much smoother. I can easily cut through a tree with my sword. Heck, I can cut a boulder too. And I have started with Jinjutsu too. However, I severely lack combat experience. In fact, it won't be wrong to say that I have no combat experience at all. After all, there's no danger to life or even any permanent injury in the Taijutsu tournament. We aren't even allowed to throw shurikens at each other. Another important thing is battle and survival instincts. To be able to make a move purely on instinct in the middle of a fight, or to be able to sense if my life is in danger, is something that is incredibly important for any ninja. Otherwise, just a sneak attack with a shuriken is enough to kill anyone. Luckily, my instincts are much stronger due to me being a sensor, however it ain't enough. So over the next three months, I need to spar frequently with my shadow clone. He thought a bit more and decided, to start with, let's use wooden weapons. After I'm comfortable with it, I can move on to real ones. On the next Saturday, he went to a mini forest. After confirming no one was around, he made a clone and decided to spar. Both he and his clone were armed with 24 wooden shurikens, 6 wooden kunai and 2 wooden swords. They stood face to face, 10 meters apart. Fujin picked up a pebble and tossed it into the air. The pebble hitting the ground was the signal to start the fight. Since the clone was made after all the planning was done, 
there was no need for any dialogue. As soon as the pebble hit the ground, both Fujin and his clone jumped backwards and launched great breakthrough jutsu. Both the jutsus clashed with each other, creating a lot of sharp winds that broke a lot of branches. After launching the jutsu, both flickered away to stay out of the range of the jutsu. Once the winds started dying down, Fujin and his clones started observing the patterns within the winds. Fujin soon spotted an opportunity and thought, there. Quickly, he threw three shurikens in the winds. Due to the flow of the winds, they changed direction and were headed straight to the clone. The clone noticed that, and flickered fifty meters to his left. Fujin noticed the clone flickering and observed properly that direction and tossed another three shurikens out. Next, he performed projectile control jutsu and controlled all six of his shurikens to target his clone. Looking at the six shurikens heading at him, the clone kept using body flicker to dodge and waited for the right moment. It soon came and the clone prepared two spheres of wind and instantly launched wind explosion jutsu. The twin explosions destroyed three shurikens and threw two out of Fujin's control. However, Fujin directed the remaining shuriken on his clone, not allowing his clone any rest. The clone looked at the last shuriken and thought, trying to block it will be risky if he makes a sudden change in direction. I need a distraction. The clone moved backwards and slammed his hands on the ground and brought a rock shield up. Fujin changed the direction of the shuriken to curve around the boulder, but there was nothing behind there. He thought, damn, did he substitute or go underground, and flickered on a branch of nearby trees. He then fully activated his sensor mode and focused underground and sensed his clone. He thought, all right, just gotta wait till he surfaces and prepared a wind sphere in each hand. The clone underground was heading straight up to Fujin to make a sneak attack. However, he sensed himself being sensed by Fujin and also the chakra built up for wind explosion jutsu, damn, can't launch an attack now. I need to get out of the ground, my speed underground is much slower. But I don't think I can dodge his wind explosion jutsu. The analysis was done within fractions of a second, and the clone decided to leave the ground directly. Fujin, sensing his clone, flickered close to where his clone would surface. As soon as the clone's head popped out, Fujin launched both the spheres and started preparing more. The clone, whose head was barely above the ground, thought as expected and created a rock shield that he had already prepared. He had put much higher chakra into the rock shield, due to which, the shield was much larger and sturdier. The wind spheres clashed with the rock shield and exploded. The winds eroded the surface of the shield, but couldn't break through it. As soon as he saw the rock shield appearing from the ground, Fujin, who had already prepared two more wind spheres, flickered to get a better shot at the clone. Even before the rock shield was entirely erected, he was already adjacent to his clone and only around 10 meters away from him. The clone couldn't see Fujin flickering due to the rock shield, however on seeing that he was so close to himself, he fired a couple shurikens on Fujin. Fujin saw the two shurikens shooting towards himself and thought, TCH. I don't want to engage them and send a wind sphere to counter them and launch the second one on the clone. The clone, however, flickered away and Fujin chased after him. Over the next minute, they flickered around at very high speed and tried to hit each other with wind explosion jutsu, shurikens, or kanais. However, neither were successful. The clone found an opportunity to surround Fujin with six shurikens, and in the only direction that he could escape, the clone fired a couple of wind explosion jutsus. Fujin thought, damn, escaping normally will be risky. Let's go underground and he entered the ground using earth military movement jutsu. However, remembering his clone's earlier predicament, he didn't close the distance, but instead went in the opposite direction and kept sensing his clone and the wind spheres. He thought, all right, I now need a distraction for getting out of the ground. He prepared great breakthrough jutsu. As soon as he got his head out of the ground, he saw the clone launching two wind spheres at him while manipulating six shurikens too. However, Fujin blew it all away with great breakthrough jutsu. The clone itself was in the range and escaped underground. Fujin tracked his clone while thinking, I guess he'll try something similar as I did. I wonder if I could disrupt his underground movement. 
He then approached the place which was directly above the spot where his clone was and punched hard using chakra-infused punch. The ground cracked a bit. The clone underground felt the vibrations due to that punch, however it didn't cause any damage. Fujin thought, dang, that didn't work. Sigh, I guess I'm nowhere near Tsunade's level. He then flickered on a nearby tree and prepared two wind explosion jutsus while also readying himself to flicker away. As he waited for his clone to surface, he thought I really need to learn a way to force someone out of the ground. The ones I can think of are that jutsu which Inoki's son used and maybe flooding the ground with water to restrict access to air. The clone on the hand too was planning, that was close. If I was stronger, then that punch could have dispelled me. So what do I do now? I can sense my main body has prepared wind explosion jutsus and is waiting for me to pop out. I don't think that the rock shield will work very well this time. He was still noticing when he felt something, wait, I can breathe? I see, the cracks in the ground due to that punch allowed some air to sip in. I guess that sucks for the main body. Also, though I never thought about it, it's surprising that a shadow clone needs to breathe. I wonder if Tobarama couldn't create shadow clone jutsu without adding the ability to breathe or did he add it just to improve its efficiency to perform infiltration missions. If it's the latter, then I need to find a way to remove the breathing requirement of the shadow clone. That way shadow clones could stay underground for hours. Anyways, now that I don't have any time pressure, I'll just wait here till I can come up with something good. After all, I don't have anything to deal with someone hiding underground. Fujin on the other hand kept on waiting on a tree branch for the clone to surface. After waiting for five minutes, his thoughts were, does a clone not need to breathe? Surely those cracks can't provide air all the way down, can it? Sigh, I really can't do anything. Only Mud Mojutsu can have a chance, but its range is too short to work. I wonder if my clone has some strategy or is just wasting time. He kept sensing the clone for another five minutes and finally had enough and dispelled the clone. On getting the clone's memories, he sighed at the clone's tactic to wait patiently underground, sigh, that's my clone all right. I remember that one counter-strike game I played in my previous life. Both my team and the enemies went at each other, and within five minutes all my teammates were dead and only two enemies were alive. They thought they won, but then realized that they still had one more to kill. Poor guys tried to find me for five minutes straight. And finally when they entered the cave I was hidden in, I killed them. Chapter 30, Combat Practice Fujin began analyzing his spar, while ignoring the ending, the spar went quite well. However, it was mostly a mid-range fight. I used Great Breakthrough Jutsu and Wind Explosion Jutsu for offense, Projectile Control Jutsu to control the battlefield, Rock Shield Jutsu for defense and Body Flicker Jutsu and Earth Military Movement Jutsu for dodging. Wind Clones was another Jutsu that could have been used, but we didn't do to the confusion it'd have created. Other Jutsus didn't work in this fight. Actually, I did try to close the distance, however my clone ensured that we never got to fight in close range as he'd be dispelled with just one hit. So I couldn't use Taijutsu or swords and I never got any opportunity to use wind propelling jutsu. And casting Jinjutsu in such a high paced battle was just not possible with my current skills. As for the areas of concern, it's definitely underground battles. I don't have any way to deal with an underground enemy apart from going underground myself. But I don't have any skill in fighting underground anyways, so that'd be disadvantageous for me. Also punching on the ground to crack it open is incredibly dumb. The enemy underground just gets better access to air. Apart from that, I also need a stronger offense. I guess I could have sent a kunai through the rock shield, but I couldn't do it with a wooden kunai. Either way, my current ninjutsu can't crack it. Also, I need to use flicker more properly. Both me and my clone at times flickered too far away. That kind of reset the tempo. I need to be able to estimate the right distance to flicker so that I can continue my offense right away. I guess that'll take a lot of spars to get it right. After analyzing, he summarized all right, in terms of mid-range combat, I surpassed most of the Jinnins that took part in the Chunin exam in Naruto. 
Only Gara would easily beat me and Tamari and Shino might be able to compete. My speed is definitely faster than Lee with his weights on. And Body Flicker is probably on par with his weights off. But Body Flicker doesn't have the same flexibility, maneuverability, or even stamina that his natural speed has. As for my ninjutsu, Great Breakthrough Jutsu and Wind Explosion Jutsu are coming along really well. The Earth Release Jutsus worked as I thought they would. And I'm really surprised with the high usability that Projectile Control Jutsu provided. Though I can only control 8 shurikens max for the time being, it's still incredibly useful. He then thought about what improvements he should make, to improve power, I think I need to learn fire release jutsus. After all, I don't have any access to higher rank jutsus for the time being. But me being able to use 3 elements will be very eye-catching. I guess I should wait till my Jinin squad is formed. If one of my teammates is able to use fire release, I can leave this for the future. Secondly, I think I should finally start learning Raisin And I also need to pack a lot of explosion tags. I wonder if I could attach an explosion tag to a kunai powered by wind chakra flow. That way I could send a kunai through any defense the enemy put up and explode the tag when the enemy tries to dodge. As for flickering distance, it should improve with more spars. And underground combat I'll leave for later on as I don't have access to anything that'll help me combat it. I also need to improve the way I carry my weapons. I should try to inscribe some storage seals on the weapon pouches. Maybe even go a step further and make a wristband with multiple storage seals to get what I want instantly. Anyways, I also need to test out close range combat and see how it goes. He finally stopped analyzing and made another shadow clone. This time the rules were to fight in close range. So great breakthrough and breakthrough jutsus weren't allowed, and staying underground for more than a few seconds also wasn't allowed. Flickering was restricted to 10 meters. Both Fujin and his clone stood 20 meters apart, and Fujin tossed a pebble in the air. As soon as the pebble hit the ground, Fujin rushed towards his clone. However, his clone quickly prepared and launched a wind explosion jutsu. Fujin sidestepped the wind sphere and continued moving towards the clone. As soon as the clone saw Fujin sidestepping, he exploded the wind sphere. But, as Fujin had continued rushing past it, he didn't take any damage and just felt strong winds on his back. He then slashed his sword, aiming to slice the clone's neck. The clone, not having time to grab his own swords, infused chakra in his fist and blocked it with the back of his fist. He then flickered behind and grabbed both of his swords. Not wanting to give his clone the opportunity, Fujin threw one of his swords straight towards his clone at a very high speed. Since the clone was still in the air, he twisted his hand to face towards his left and caused a wind burst, which propelled him to the right. Fujin followed up by launching three shurikens on the clone and then used wind retrieving jutsu to get his sword back and also approached his clone. The clone quickly used Gale Surge Jutsu to defend against the incoming shurikens and then engaged Fujin in a sword fight. Over the past few months, Fujin had trained a lot in Kenjutsu. He had developed a combat style that was very overbearing and relentless. However, he had also trained in defending properly with the swords. Fujin and his clone clashed repeatedly with swords. Fujin was more on the offense whereas his clone was more on the defense and repeatedly used wind-propelling jutsu or body-flicker jutsu to avoid getting hit. In the next 30 seconds, the clone managed to graze his sword on Fujin's left arm and right cheek. However, Fujin soon created an opportunity by using wind-propelling jutsu along with body-flicker and got a good hit on the clone, which dispelled the clone. Fujin sighed, merely a minute of fighting before the clone dispelled. Also, Though I managed to dodge the two hits from my clone, if the clone had used a real sword, then it would have cut my skin. If the swords were enhanced by wind chakra flow, it could have left deep cuts, probably all the way to the bone. Worst, if it were poisoned, it might have incapacitated me. So there's a lot of scope for improvement. Actually, my clone has to avoid each and every hit as he'll be dispelled. That's good, I should probably start doing the same. And then I need to see how I can maintain an all-out offense while avoiding getting hit. 
There was also the issue of my clone having to block the sword strike with his fist. Even though it was infused with chakra, I'll still take a lot of damage if I do that against a real sword. So I should try to get gloves with a metal plate on the backhand. That would give me another way of defending. I guess my taijutsu needs an upgrade too. While the academy style is good, it ain't enough. Right now, despite putting way less time in it, my kenjutsu completely overwhelms my taijutsu. I wonder which taijutsu style will suit me more. If I don't find anything good over the next year or two, I could approach Guy and ask him to teach me his style. While he ain't dumb as many think, but manipulating him should be doable. Speaking of Guy, I'm surprised that I haven't seen him even once. Granted that I train in only a small part of the village, it's still surprising to never have run into him in over four years. Then again, I haven't seen many other canon characters either. Do they gather someplace elsewhere, or is Kanoha so short on manpower that everyone has to constantly do missions? Anyways, this sparring has been really good. I should continue doing it. He then made another shadow clone and continued his spars. Over the next three weeks, Fujin sparred with his clone on a daily basis. His combat skills improved greatly over this period. After three weeks, he stopped using wooden weapons and began using real ones. The clone, however, had to fight carefully to ensure that he didn't critically injure Fujin. The spars got very risky after Fujin started using chakra flow to enhance the swords. In merely two months, Fujin ruined four swords, 13 kanais, and 33 shurikens due to these spars. He ran out of the weapons he collected from the forest and had to buy from shops. In all it cost him slightly over 120k ryo on these weapons. However, he didn't bother with the money lost. His thoughts were, what's the use of having money if I don't use it to get stronger? But I guess I should be glad that I did learn few injutsu. I still have over 225k ryo left with me. Right around the same time when he began sparring with real weapons, he also began learning Raisingan. The first and second stages were learned long back. He finally started on the third stage. One of the biggest issues in Raisingan training was that he couldn't allow anyone to see it. If someone interrupted him or caught in training in forests and figured out his disguise, he could make up some reasons like practicing to fight while using transformation, or that a ninja had to keep his weapons hidden and hence he planned to keep his skill hidden until there was no choice. While the reasons may cause a bad impression, he didn't care much about that. But for Raisingan, if someone caught in training that, then it'd be a big trouble. The only usable excuse he had right now was that he could say, I figured it out myself after reading about the fourth Hokage. However, that would paint him as an absolute genius and perhaps earn him some visits from Root Ninjas or even from Shimura Danzo himself. Not to mention that they'll keep a much stricter watch on me. So for Raisingan, he decided to train at home. His senses had honed enough by now to realize if someone spies on him. So if he senses anyone spying on him, he could drop the Raisingan training and instead show that he was training Wind Explosion Jutsu instead. To train Raisingan, he cleared up his living room. He only left a sofa in the living room and moved everything else into the bedroom and began the training. The compression and shaping part was quite difficult. He tried for a few hours without any success. He sighed and thought, let me first do it the Naruto way and he made a shadow clone with 20% of his chakra. The clone suppressed and shaped the Raisingan, in this manner, he was able to learn Raisingan within a couple of hours. However, he understood that depending on a clone to make Raisingan is very inefficient and began training for Raisingan without using any clones. It took him a month and half to get the jutsu right, but it was done. Over the remaining few days, Fujin decided to improve his Raisingan. He wanted to reduce the amount of time required to form it and increase the amount of chakra he could put in it. That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching part 1 and with that being said peace.